It's so <laughs> hard. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. I've got tons of people on again tonight because it was so awesome last time. Felt like we should try to do it again. So I'm going to go real quick because you guys all know us at this point. We have Eric. Say hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> we have Scott drinking in his. Hey, <laughs> hey sorry. Sorry. How's it going, everybody? Thanks. Thanks for having me on, Bill. <laughs> no problem, Scott. We got Sam and Bobby. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we got Sarah from the Whiskey Crusaders. Hi, guys. Yeah. We got Matt from the Whiskey Crusaders. How's it going? You got a very attractive lineup there. And then me. I'm glad you guys could all make it out tonight. We have a pretty good show for you lined up tonight. We thought we'd do something a little bit different than we did last time where we were just kind of winging it and we gave like a modicum of effort to this one. Um, figured that we'd at least start on the same kind of whiskey this time. So we all chose uh, a few different whiskeys from all different genres that we liked for whatever reason. And I figured that we'd all kind of say what we got, why we bothered with it. And um, why don't Sam and Bobby, why don't you guys go first? You go okay, first. so this is bourbon, right? Bourbon. Okay, so um, most of y'all probably or might know that we're really good friends with a uh, owner of a bourbon bar. And so he hooks us up and I said, Larry, we're in with the big dogs tonight. I, I need I need your help. He's so, flexing. Uh, so, so, this guy's so, flexing. So Larry from Union 42 Bourbon and Brew, I just got to get that out there. He, he He's uh, sponsoring our end of, of uh, the live stream tonight. <laughs> so I thought, I thought I could kick it off. Oh, for <laughs> sake. Jesus Christ. I didn't know we were going first. <laughs> no problem. So I thought I could kick it off. We had like 10 minutes uh, to get ready or anything. <laughs> versus, uh, uh, well, or 12. I thought that would be a good, but then I decided that's that's too much of a bother. So um, we're just going to go with the Pappy 15. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you yeah, know, that's fine. Show us all up. All. <laughs> <laughs> we're drinking Heaven Hill, we're start, bitches. We're, start, so. we're starting light. Okay. <laughs> You're going with Heaven Hill and yeah. the Bookers. <laughs> no, which, I mean, sorry, not Bookers, uh, the Pappy. Which, which Pappy is that? 15. 15. 15. Oh, Chad and Sarah just popped in. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. <laughs> uh, so we're starting off with bourbon. So so um, Bobby just pulled out some pappy. <laughs> He's an asshole. <laughs> <Good start. laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Man, and, and now now I'm the, the second most attractive bearded man in the chat, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chad. Yeah, Scott is a very good looking guy. I got a beard, it's just off camera. Yeah, we all have <laughs> All right, so Scott, since you were already kind of drinking, when you drank, right. why don't you all go? Right, so cl clearly I didn't get the memo and I can't read an email very well. I'm going the opposite. I've got the old uh, four-year will at rise. So I'll have to bow out here in a second, go grab something, and then uh, actually join the phone crowd. So I'm, my bad. All right, that's fine. Let's Let's pop over to Eric then. Well, I I'll figured we're probably going to have a few, so I'm going to start a little bit uh, introductory, a little lighter. And yet, something's still interesting. This is, um, I'm hearing an echo. I figured we're probably going to have a few, so I'm going to start a little bit. Uh, I'm going to need to turn the speaker off. It's still interesting. This is, this is uh, I'm hearing an echo. There, I muted him. You're good. All right. This is a wild turkey, long branch. Uh, uh, spent a little bit of time in mesquite as well. Uh, it's a nice easy introductory sipper nothing complicated uh, but i like that little uh, mesquite character to it makes it a little interesting um but it's the first in the minute to come tonight <laughs> awesome nice um sarah just so you know you got some feedback on your on your thing i had to mute you for a sec um check it out chad and sarah do you want to let us know what you're drinking sure um we just kind of turned around at the bar card here and grabbed, <laughs> grabbed something but yeah, we got some old fits, uh, bottled and bond, eleven year. So I think that will that will do well. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, if I can get this glass cork off. Hmm. Oh, oh wow. my gosh! <laughs> that, was, that was very underwhelming, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt, what are you drinking? Tea stag. Tea stag. Bottle happy. Nice. Boy, that thing is uh, near its end, huh? Yeah, I got another one back if it's all good. Nice. And Sarah, what do you have? 
I went for a staple in our house, Old Forester 100. Very easy nice. Drink, easy drink. Very nice. Cool. I am, um, I'm drinking uh, one that most likely we've never heard of. I've never heard of it. It's called Smoky Quartz Distillery. Uh, it's their bourbon whiskey. This was a gift from this guy named Russ, who's a fan of the show. He, him and I met up for a drink and he brought me a bottle. I have not tried it yet, but I figured I would try it on stream. So I'm sure Russ will be watching this in the replay if he's not in chat already. So this one's for you, Russ. How, have you tasted it before tonight? They're like, did you taste it? I have not. I just popped it open. I actually, I opened it while we were all kind of getting ready. So you gotta, you gotta hope that you like it. <laughs> I know, right? I nobody look at my face when I take that first. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, cheers to everybody. Thank you all for showing up to the stream. This is gonna be great. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, 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 cheers everyone. Cheers. Cheers. It smells good. Mm. I Has just anybody had this at all yet? Oh, you got some. Yeah. <laughs> what was that, Eric? I missed that. I was just say this is a little sweet. I just had dinner. It's actually sort of a nice after dinner thing. I'll just have a little bit of dessert. But uh, Scott, back to your camera. Uh, what was that you were showing us? It speaks so we can see it. I, I, I was I was wondering if anybody had this at all yet. Chad, Sarah, I know you guys are a little more local for the. Yeah, we got um, some the samples of it, but we haven't, you know, we <laughs> we kind of don't uncork anything unless we got the cameras rolling. So we just haven't, right. we haven't had a time when the cameras have been rolling to try that yet. You only oh, drink. You only drink twenty. You only drink twenty minutes at a time. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh yeah, yeah. Only, well, only you know, while well, the camera. Our format is, is you know, we uh, we open it on camera to give the first impression. So. We might we might end up doing that since there's three of them. We might do that on a live. Yeah, live. I think that would be good. Yeah. Hey, look, we just decided yeah, we'll be fun. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you're hired. <laughs> so this one's uh, this one's pretty good. It's got a um, it's a very it's actually kind of chocolatey for a bourbon, which is was a surprise. It tastes way higher ABV than it is. It's uh, it's only forty five, but I would I would have pegged this as like a like a hundred proof pretty easily. Um, I'm I'm just such a huge fan of of local distilleries. I don't know about you guys. I know we all kind of live in different places. A few of us are close, but um, there's some like really good local stuff, and it's kind of sucks when you find a good one and you want it. Like for example, like like if I wanted it, or actually let's go Iron Root because they're they're such a you know they're fans of pretty much all of our shows. So like you still can't buy that up in Massachusetts, and it sucks because. It's good stuff, but I'm curious if any of you guys have any, anything local that we should kind of be watching out for. The primary thing, California is not the best place for whiskeys. We're a wine state, but the main thing I have liked here has been from St. George uh, Spirits in Alameda, um, and the one that I really, really like is the Baller. Uh, it's it's about s maybe $70 on the release, um, and then quickly jumps on the secondary market because it's such a low production. And this is their take on a, uh, it's an American take on a Japanese take on a Scotch whiskey. Um, but <laughs> this made my number 10, my top 10 for 2018. Uh, and it's really, really nice. And I think Matt has a cop as one of these as well. I do. It's great stuff. Well, that's not really narrowing it down <laughs> with, with him having it. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> How about you? Well, talking about distribution, you know, distribution is at my house, it's at Matt's, Matt's house. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't narrow it down. Matt has everything. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I don't know uh, uh, for the rest of you guys who, if you've ever seen Matt's little distillery tour that he's done, I mean, distillery, I should, it basically is. I mean, his uh, collection tour. Um, his liquor tour. Yeah, his liquor tour. I was doing like a Patreon stream. And we had a few people on, and he's just like, "Hey, you guys all want to see my collection?" <laughs> it was about fifteen minutes. <laughs> that was yeah, pretty I think awesome. Directed by Peter Jackson. Well, Peter Jackson. Yeah, yeah, you know those little three-hour-long films. You know, Peter. Jackson. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Eric, I'm using your your whiskey coin tonight because I love that it's like gold and shiny. Oh, you you know, distracting for me. So. I just got a new one uh, uh, this past week. This is from Chris, the Bourbon Insane. Mm -hmm. um, he was with us uh, last time. I don't know if he's going to be popping in later today, but I'm drinking out of a rocks glass. If I drop it in there, it would be floating in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the only one I think that might work would be uh, actually Scott's. But I'll see if it covers a rocks glass. Probably not. Nope. Ah. Nope. Yes. Um, 
Chris should be joining us in probably about 45 minutes. I see he's in the chat. I think he's uh, working, but, you know, working. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> working hard. Yeah, working hard. So, Chad and Sarah, what have you guys been up to lately? I haven't talked to you in a while. Uh, well, we are uh, powering through 64 bourbons under $30. We've been doing that flight fight bracket. We've put out three episodes, and we're, we're starting to do some off-camera uh, yeah, we did the math, and if we did everyone on camera, it would be like 2020 before, <laughs> or 2021, or something like that, before we aired all the episodes. So it was too much. Yeah, so we're we're doing some that we deem maybe not as interesting, uh, kind of off camera, so we can mm -hmm. get to the more exciting ones on camera, and then we want to get to the to the the next round as soon as we can mm -hmm. with the winners, because that's when it gets really interesting. We're going to the Kentucky Bourbon Affair tomorrow, which is going to be pretty right. cool. Yeah, that's in Louisville. And, and uh, you know, just uh, planning a wedding. Planning a wedding, yeah, sure. That's the whole thing. No big deal. That's mostly on you, Sarah, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, you get to go taste yeah. the cake and stuff. That's, that's all fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's mostly her. <laughs> I'll admit it. Cool. So Matt just sent me uh, some, some samples. I, I'm curious. Matt, who, who else did you send samples to? Just out of curiosity. See Sad and Sarah, uh, Bourbon Blind, Bourbon Insane. Who else does? I think that's it. Uh, another channel. I think there's more than two other channels too. Okay. A lot of boxes. Here. Got, got, boxes out. Got, got ours. Out. Got ours right here. Oh, yeah. yeah, mine's back. There. You actually see it's right there. <laughs> I think it literally took me an hour to get your packaging open. Like oh, that's on purpose, <laughs> right? <laughs> Finally <laughs> gave up. Like yeah, I'm like. Putting the bottle caps in the uh, in the little um, pill bottle, though, that's genius. Oh, so <laughs> funny. The noise? Yeah. yeah. And I got two boxes here full of Texas whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so I get I get all of this stuff delivered at my work just because then there's always somebody who can sign for it. And um, people at my work now know that, you know, there's if it's a big box, it's probably just a box of whiskey. So a couple of people came by and we got this box because it was it was about like a foot and a half long and like whatever. And uh, they just wanted to hang out and watch me open it because they were curious what I got. And it took about 10 minutes to open the thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was like it was a box within a box within bubble wrap with a, a zip tie around it. And then uh, another like some other box and then whatever, a bunch of other stuff. And then finally the peanuts to cover all of the samples, um, which was almost a joke. <laughs> so <laughs> totally dumped a couple of them in the trash it's before I break. Yeah. So no, nothing, nothing broke, but there's some good stuff in there. I'm actually very excited to drink some of it. So yeah. Now I wanted to get, uh, do like that and have um, whiskey uh, to be able to receive it in my office. And I've already been told by the guys that I work with, if any packages come for me, it will be intercepted. So I, <laughs> we can't do that. <laughs> Hey, Chad, what is BRBN on your hat? Sound it out. Bourbon. 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 Yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> somebody yeah. get Eric a drink. You're not the first person no, to ask. At least every time you wear that, at least one person asks. Yeah. It's and not I, that obvious. And I always had the same smell. Well, <laughs> uh, I sound it out. <laughs> one day someone's going to hit you. Yeah. So I, I have my first shirt change of the night. Hey! Got, hey! This, this is my night. Every time that I go off camera, I'm coming back with a new shirt. It'll be it'll be good. I know it's weird, but whatever. I think we all need another drink because I think we need a little bit more energy going on here. So who's up for some? Are we going Scotch next, or are we going Irish whiskeys next? Oh, what you guys oh I pour uh, rye. I haven't finished my first one yet. What are you yeah, gonna, no, come on, take them back. <laughs> let's, let's do let's do Irish because my scotch is peated and I'm not ready for that yet. Where's my Irish? Okay, fair enough. Let's go. That's your fault. <laughs> so I am going to go with one that that I'm going to guess. Even though Glendalo is kind of um, popular now, this one's a little bit harder to guess. So this is the Black Pits single malt. So they did they did the original seven and then they decided to do another seven where they aged it in completely different types of barrels. Um, I barely touched this one. I genuinely don't remember what this tastes like. So when I was looking through, I was like, hey, why not? Um, but we'll see what that comes out as. So what else are you guys drinking? Well, uh, we've got uh, Jameson Gold. Um, this, this is something that- What the hell is that? This is from Larry. This is from Larry. Uh, so cheats. I see cheats. <laughs> this is something that when um, Ralphie reviewed it, he got so excited 
that that he doesn't normally get that excited that I thought this is something special and it it really is. Nice. I'm going to have to check that one out. I haven't reviewed nearly enough enough Jameson's on my channel at all. Uh, This is my favorite Jameson by a wide margin. What do you got going on there, Eric? Is he opening up a box? I got the red breast 12. I have tasted this. I have not reviewed this. I have not opened this. So I'm doing it on corking. But I was thinking, you know, going to Irish next, it's stylistically flavor profile wise. Um, I think it's a logical pro- progression following bourbon in terms of flavors. Uh, I think it's sort of texturally and, and so forth. I think it's a, a really good step. So um, I've had the the sherry cast. It's the, um, I can't remember the producer that they use from, um, no, pork. There's one they do a pork. Did it ring about? Uh, my brain's going blank. Um, you're talking about red breast? I mean, yeah, they do a pork cast finished. I don't and I'm trying to the pork. I think I can think. Okay, well, I don't know if it's a pork. Someone will say, someone will say it in the chat. It's less now. I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's out. yeah, they produce sherries. So. They have they have another one that's like a like they have a bunch of years and then they have a little style and then they have another one that I can't remember. And it yeah, might just have cast strength, actually, cast strength as well. Yeah, and I think they have a. I think they have a fifteen. So I really like them. I just haven't reviewed one yet. Okay, nice. I like the hat, by the way, tonight, Eric. That's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah so I don't have my regular lights up, so I get a little more extra glare off ah. this light up here. So I don't want to blind everyone. So uh, I put put my uh, Scotch Test Dummies uh, cover on. Fair enough. Who else has an interesting Irish? Plus, since Eric has no pants on, we don't want any glares coming up. He, he right. the right. table. <laughs> well, Eric and I are thinking alike because I grabbed the Red Breast 12 as well. Oh, okay. And he's doing a bottle opening, and I might be doing a bottle down. So Nice. Oh. <laughs> I have been killing bottles left and right lately. I, uh, okay. I you guys are probably in the same boat with the, the reviews. It's just you end up with a whole bunch of, like, half bottles. And uh, I've just made a point to make some room in my bar, and I, I've killed three bottles last week. <laughs> and uh, it's not not as much of a lush as it makes me sound like. They were all pretty low, but I uh, often wonder, like, what the, the trash guys think of me when they see just a whole bunch of empty bottles. <laughs> so, often. <laughs> so, what else you guys got going on? So I just got, got a standard one. I've just got the uh, – oh, go ahead. Go ahead, guys. No, go for it. I just have the standard. It's just that's the tealing. Think. This is the this is the one that's finished in the the rum rum cask, which I really like. I mean, I'm not a huge Irish um, whiskey fan, and well, really Scotch for the most part at all. But um, I thought it had a a really nice uh, a nice flavor to it. So it's pretty. I think that's pretty standard for the most part. So yeah, now tealing's a solid Irish whiskey. There, there was this guy. His yeah. name. Um, I think it was Sean, but it was spelled Irish. So it was like all uh, different letters. (laughs) But uh, he, um, he had this, it was, I guess they only have like maybe a hundred of them or maybe even less. It was a $5,400, I think 25, 24 year tealing. And uh, he wouldn't let me try any, which was very unfortunate, but he was like, Hey, you want to buy it? Like not a chance. That's all sourced, (laughs) but oh, well, what do you guys got? Chad and Sarah. Uh, so we pulled from from the magic box here. Uh, I think it's Egan's ten year single malt Irish. Forty seven percent. Correct us if we're wrong, Matt. No, nope, that's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually have a, I have a bottle of that back there. It's good stuff. All right. Well, we're gonna give it a shot. I mean, it's a good thing that this package came in today because right. uh, <laughs> you know we have a limited. Yes. If you, to, if you want to go, you know, for bourbon, we'll do it all night. <laughs> well, I think you guys had some scotch bottles, but I, w- I actually wasn't sure if you'd have any Irish, so I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, right, well, we had a whole month of Irish whiskeys in March, you know, sort of centered around St. Patrick's Day. I was, in, I did, I was in the middle of bourbon that whole month, so I didn't do any uh, Irish whiskeys. But I'm hoping to do a whole month of Irish whiskeys. But I want to do it when people aren't expecting to be drinking Irish whiskeys. But I, it's in terms of the overall profile world of world whiskeys, it's probably the one category I've probably neglected the most and mm. I'm not as familiar with. So out of that month, which was your favorite? Oh, that's a good question. Um, probably, I mean, the the Glendale 13 Mizanar finish was really, really good. Um, that was another one of the ones I killed last week and I enjoyed every minute of doing that. I actually poured entirely too much one night. 
um, or maybe two nights, <laughs> but it was uh, that was a really good one. Um, the Sexton was actually surprisingly good, especially for the price. So that that it's the weirdest bottle though, like totally won't fit in whatever bar you have, unless it's just you know flat planks or something like that. But I'm actually that's a good question uh, for you as well, Eric. What was what was the best bourbon that you did that month? So it was uh, the Joseph Magnets, but that's a finished bourbon. A non-finished bourbon, it was Elijah Craig uh, C917. Uh, in terms of a non-finished, those were my two favorites. <laughs> so I see Keith from uh, the Malton Man Cave just popped in. Hey, Keith, how you doing? Hey, Keith. Uh, you got your mic on, Keith? <laughs> hey, oh, Keith. Great. Keith will join us when he's ready. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt, Matt, what, are you, uh, what are you drinking? So I got the Conmar 12-year. Ooh. Nice peated Irish. Very nice. Mm. Don't worry, Chad and Sarah, it's not in your box. <laughs> you know us so well. <laughs> and uh, Sarah, what are you drinking? Oh, we already went with me. Oh, oh, that's right, Red Breast 12, that's right. All right, Keith, you with us? <laughs> nope. No. Nope. I. He looks like he's are just- you all in there? No, yeah. he's, he's there. Keith, hi. <laughs> he looks frozen. Words. <laughs> you right there, you. <laughs> he's just sitting there. At some point, he'll say something, but I, I, I think he's. I bet he's got his speakers muted. Either way, this um, this is really, really good. This is actually way better than I expected. I, I wasn't planning on, on reviewing this one because, like I said, it's kind of hard to get. I was gonna do. Kind of, I thought about doing like the old seven versus the new seven, but uh. This actually might be up there with the, the uh, Mizunar cast finish as far as from Glendalo with the ones I like. This is definitely a number uh, the second one. Um, I don't know. So have any of you guys tried uh, the new Red Spot Irish whiskey? Yes, it's very good. Yes, it's very good. Yes, it's very good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea, Chad. I don't lie. <laughs> I was I was actually I didn't like it that much when I tried it. I was a little disappointed, but I might have been expecting the wrong thing. I find I, I fall into that trap a lot. Where I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Good job, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> it opens up after it's been open for a few weeks. It gets yeah, better. That could be it. They opened it. I, I tried it at a bar and um we had we were there. We had a we started with a green spot and then the the guy, he was also Irish, he was just talking to us. He's like, Oh, you like Irish was he? And I told him what I do. And he was like, All right, let me play some some yellow spot, which at the time I hadn't tried. And uh that one quickly became my favorite of the spotted whiskeys. And then he's like, I actually just got this red spot uh but i haven't even opened it up yet and he opened it for me and this other guy mike that was with me and uh that could be it maybe just because it was a, a fresh bottle um maybe after a couple of weeks it would have been a little better but it wasn't bad it just was i was expecting it to be even better than the yellow spot and i felt like it was just different and um, yeah I, I agree when it opened up i was like this is disappointing but yeah once i went back to it a few weeks later it's good nice all right so all right so so a lot of the a lot of the irish whiskey especially uh some of the cast strength ones. So those need time, just like bourbon, some scotches and things like that then, hey? Absolutely. Okay. Bye. The only one I've had has been the uh, Green Spot Chateau Olivo Barton. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I got from Roy uh, um, when I was over there. We had a bottle of uh, wine from um, Chateau Olivo Barton, or Barton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I got a story behind I, that. I, one. Can't, I, can't even, I can't even stay that sober, let alone if I have a few more. Holy Christ! <laughs> we, had some wine with, we had some wine with dinner, and it was it was a bottle of wine. So he gave me a sample of the whiskey. So I, I've I've been to Chateau Liveau Barton, and the the lady, it's kind of funny. He was giving the tour. She's been there for like fifteen years. She's from California, and she was saying Barton, and I thought I thought it was Barton. So there was a, a gentleman with the well, I was with the wine scholar girl. I asked him, Hey, how would you pronounce this? He says Barton. I said that's what I thought. But oh well, you get to California doing a tour, they pronounce it Barton. But the the founder hey. is where the <laughs> can you guys hear me? Ah, there you are. Hey, hey. hey it's Keith. Sorry. Hey, I yeah, can Keith. hear everybody except for Bill. I see his mouth talking. That's weird. It's really bizarre. I'm the most important one. <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking in the comments and everyone's like, Keith, Keith give us sign language. <laughs> so I'm guessing you you said hello, Keith. But I, I, for some reason, I can't hear you. I hear everybody except for you. Huh. And it, just I, to wrap this picture, really this story up real quick. 
Yeah, yeah, please, sir. Yeah. Barton, Barton or Barton. I don't know what possible right setting would it have where it just mutes the moderator and not everybody <laughs> can, can hear anybody else. No. Nope. <laughs> like right now, your mouth is moving. That's it. Nope. I can hear everybody else. <laughs> everybody, oh, you can't hear Eric. <laughs> Any suggestions for those of you who I can't hear? What I should do? I'm sorry, guys. I'm ruining You should drink water. Irish whiskey. Yeah. Drinking a little Weller it's Special Reserve. Geez. Keith, just Keith, good. just put your thumb, just put your thumb over Bill's picture. You'll be good. To go. <laughs> I'm spilling it. All right, I'm going to tell Keith to stop talking because I want to hear your story. Still can't hear you, Bill. If Keith can't hear me, I'm going to say you have very so lovely bizarre. eyes. I'm so sorry, guys. All right, so check this out. I'm going to just mute him. What's everybody drinking? <laughs> All right, go for it, Eric. <laughs> Since Keith can't hear me, I'm going to say he has very lovely eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so Barton was actually an Irishman who started the Chateau in France. So there is a French, even though it's a French wine, there is an Irish tie back to the founder of that uh, wine uh, for the green spot. And meanwhile, half the people probably tuned out. But anyway, back to y'all. All right. Sorry, I was just telling him to, to pop out and pop back in. Hopefully that'll, that'll fix his issue. But... Okay. Uh, I'm very impressed by your your ability to even say those words. That's uh, not in my not in my wheelhouse. So anyway, yeah, but you, I, but real, you guys wouldn't know any better. So I could just make up shit, and you wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. That's right. Just makes real, you sound smart. Quick. Eric, can you not talk about Roy anymore? Because my wife is getting a little excited over here. I love Roy. Well, I, I also love Roy. <laughs> oh my gosh, do you love Roy too? I love Roy. Uh, <sighs> I could just listen. He's so green. Oh my god, I could listen to. <laughs> I, to work. I just listen to his live streams, and I'm just like. <sighs> like, well, so well, I have like little parts coming cool. out of my eyes, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Me. yeah. Well, I so think the so table like, went up, so there's a little bit of art on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where you said you've gone through like several bottles or like finished them off in the last few weeks. I love his uh, was it recycling? The recycling, yeah, yes, the music so pretty good. good. Yeah. I love it, it's great. It's yeah. genius. Oh my god, it's so fun to watch. And he flips them up and flips them around and puts them in. I'm like, oh, it's great. It's oh, everything you do is just so fantastic. You, you've all seen my life, but you're uh, really far away. You've all seen Scott's parody of that, though, right? No, I haven't seen Scott's parody. No, I haven't either. Watch it. it's, it's really, really good. Um, yeah, from Scott's just on me, obviously. Um, so, Keith, are you with us? Yes, and for the record, Roy stole the bottle flipping for me, just for the record. Everybody knows. Go back and watch my old videos until I dropped the Balvini 12 double. And then we stopped thinking that we were cute with the bottle flip. <laughs> so, Keith, what was it that you said that you were drinking? Because you popped in, you were, uh, you know, being a distraction. <laughs> I, I came in and I heard uh, Chad and Sarah talking and I heard everybody except for you and then there was like awkward silence I'm like what is going on why is everyone <laughs> awkwardly like laughing in silence it was uh, Eric was telling a story and you kept like jumping in right in the middle every time he was trying to tell. I think you couldn't hear him either anyway what are you drinking I'm drinking a little Weller special reserve and then I'll probably switch to Elijah Craig barrel proof nice geez everybody's best nice. big guns tonight yeah I'm uh, I don't know about the rest of you guys. I, I finished off that Irish whiskey real fast. I either I could pour another one if you guys are also on your Irish, or I can move on to my Scotch because I'm actually very excited about that one. Holy cow. So, I think I'm just gonna do it anyway because why not? So I've had this on the stream before, but this one's just really good. The Highland Park 15. Um, oh, so good. I uh, I don't think I've reviewed this one yet. I had it. Whoops, I spilled it all over the table. I had it to. Um, I don't know about you guys. I always batch film. Like I do a bunch of stuff at once. I, I know Chad and Sarah, you guys do it. You were just talking about it, but um, yeah, like I'll always write like five or six episodes and then I try and I always stop at number four because by that point it's starting to be a problem. Um, <laughs> I'm curious. Do you, do you guys must all have the same problem, right? I would guess. There's, yeah. there's episodes that we, have we episodes can't, we can't, we can't put out because yeah. they're inaudible because you can't understand what we're saying. <laughs> are, are they as good no as your videos. video? Uh, every, I think everybody might, starts out with good intentions. They're not that good. Nothing as good as that patron video. <laughs> but Bill, do you change your shirt every time so no one knows you filmed them all in one day? Or do you I have been known to do that. <laughs> it's like we no one will know. When we do the advent calendar, there's like no way that we could possibly... Shh. <laughs> it's I, great. It's Everybody does it. Curtain. Oh, it's fine. I'll give you guys a little a little secret. If you look at my background and I have the same like stuff right there and everything is the same except my shirt. 
Yeah, <laughs> like a toy on the floor I, over here. I yeah, think we're all. I think we're all. I think we're all in that camp. Except I just got lazy. I said, "Screw it." I just wear the same damn shirt for four episodes, and <laughs> unfortunately, nobody ever says anything, which is good. So, yeah, uh, so I first shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we batch shoot until William fucks up the camera. It's not not an uh, you know oh. focus anymore. And <laughs> really hard for Sarah. Don't get me started. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we kinda, I, I guess we sort of have gotten away from from batch shooting. We, we used to do that more early on, but yeah, then it's just like, I don't know. We, Like I said, you know, we won't open a bottle unless we're filming and uncorking, you know, because we want to get that content. So we would do that. Like, oh, we have these bottles that are going into a flight fight, so let's go film a bunch of uncorkings. And then we won't, we'll release one of them, but the others will just kind of sit there in the queue and then like I'll go back and like, wow, I filmed this like 15 months ago and I'll yeah. watch it and I'm like, oh no, this is terrible. We're much better now <laughs> than we were 15 months ago. We're gonna film this one. Like we did that with the, the Elijah Craig yeah, small batch. We did. We were gonna like, we already had this one in the can. Oh, it's from at the 20? end of 2017. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, 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 we're not we're not putting this out there. Let's just film it again. <laughs> hey, how, how often after you guys do your uncorking where you get maybe uh, a month after and you try try a bottle again and it's like kind of changed drastically like oh boy like maybe we need to like do a new video because it's it's changed that much sure well that's what um that's what we like to sometimes do with the live yeah like yeah let's yeah. visit this bottle we did for an uncork yeah. and see how it's opened up or you know we actually we like to do that a lot with divisive ones like with um you know like actually long branch we actually need to do that uh, we didn't love it so much, but we wanted to give it a fair shake, so we brought it back. Yeah. And uh, Cream of Kentucky, we did that. Same. And uh, just to see, like, you King know, of Kentucky. King of, King of Kentucky, yeah. It did not improve. <laughs> it did not improve. However, I've heard that some other batches are better, a lot better. Yeah, so true, I true. think maybe we just got one of those batches. So, yeah. Which is unfortunate for what? Almost $300? Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. little unfortunate. Yeah. But what can you do? It's the mm. world of whiskey. I don't nice. know. So you you ladies made me uh, pick my next shirt on purpose here. I got the Aqua Vitae shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know. We do need to make a fan club for him. We do. We do. I would I do. Think, I think he has one. It's called Aqua Vitae. Sure, I'll be your vice president. <laughs> we can do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so we we did a uh, an hour and a half live one night, and then and then we immediately the Whiskey Crusaders went on after us, and it went on for a while. And by like it got to the point that Sam incoherent she needed to be put to bed. So <laughs> she went to bed, and it and it's really late now. It's and like three. No, 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 it was like one thirty. It was like one thirty in the morning. It was early enough that Roy was getting up. Yes, and, and he, Roy got in the chat, and I'm like, oh my god, Sam missed him. I missed <laughs> him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still upset. I'm still upset. I'm still bitter about it. Uh, so a couple quick things from the chat, just because we've we've been vastly ignoring them tonight. Oh, um, so Steve A is on his sixth cask oh, strength whiskey, uh, <laughs> which is a just a great start. You've got a long time to go, Steve. Um, you should probably pick it up. But then uh, <laughs> we've uh, Bourbon Sands in here. As I mentioned, he's still he's still pretending to work until the such time that he can come on. Um, somebody was asking what you guys all think of Talisker Ten. I I'm personally a fan, but I, I like the storm more. I, I'm curious if anybody has a just doesn't like it at all or has a has a negative opinion because I think that might be a little bit more interesting. The Talos Great is definitely better. Talos Great, yeah. Talos Great is good. It's it's not great though. Hmm. I like the Dark Storm the best. The Dark Storm of all of them is the best I've ever had from Talisker. It's but it's travel retail only. I was gonna say I've never seen that one before. Um, I actually pretty much only ever see the ten and the uh, the storm. Where did you see the eight? Uh, the eight, Keith. Um, actually, I got a sample from my uh, my cousin Mead Mule. He's got a blog. He lives in Nashville, and he, they have a really good selection. So he sent me some. It's it can be hard to find, and it's kind of a newer release. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be a part of their core range. Right now, it was kind of a one off. So we'll see if it stays. But it's really good if you find it, pick it up. Okay, good to know. I will definitely keep an eye out for that then. Um, yeah. So, so Chad and Sarah, you guys, do you guys do whiskey coins? I'm just curious. So funny you should ask, um, because <laughs> this also relates to Roy. He's actually helping us make our first batch yeah. right now. So mm -hmm. they're in design. Um, but yes, we're a little behind on that game. 
<laughs> that's all right. Yeah, no, I, he helped me out with the um, on my logo, the the little book. Like that's about it. But that little book underneath the the coin Karen that was from him as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but, yeah. So yeah, the design is finalized, and now they're just you know sent off to actually be made. We'll have nice. soon. Cool. Yeah, when I was getting ready for the stream, I, I was so I have like this little drawer in my in my bar, and I keep all of my like whiskey stuff, like not the bottles or glasses, or anything like just stuff like this, like these guys. And as I was pulling these out, like I've always been like a collector guy, and as I was pulling these out, I was like, damn it, I need a lot more of these things. <laughs> so I'm actually a little bit jealous of Eric's collection. He's got like 70 of them, um, oh, or yeah. like 12, but still. <laughs> I'll send you one, Bill. That sounds good. Um, all right, so let's see. All right, go ahead. Or not. OK, so Bobby and Sam, I have a question for you, because I've seen these on a, a few other whiskey tubers. They all have the, the head of the barrel um, with like their logo on it. Can you tell me about that thing? How did you just like hand paint it, or did you get it made? Or? No, so it was given to us as a gift right after the channel started. Um, um, one of the. Uh, regulars at the bourbon bar that we go to um, by our house at the bourbon bar, he started watching our channel and he made it for us. Yeah, he, 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 us. he does woodworking on the side and all, he's like retired. We showed we showed up at the bar and he's like, "Here you go, enjoy." <laughs> I'm like, "Wow, yeah, awesome, like, sweet." So, so yeah, that's cool. Yeah, got it as a gift. Can uh, I just tell you how awesome your guys's channel name is? I'm very jealous. That is so <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Sorry, I'm just checking out the chat. It's all right. You care if I ask uh, Chad and Bobby a question? No, of course. I mean, you guys jump in. I, absolutely. So I need your guys. How do I get my wife to like whiskey? Chad, Bobby. Chat with her. What do you mean, well, Chad? Get me to like? Oh, so it's the other way around. I was, oh, yeah. was already there. She was all already right, there. I no, mean, I'm kidding. I, I, had <laughs> been, I mean, I was. I've been in the game a little bit longer than she had um but yeah no she that's actually how we we met was through bourbon and we started hanging out because of our love of bourbon and uh yeah so you know it's um awesome. i don't know is there something that you can be taught I, be born. I think you can be like you know breadcrumbs baby steps sure right I mean, I mean, sort of bourbon cocktail um and then you know you just slowly start to do like introduce bourbon and ginger ale and then take away the ginger ale and then one day you just won't need ice that's that's, that's cool. one way to do it um uh, another way would be how we started our channel <laughs> and i gave sam everything neat, neat barrel proof uh peated scotch um really rough stuff and then when we did like entry level bourbon she's like oh no oh, this is i get bad. it now she just had all the hardcore cast rank peated stuff and she yeah. did it yeah. so yeah. amazing so you threw her in the deep end and then you let her like, okay i got you yeah <laughs> right, right yeah and it yeah. worked out because within a month all of a sudden she went from like literally gagging to to oh i do get the vanilla yeah. i do understand the honey yeah. i do like i it doesn't and now, four months later, she likes most of what we drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's yeah. It that's, just, that's, just, that's the same question. thing I did with my wife. That's what I, I did the same thing. You just like throw a bunch of shit at her, and like eventually she'll like either hate you or start to love it. And fortunately, she uh, she started to like it. But I tried to give her some scotch with some peat, and she's like, "Oh, nope. I don't, eat, I don't, I don't <laughs> drink dirt. I don't drink <laughs> dirt." Aspect of marriage just flare like all the worst, and then you know either she'll hate me or love me. So. That's how it over here, too. Keith, take the whiskey vault. Probably yeah. fine. <laughs> Drop her off at the so whiskey funny. vault. The, the, the two times or three times that my wife has been on the channel, we get like four times the viewership. So I'm not sure what that's saying about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So probably, uh, probably one of the best ways to do it. <laughs> He's got another shirt. <laughs> so I've now switched into what was the original logo that I came up for uh, with the, for the channel, where I was just essentially making fun of, uh, or not making fun of, but imitating Starbucks. And uh, you can see it's it's just totally different. well, it's very similar but different. So anyway, I figured I'd point that out. <laughs> Why not? Um, so, what, uh, anybody ready for another drink? Yeah, let's yeah. see. Let's see. Probably one of the best ways to introduce someone to whiskey. Is it like a confrontation group? You get the family and the friends together, and you all form a circle, and you all sit down and say, 
we have a problem. Intervention. An intervention. <laughs> an intervention group. That's it. You have an intervention group. <laughs> I, think, I think the only way I'm going to get my wife to like our channel is if I give her like a cut of like the Patreon money. I literally said, like, so what do you want? Do you want like 10 or 20 percent of the Patreon money? She looked at me and she was like, yes. I was like, really? <laughs> okay. You know what you do? Just well, come back some time with like a nice coffee or something. Be like, you know what? The channel paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, what I, that's what I told Sam. I'm like, she she was like, you should you should do a whiskey channel, and I'm like, I can't do it better than the people that are already doing it. But if you do it with me, we we would have something a little different. And I said, nope. <laughs> and then the next day we were recording. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Robert so, Lickers joined us, by the way, in the I chat. Yeah, Whenever he comes in, I feel like it's a minor celebrity kind of just jumping in here. Part. He is a celebrity. He's the man. He is the man. I agree. So are you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not fair. They do have a coin. This one that you guys made from your Keeland tailgate party. Oh, that's oh, right. Oh, yeah. That's, that is correct. Wow. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Limited edition. Limited. Hand numbered, even. Yes, Ooh. hand numbered. Ooh. Number twenty or fifty. Nice stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jen, and Sarah, my first job out of college was in Lexington at LEX eighteen. Oh was, wow! Yes, okay. so I went. To, I went to Eastern, graduated with a broadcast journalism degree, and my first job was a video editor at LEX eighteen. I made ten dollars and fifty cents an hour <laughs> with my four year degree. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. So, and then I got a big kid job a year later in Cincinnati. I'm from Northern Kentucky, so it worked out. But yeah, so I lived in Lexington from two. Well, I graduated college in 2006, and I lived there till for just a year, till it. But I loved it. I loved living there. It was fun. But all my friends and family were an hour and a half north. So, so you are up in uh, Northern Kentucky now? Yes. Yeah, we're oh, in Union. Cool. Um, we're right by Boone County Distillery. You got the B line up there now. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love like Main Strauss and Covington, all the bourbon bars there. It's a great spot. It's so fun. It's really, really fun. Yeah, Actually, that was we used to go to the Covington before it was like bourbon bars. If you that, could see over the counter when you were 18, they would yes, let you drink. That was where we drank from 18 to 21. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so we could go to the big kid bars. So, <laughs> but yeah. Pepper stomping ground. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I, I think you just just announced your your release schedule. It's like Monday uh, Monday releases and then Monday live streams, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. What are you uh, are you doing? Anything exciting coming up soon? Yeah. On this, actually, we're gonna have Perry on from This Is My Bourbon Shop on uh, Monday night. Nice. So, what, what he's on Chad and Sarah's channel plenty. <laughs> Do you guys know what you're gonna be drinking? Wild Turkey, his favorite. You like 101 or? I think five different ones. Oh, I'll do 101, um, 81, the Rare Breed, the Kentucky Spirit, and probably Russell Reserve. I was actually bummed. I couldn't find anything but, well, I couldn't find any of the 80s. Are they, like, hard to find, or is it just my area kind of sucks for that? Your area probably sucks. We get them here all over the place here, the 81s, but nobody really buys them, but I have one because I don't because I needed one because I didn't have one. So that was a good reason to get one. I was trying to put together like a month of rye whiskeys and I wanted to do the wild turkey rye. Um, the Is it 80 or 81? They make both, an 81 and a 101. Okay, so they do. The 101's harder to find because it came out, they uh, they got rid of it, now it's back again. Okay, so, right, that's good. To know. Yeah, but I just want to try wild turkey rye because I like the bourbon a lot, especially the 101. Um, like it's awesome for the for the money for sure, but honestly it's awesome just in general. Uh, the first, first whiskey I ever tried actually, so. Um, on a cruise ship, I had it in a uh, in a Manhattan <laughs> when I was like 18. <laughs> Back when you could you could drink on cruise ships at 18 for a long time, and um, so my parents like they would we, that was usually what we did for vacations is went on cruises, and uh, I would just love it because I'd get to drink, which was wonderful, and scuba dive. So, <laughs> yeah. anybody um, actually on that note, is anybody planning any sort of trips any, or anything like that for the summer? I'm looking for like this. I'm going to go back to Texas. Well, actually, yeah, I'm going to Scotland in, in less than 30 days now. i uh, be over there for a few weeks. and go to London for two days, then Scotland uh, for a couple of weeks. And then when I get back, I'm supposed to head back to Texas on a business trip. And then while I'm there, I'll be visiting more distilleries. I'm hoping to push that off to September when it hopefully cools down a little bit. But 
Nice. You back already? You lucky bee. Yeah. <laughs> you just got so back. Been, so I visited 20 in last June. I'm visiting 17 um, this time around, plus taking a class at the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy. Jeez. Really looking forward to it. <laughs> Only 17 distilleries. Jeez. Jesus. I know, right? What, any any of note, Eric? Like any anyone that you're uh, particularly excited about? Springbank uh, in Campbellton, and then I'll finish up with Highland Park. Although I'm having a little problems with Highland Park at the moment, but we're, I'm having a Twitter war with them at the moment. They seem rather ir. They don't. I, I twice I've sent them requests. They not responded. So then I sent them messages through their uh, reps. Um, that didn't do any good. So I I sent them a Twitter. They responded on the Twitter, yeah, send us an email, this email address, and we'll respond ASAP. I sent them an email, two days go by, hadn't heard from them. So I responded to their Twitter with a photocopy of the email I sent, and I still haven't heard from them. <laughs> That's great. So I think they've been, maybe they've been taken over by Vikings or something. There's something going on. Severely <laughs> up there, yeah. <laughs> So let me interject for one quick sec. So anybody in the in the chat, let us know what you're drinking. Um, are you are you trying to keep up with us? Going going bourbon. Uh, what did we do? Bourbon, Irish whiskey, Scotch, and and continuing. Or are you doing your own thing? So uh, speaking of which, is anybody willing to? Uh, when we talked over email, I had said you know we do bourbon, we do Irish, we do Scotch, and then anything else that you happen to have. I grabbed. Um, I grabbed a Japanese, an Indian, and then just a weird Irish whiskey. Uh, but I'm curious if anybody else grabbed, picked anything like strange or unique. Bobby Zeller can flex. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, everybody knows you know, same, whatever. Uh, Bobby's gonna flex. I brought, yeah, I brought a, I brought a good Japanese whiskey for, for when, we, <laughs> when we get to that point. Yeah, Taiwanese, an American four grain, rice, Canadian, Japanese, too. Indians, all of it. Is that the Fire and Cane, or is that something different? No, that's what I was gonna say. So this is the Scotch I chose tonight. It's the twenty-one year Glen Glenfiddich uh, rum cast finish. That is quite different than the Fire and Cane. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Also a good Scotch, though. I'd love to. Do you mind pouring that, Matt? I would actually love to hear what you think about that one because I've I've seen it. I've seen it in the uh, Total Wine near me. They have it behind the the glass case. The amount of times I've thought about buying that um, is a lot. <laughs> but I'm curious what, what you think about it, if it's worth the money. He's changing again. Because <laughs> nobody's talking. He thinks that they should be talking. <laughs> oh, right. um, so, so how awkward was that? Good, that he thinks he's Queen Amadala. I know. <laughs> I want to know how many shirts he's got awkward, because he's changing it. every five I know. minutes. He's Lady Gaga at the Met Gala. She changed like 20 different dresses in a matter of 20 seconds. That's impressive. See? Oh, we have that shirt. <laughs> See, that's not fair because I, I put my microphone on. Oh, I know what it is. I bet that my my computer microphone is also picking this up. I need to turn that off. Ah, rookie mistake. Ah, silly. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not echoing, actually. Hmm. So for an upcoming study, I, I bought some interesting whiskeys um, that people t tend to not talk about. People don't drink, and there's not a huge selection out there. But they're, if you're studying, these are the types you need to know. This is a single grain scotch whiskey. This is a blended malt whiskey. And then this is a blended whiskey. And this is a single malt scotch. Um, so those are your various types of – there might be one more that I should have. That I don't think a blended Maybe. grain. A blended grain. Couldn't find one. Couldn't find one. Oh wait a minute! I have one of those. Duh. Uh, yeah, I got one of those. Hold on, let me grab one. That it did. I remember where and how I put it. Anyway, so I got a blended grain somewhere. So these. Are, so I'm going to be doing these for a study. In the meantime, I need to uncork these. Oh, here we go. A blended grain. Thank you, Matt. No problem. There you go. So. Uh, should at least be familiar with the categories. Not necessarily would recognize them uh, blind, but I would like to get to familiar with one of them anyway. Uh, these these three here are probably under thirty dollars, and over twenty one to twenty three dollars. So I don't have big expectations of them. Um, and then this Glenfiddich is actually my personal blend that I did at the distillery. Uh, and there's not much left in there, but it's absolutely absolutely killer. In fact, my blend from Glen uh, Glenfiddich. 
is better than the McCollin six, which sells for like four to five thousand um, dollars. So if you can do your own blend at Glenfiddich, uh, do that rather than buying a McCollin six. Of course, you're not getting a two thousand dollar crystal decanter in it, but it's a lot better than anything you can get from them. Are they going to go change their clothes? Everybody's <laughs> running away. I actually just, just realized that I have not been using my good mic this entire time, so I must have sounded like crap this whole time. <laughs> no, you sounded fine, Bill. Uh, well, thanks. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> um, anyway, I feel, like, I feel like this shirt is a little bit of a lie. I've actually given up coffee for the last like month and a half. Oh, my God. Me too. Yeah. I, I do it every now and then, like probably every four or five years, just to make sure I can without having just like crippling headaches. Nope. Um, I I'm can't just, do that. just now easing back into it though. And uh, oh, Steve says I sound like crap now. Um, yep. Do I sound worse now? Yes. It's not bad. It just isn't as good as it the way better before. Is it? Is it like quality or, or sound? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> That's a little better. <laughs> quality. Oh. <laughs> what, we're not doing what? shirt changes? Oh. What? Oh, is <laughs> no. You should have seen me trying to get this thing on. I know. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> Look at those guns. You're never getting that shirt back, Sam. That thing's going to be I cool. Yeah. Bobby's going to tear it in half. I, I got to say, Bobby, you look better in that than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> I might be calling you later. I know. Oh, <laughs> like, what does that say about me? I don't. I don't know that I'd say it fits because from he, here down where the belly is is not real. Uh... Like a halter top. <laughs> awesome. What happens right. when you've been married for? Eight well, years? I think I need another drink. I'm moving on to uh, <laughs> Japanese. Just after seeing that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, hey, Matt, do you have any single grain Scotch whiskeys? <laughs> yeah. I have a 25-year Cameron Bridge, an eight-year North British. And sorry, Eric White doesn't skip. And I've got those. I think I think three or four others, but those are sticking off the top of my head. Interesting. Okay, that'd be interested in checking out a Cameron Bridge. That's interesting. That is one of the best because I own is that 25-year Cameron Bridge. Thing is just beautiful. It's all fruits and dark. It's it's just great. Okay, you'd love that one for sure. Are you going to get a chance to go to any of the grain distilleries while you're there in Scotland? So out of the – there's 128 distilleries. Only 81 are open to the public. None of the grain distilleries are open to the public. Hmm. So the, the short answer is that no, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> so if, probably by my next trip, I'll have hit all the distilleries that are open. Although there's some new distilleries now opening and new tasting rooms. Uh, Bladnock in uh, the Lowlands, um, their tasting room will be opening probably like the second week that I'm there, so I might be able to uh, visit them just before I leave. So Donner Pass Whiskey says he just ordered a 100% grain, uh, sorry, no, grain whiskey that is 100% malt. Um, where are you that you're watching us and ordering whiskey, or is that just kind of how it goes in your house? I'm curious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he has to order it for his wife. Right. So Donner Pass Whiskey, he so he would be somewhat near Sacramento, California, and Donner Pass. Mm. Are, you, are you familiar with the Donner Party? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's where that took place. So he's sort of up in the in the foothills. Uh, Fine California. cuisine, that is. Cool. <laughs> yes, I heard that. You have a problem with cannibalism, Eric? <laughs> no, why you gotta can't? Why you gotta uh, food shame me? I don't know. <laughs> well, you made on You. Hey, if I eat haggis, I'll eat anything. I guess. That's a good, a good point, actually. <laughs> I, uh, I've never tried haggis. Has anybody else ever tried haggis? It, I would totally eat it. I've just never been like anywhere that had it. What the hell is it? I've never even heard of that. Yep. Eric, you want to take that one? So it's awful. But I, I don't mean it's bad. It means it's the inner inner parts of sh uh, sheep. Nope. Um, so nope. most most cuisine of most countries are it's the poor man's food. Uh, and then it became famous. So, you know, escargot, it was not, uh, you know, cuisine, French cuisine. It's what poor people could afford to eat. And then you, you bury it in butter and garlic, and then it becomes edible, and then it becomes fancy food at a fancy restaurant. Mm. So um, haggis isn't quite that fancy or cuisine necessarily. 
but it has that same sort of um, historical root to it. Yeah. Some chef just needs to get his hand on haggis and do something different with it, and it'll become a cuisine. I mean, the same thing with lobster. Like lobster used to be just junk food that you would give to to you know lower class or, or poor. It was like a poor person food, and now it's you know obviously wicked expensive. So yeah. And again, you dip it in in, bear, in drown it in butter. Exactly. When you said that, I was like, you know what? Maybe that's just the secret. You just like gotta bury everything in butter, and it's just good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, now I'm hungry. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Bill. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think we have any Japanese whiskey on hand. We do not. Ah, so what, do you guys that. have any sort of world whiskey whatsoever? Bur Bourbon Channel doesn't have any uh, Japanese. <laughs> scotch in that box. We're so uncultured. Are we on Scotch or Japanese? Well, it doesn't well, matter. I'm just talking about Scotch in a box. I yeah, tend to drink fast. I, I, scotch in a box. Scotch in a box. I feel like it needs its own little commercial with a, <laughs> a toy at the bottom. Yeah. I'm still <laughs> on scotch. And I poured a little long row of 14 cherry. Ooh, nice. Ooh. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, Keith, I got to say, you've always got a very impressive collection yeah, of, of whiskey. Good. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I, I, I think I need to come visit. <laughs> hey, anytime you're in Ohio, buddy, I got, I got a big house. We got a room for you. You just let me know. If I'm Ohio, if I'm in Ohio, I probably have some problems. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, if you ever go down to uh, like bourbon country or whatever, yeah, uh, I'm only like an hour away from Kentucky, so for real. nice, nice, that sounds good. Go cheap and need a place to stay. Just let me know. Keith, right. if you want to hang out with us, we're just in Northern Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. we're an hour Where away from here. We're, we're in Northern North Kentucky, Kentucky, right by Cincinnati. Uh, yeah. so you guys go to the party source all the time. Duh. Yeah. We do. I pass it on my way to work. Oh my gosh, that is you my a meetup brewing. Uh, I think I smell it. It's, I would it's love to happen. Let me know. Let's, do it. <laughs> Let's tailgate in the parking lot of the party source. Yes, do oh, it. Awesome. Do a review live yes. stream. We'll yes, bring perfect. Them so much business, they can't be mad. Yeah, oh my gosh. yeah. There we go. So, so for my Japanese whiskey, um, I got <laughs> wild turkey <Hey>. 13. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I realize it's not technically a Japanese whiskey, but that's the only place you can get it, and Flexin. so it's my best Japanese whiskey. He's a Bobby Zeller's overrated. <laughs> that that went from a joke to actually fairly impressive very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Is that now, age Matt, thirteen years? What's that? Is that age thirteen years? Yes. Nice. Is it pretty good? It's it's one of my favorite wild turkey expressions. It's really good. One hundred percent agree with you. Speaking of wild turkey, have you guys met Jimmy Russell? When anytime you guys, oh, met oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> Keith, you missed it last week. Oh man, well, bless what, what, what I missed. Yeah, isn't he the nicest guy He's ever? The nicest guy. He's so cute. We saw him do a talk once at a like a a small whiskey bar. It was like maybe twenty five people could fit in the room, and it was so cute. It took him like five minutes to get to his chair because he just like, teeny tiny little steps. Um. Oh, but you know, people always get on us because they're like, we, you know, do this. People are like, don't swirl your whiskey. You're agitating it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, Jimmy Russell swirls his whiskey. And if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. So you can deal with it. I hear he has a huge personality. Yeah. <laughs> he's pretty, he's, um, yeah. Okay, Chad and Sarah, since you're, since you uh, have met him, um, did you happen to take any pictures with him? <laughs> okay i want you to go check because i took a picture with him when i met him and somebody pointed this out to me um he he appears to have a pringles can in between his legs <laughs> yes <laughs> so you guys can check your pictures and see if it's the same thing no, you will never look at that old man like grandpa. <laughs> uh, right Grandpa's Dirty packing. grandpa. I, Grandpa's packing. Jeez. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Earlier tonight, I thought to myself, I was like, I wonder if the picture is going to come out again. <laughs> it comes out in uh, every one of our live streams. Why not this one too? You know, I, I also thought to myself, I was like, you know, in the off chance that anybody from there watches the stream, I'm like, you know what? That's at least not an insult. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm impressed. As soon as somebody mentions Jimmy Russell, me and Sam start giggling like Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, we're like we're thirteen year old <laughs> yeah. boys. No, I'll, I never, I'll never, same I'll never, in the exact same spot. Was that on a Sunday after uh, when he? I was during a, a sport, uh, uh, barrel no, pick. No, yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was. It was through the week. It was on a. Um, I, I got to go on a barrel pick, and that was at the end. He would. Eddie did the pick, and then Jimmy was just in the um in the shop when we were leaving. 
Yeah. Well, I have the exact same picture, and I would be lying if I said I did not think the exact same thing when yeah. I looked. <laughs> oh my we literally talk about it every live stream. <laughs> literally. Fine. Well, I'll, I'll never, I'll never eat Pringles again. So. I'm not hanging out with Jimmy Russell anymore. Get that. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Elephant man, hanging tough. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I would, I would be remiss if I didn't point out just one, one little thing, and I'm almost sorry to interrupt. So. A couple of people have asked me like about the icon. So there's a there's a button down below. It's it's a new feature with YouTube. It says join. It's very similar to Patreon. And if you join the channel, you get a bunch of extra little features with the live chat. So that's it. Just mentioning that because people have been asking. So and why not? Um, but Eric, thank you very much for the 99 cent page. I mean, uh, <laughs> very generous of you. <laughs> it, it actually didn't cost me a dime. <laughs> It was free from YouTube. I got I got notice I got a free one. Like, oh, what the hell? I'll chip in. That's pretty funny. <laughs> huh. I wonder why I can't see the chat at all. That's weird. Interesting. Hmm. It's uh, Jimmy Russell's can. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It's it could be. It's, it's, blo it's blocking the chat. It's blocking the chat. So. Scott, so, you went away for a while, but you're back. I, you I did. I, I had to go. I had to go collect my dog. He ran away. Oh, so. that happens. <laughs> Bobby's right yeah. now. Checking on our dog, who I guess is trying to get down here. But. Nothing would have made yeah. me happier, Scott, than if we saw you running around in the background of your your video there. Just <laughs> yeah, I, f I figured I figured you didn't want to listen to me yelling at the little bastard. So. Oh, we so did though. <laughs> yeah. So James, I will say uh, my favorite Pringles. It's a tie between the original because they're better than they should be and the sour cream. <laughs> Does anybody okay. else have a favorite yeah. flavor of Pringles? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we got we have a question actually for for Matt uh, about one of uh, oh, shitty Eddie. handwriting. Can't read the handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it looks like it says Spyburn. Uh, Spay. Spayburn. Spayburn. Yeah. Spayburn. Spayburn. Companion cask. Yeah, it's it's a single cask from Spayburn. I think you guys will like that one. Okay. Well, I'm gonna give it a shot. Nice. Huh. A shot. A shot. I know. I, I always have to stop myself from saying that, too. Oh, it looks like oh, water. What's no! going on? What's happening? <laughs> it's the color of scotch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. It says it's from I'm, 6 ABV. I feel sorry for you all. Getting a, getting a nutty nose off there, Chad? I mean, Mountain Dew is darker than this. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Interesting. We're not in Kentucky anymore, so. <laughs> Jimmy's I mean, favorite Pringles, screaming Bill it. Pickle. <laughs> it looks scary. But it's not. Oh, it's like sugar water. It's it's sure. You don't have any in your glass. Me? Oh, you do? Okay, all right. We're sharing. Well, I have um, <laughs> something unique and special. That's the barrel pick that I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He's got the warehouse delicious. I've been staying in the bourbon Arcade. world. Yeah. yeah. That's not bad. I can get I can get behind that. I win again. So Sarah, um, Sarah Who's from Sarah? Mystery Crusaders, the other Sarah. Okay. Um, you've been pretty quiet tonight. What, what's what's going on with uh, with you? I'm just drinking. You're just drinking. What, what are you drinking now? I've actually moved on to Kikori. Oh, you know, what do you think of that? I actually enjoy it a lot. Me too. Um, right? It's, it's 100 rice whiskey. Rice yeah. whiskey. Yeah. Um, American, French, and. Um, X sherry, I think, mm -hmm. is what it's uh, finished in. It's actually really good. I was very surprised. They 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 sent me an email. They're like, you know, do you want to try our thing? It's 100% rice whiskey, and mm -hmm. I, I had to actually go research. I don't cover anything that's not actually whiskey. Like I don't do flavors or whatever, except for that one fireball I did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it turns out that that's totally a legitimate type of whiskey only in America. Oh, yeah. Which, which I thought was. Have you have you reviewed that one yet by any chance? No, we haven't. Um, William actually. The, the distiller came into his restaurant, I guess, and brought him in a bottle and said, hey, what about we put this in your restaurant? And he said, well, I'll take it and try it. And uh, I guess Matt will have to get this on the channel soon. Nice. Bring it to the house on Sunday. I don't have that one. Uh, for sure. That's funny, Matt. I, it's not even that that hard to find. No, it. Matt doesn't have something. I know, yeah. right? 
<laughs> yeah, actually, that company is owned by uh, it's owned by a woman, and then there yeah. she has like a second, maybe it's a VP or something like that, who's also a woman. And mm -hmm. uh, I ended up talking to both of them on the phone for a little while, and they they seemed to actually really know what they were doing. I was I was a little surprised, not because of anything, but more just because it was like it seemed like a gimmick, right? So like in Japan, obviously there's a ton of rice, and they right. can make whiskey quote unquote whiskey over there out of rice, but it's not considered whiskey because it doesn't fit the criteria. But if they ship it over to America and then we take it from the barrel and bottle it, we can call it whiskey. And uh, when she told me about this, I was just like, this totally seems not like, not kosher, you know? Yeah. And then I, I did, I was like, all right, send me a bottle. I'm gonna do my own research and you know, if I review it, then cool, whatever. And uh, it turns out totally legit. And like you said, it's pretty good whiskey. I was, I was very surprised. It's pretty decent whiskey. I mean, three years. And what, what's, what's the name of the company? Kikori, K-I-K-O-R-I. Okay. It's, okay. A, it's a Japanese whiskey, okay. it's rice whiskey. Okay. So thank you, Michael Campbell, I appreciate it. Hmm. Anybody else? Uh, Tapped into anything? New? Hey, well, actually, you know, Chad and Sarah, what do you what do you think of that that whiskey? I think it's uh, completely serviceable. Yeah, I think it's a whiskey. I have a question. <laughs> it's it's mellow and it's it's sweet. I mean, yeah, it's not offensive at all. No, you know, and we've said this before. And you, I'm sure you guys have heard this. Like, you know, we're too born and bred Kentuckians who are obviously by the name of our channel into bourbon, bourbon and American rye. But we like, we like branching out. Um, but you know, if there was some old Scottish guy in a tavern over in Scotland and you went over there, you wouldn't be like, Hey old man, stop drinking just scotch. <laughs> you know, this will so, blow your mind. You'll never go back. And you you'll, would... like, you'll like this better than your, 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 you know, uh, your own scotch, you know, so obviously we're, we don't think we're ever going to find anything that dethrones bourbon, but we're always open to trying new things. Definitely. And, and because of kind people who send us samples. We're actually able to find things that we enjoy. Yeah. Versus like people who send us stuff that's like way to the end of like the spectrum yeah. that we know we don't we like. We want to see their they face. They just want to see our faces go. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's good. I actually, I actually enjoyed it. Nice. I actually, so I'm going I'm to say something a little controversial here. Um, yeah. uh, I know, I know. Uh, by the way, I've changed shirts once again. I've got my original. <laughs> <laughs> this was the the whiskey dick shirt that I originally did, but I didn't really like that it was only over here, so it just felt weird. I feel like I should have two of them and just. So. <laughs> that would be whiskey dick nipples then, right? <laughs> whiskey nipples. Whiskey dickles, or I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've always felt like Scotch does a thing significantly better, but bourbon overall, I like more. Um, for Blast example, me. I know, Blast right? Me. So like, like I'll, I'll have a scotch and I'll be like, that is a fantastic scotch. I can't even believe how much they nailed the flavor of pear. But bourbon, I'll be like, that tastes like the same three flavors plus one extra thing, uh, you know, caramel, vanilla, and oak, and then something else. But overall, like I really like the flavor. So a lot of people on my channel have been like, Bill, you only seem to like bourbon. It's not true, but I find like it depends on, on your attitude or, or your it depends on what mood you're in. But overall, I think if I had to pick one whiskey ever to only have ever again, it'd probably be a bourbon. Um, just, coming from my perspective, from my perspective, as a student, as a small yay, you don't have a choice. You have to be familiar with everything. So wines from Bulgaria, Romania, um, grapes you never heard of, you're not going to particularly like, it doesn't matter. You need to at least be somewhat familiar, <coughs> excuse me, familiar with it. So in studying everything and wanting to know everything, yeah, I have my favorites, but for academic purposes, I at least want to be familiar with everything. and every If they're making whiskey in Antarctica, I want to try it. I do too, actually. Damn right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I and we can we can definitely appreciate that, Eric. Like, yeah. you know, anytime we get uh, sent a sample or we try something that we, you know, more than likely would never have bought ourselves, we're always like, we're very appreciative. Yeah. We tried it, and that's only like broadened our horizons and our whiskey experience. You know, um, so yeah, we're we're right there with you. Eric. Well, my so, other thing is, that, is I'm probably twenty years older than you. 
and I'm running out of time. And I need to tr I need to taste and try everything before I croak. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you there. Well, my, my thing is like my taste change like food. You know, your palate changes food wise every so many years. You know, you don't like avocado, and then all of a sudden you like avocado, right? And so I kind of feel the same way about whiskey. It's like I'm never going to say no to trying something because I never know when that like switch, switch is going to flip. But I almost said flip is going to switch. Um, so yeah, I just want to keep trying stuff to figure out like if that will ever happen. And a couple of the things that we've been sent lately, I'm like, oh, I could get into this. Um, yeah, there was a bourbon barrel finished scotch that we had recently that I was like, hmm, it's not too out you there, know, but like baby steps, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I love my yeah, here, here was here was my thoughts. Be king for uh, me. I just feel like the amount of flavors that can be found in scotch are a whole lot more. And here's the thing. Now, that there's some amazing bourbons out there, and they, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with scotch. But the problem is those are the bourbons that are aged for a while, and just so many bourbons, they don't age them for a long time. So bourbon could be just as good. I just wish they would. And I know it's the supply and the demand and everything, but if they wanted to, they could plan accordingly and figure out a way to age them for longer. I don't know. What do you guys think? Scott, what were you going to say? I, I don't know. I mean, here, here's my here's my like thing with scotch, and, and the reason why I, I struggle – why, why I struggle with it is the fact that I'm not a huge single malt fan from the standpoint that it's so malted barley dominant that I think for me in, in, now again, this is coming from somebody who loves bourbon is that that malted barley for me dominates so many of the other underlying flavors that I have a hard time getting past that, that grain. And then, you know, people, in the Scotch world want to talk about it being aged 30 or 40 years, 20 years. Well, I mean, that, that's not like a 20 or 30 year old bourbon. I mean, they have to age it 20 or 30 years to pull a lot of those flavors because it's, it's a secondary barrel. And if you don't leave it in that barrel for that long, I think the, the, I'll, I'll just say single malt at this point, I think it struggles to pull out a lot of those flavors that I think a lot of people who do enjoy Scotch really like so i think when you hear people talk about a lot of scotches most of them do seem to be ones that have some age because of that reason now that's that's my own you know my own thought but well and then and then on top of that not only is it um the fact that they're not first filled barrels but also the weather in scotland isn't like correct the weather in most of the places that they're making bourbon exactly exactly so. is the volume of someone's television on yeah, let me turn it off. Oh, God, I'm watching the baseball game. What game are you watching? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, like, God has not had enough scotch is the problem. Clearly, he's <laughs> the wrong scotches. He, he needs to come here and have a, a real tasting. We'll take care of this problem. <laughs> I, I just, I, I just, you know, for me, I just struggle with, with malted barley is that I've had, I've had other scotches and single malts, and I can't get past that dominant barley flavor. And everything else is is just secondary to me. I just, I can't, I can't get past it. I mean, everything that I've had outside of something that has a lot of peat, which to me tastes like licking the dirt. Yeah, I, yeah, man. I, I, I just, oh, yeah. I, I just can't, I just can't. I mean, it's just, I've tried it and I, it's not my thing. And I, yeah, I've, I've come to the, the scotch, realization that. The scotch is the, the space size and the Highland and sherry finishes. There's a lot of, you know, I think it's uh, broaden the horizon on, I think, and you can find the right ones. You just kind of have to nail down your flavor profile, and eventually yeah. you can like it. It just takes time and finding the right ones that fit for you. And what's yeah. wrong with and, 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 in fair, Yeah, I in know, fairness, right? I mean, I've not tried that many. I mean, I've maybe had, I mean, total scotches and single malts all together, like maybe seven to ten. So, I mean, yeah, I'm oh. talking about not, okay. not having very many. So I don't have experience. I'm just saying for the ones that I have had, they've all been so, so grain dominant that, I just I I can't even enjoy it at all. So that that's my take. But yeah, we'll, we'll give you we'll send you some good stuff. Because uh, what have you had so far that you don't like? Can I interject for just one sec, Sarah? What bookers did you just get? <laughs> Everyone saw me. I was sneaking. <laughs> well, I feel like I have. I mean, I have to join you. <laughs> yeah, the kitchen table. Uh, the uh, twenty eighteen oh four. Oh, I have the 01 and 03. I think I'm going to go get the 01. I'll be right back. Don't mind my Batman pants. They're Batman pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just have to pay because I'm Batman. At least he's wearing pants. So, yeah, at least he has pants on. Yeah. There's that. 
So out of one out of ten sneaky, I'm gonna go just real bad. <laughs> <laughs> <I get two. laughs> well, I, I think I'm somewhere in between Bill and Chad and Sarah. Uh, I, I really um, there are some scotches that I love, uh, especially the peated stuff. But as a born and raised Kentuckian, um, my go-to is almost always a bourbon. And I would say three quarters of my collection are bourbons. So I would say 99.9% .9 of my collection. Well, no, I have, no, there's you have a lot of rye. There's a lot of rye. 95%. 95% of bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me, let me just uh, do this for just one sec. Yes. Oh, what a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so I do funny. actually have the kitchen table. Yeah. So I do actually have the kitchen table. I was I I uh, must have finished the O3. So I'm sure it was on a stream where I don't remember. It was um, the O3 your favorite? Uh I liked the O1 probably a little bit more than the O3, but the O3 was a second for me. Was that backyard barbecue? <sighs> no, that was O2. Um I forget what the O3 was called. Um Kentucky Chew, maybe? Mm -hmm. Or was that That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Kentucky yeah. Kathleen's back. Batch. batch and then um Kathleen's batch was on one and then backyard barbecue and then Kentucky Chew and then the kitchen table, I think. Yeah. But I haven't I haven't reviewed any of the 2019 O ones because I have or, or I haven't seen them anywhere. The um, the uh yeah, the O one nineteen is a little divisive. So yeah, I've heard it's not very good and I kinda wanted to see for myself. So because I mean I, I guess I'll open up a Booker's guys. Well, if we're oh, if we're, I recognize that uh, you shouldn't Watson. open up for us. If we're doing Booker's, I guess I'll uncork this Booker's thirtieth. <gasps> uh, <ooh. Hell> yeah. <laughs> I, I guess you know, yeah, no big deal. You better <laughs> fall in love. We were too drunk to this, post it. Yeah, this is one of the videos that that was at the end of the batch that never made it out. Yeah, we're. It's How much does that typically go for? Do, does anybody else have some bookers that wants to join us before we? Uh, uh, okay. That's, that's two hundred dollars retail, and it's yeah. probably going for about two to three times that on secondary. Yeah. My husband's a dick. He's an asshole. Oh, no, no, that's Bill. Oh, he's a dick. Yeah. I married another I changed dick. my shirt again. Right. There's the dick, and this is just yeah. the dick. This is actually, I, well, this could be the last change of shirt for the night. I have two more, but I've kind of, you know, been sitting at my desk a little bit too much lately. They don't fit me so well. So. <laughs> he's going to start changing pants. Uh, I put on one of your wife's shirts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what all the cool kids are doing. All right, so pe people are correcting me. Apparently, I was wrong about the Kentucky Chew. The uh, well, actually, no. Hold on, it's number the three. Guy right? Corrected me twice. He said the O2 and the O3 were both the Kentucky. I, I don't know what to think anymore. No, Chew's three, and, and the Becker Barbecue's two. I thought so. See, I'm not. All right, <laughs> you shouldn't question me on Booker's. <laughs> I'll say it for you, Bill. Fuck yes. you guys in the chat. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> he does. Stop it. But well, we love you. Getting real. You, guys. you guys are awesome. Well, let's watch that, Uh, you know, watch your rate. Oh, actually, we're at 97 people. Or we were at one point. <laughs> so close to 100. Right I'm started talking. Sorry. That's okay. I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'd rather have 10 people in the chat and have you here, Sam. So. Oh, thanks. Because uh, <laughs> we're our best friends. Yeah. All right. So anybody else have some bookers that's joining us tonight? I've got the kitchen 2013-04. Oh, wow. You're having the same one as us. Did you pour it yet? Uh, no, I'm still working on that. Uh, that is a man's pour right there, Bill. Holy crap. I, I don't know what you're talking about. This is, that this is, is a little bit. What? Is that's, that, that's that. Oh, I was like, like baby. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I went and grabbed the uh, the 2019-01. So this is called Teresa's Batch. Teresa's Batch. Oh, yeah. the original. I haven't had it. <laughs> Probably about a month, so I have heard that the uh, the O2 is starting to make its way around too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't, we seen, haven't it. seen it here yet. No, okay. Well, if you guys haven't seen it, I have no chance. It is, it's at our Kroger's right now. I I didn't buy it just because I was so I w didn't I was let down by the O1 that I'm like, eh, maybe I'll wait on the O2. I would I would imagine that they probably heard people's reaction to the O1, although I I don't know how long it takes to bottle something and kind of get it into like out into the world. I got to imagine it's like at least a month or two. So for us, historically, we've liked the, the, the later, the, the later, year. I think our 2017 <laughs> favorite was later in the year. Our 18 favorite was the last one. 2017 was sip a while, which I yeah. think was four. Also? It was three or four. Three or four. And last year was four. four. Yeah. So, so we're kind of like, okay, so the O one one is divisive, but it's only going to get better from here. 
See, that's funny because I'm the exact opposite, at least so far. Like the the 2017-02 was my favorite of 2017. And I I would say that the 2018 01 and the and the three were probably about tied, but I'd probably give it to the 01. So that's funny. But then again, I'm I do everything like more jack of all trades, and you guys are focused on bourbon. So I would actually I would all things being the same, I would probably say that you guys probably have a better taste for that stuff than I do. Um, interesting though, it's it's cool. So Matt, I see that you have a, a Booker's as well. Yeah, this is Kathleen's batch. Okay, it's, it's what's open, so that's what I'll drink. Nice. <laughs> I found of all the bourbons that I reviewed during Bourbon Month, uh, this one needed more time to open up. I wish I had a Booker's more, more, more than any other. Boy, I just love the way every Booker smells. Like, just whatever. That that's it. I mean, that's the only point I have. To make. It's just <laughs> it's just good. <laughs> all right, shall we? Uh, is anybody still pouring? Do we need to wait for anybody here? Because it seems like an odd event. All right. Well, <laughs> cheers to the Pringles can. <laughs> hey, there's a dog. Yeah, she's so sleepy. Mm -hmm. That's why you guys get so many subscribers because you have a dog on your channel. She's <laughs> cute dog too, so she got that going for her. Now go. Do you guys all think Booker's has? Do you guys remember the soda soda bottle cap candies? Do you guys remember those? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Do you guys think that Booker's had it's like the grape or grape one? I knew you were gonna say grape. That's awesome, right? Do you yeah. think you get that note uh, enough that I knew what you were talking about? Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. funny. That's what I love about Booker's. Huh. Yeah, if I look for it, I can I can see that. But I think overall the the nuttiness <laughs> just <laughs> come through for us. It's yeah. I mean, it's not the strongest. You, that you, say that, man? you ruined Booker's. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, what do you think? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, but if you've oh, been okay. talking, we haven't heard you. Oh, okay, I was just wondering. So um, I said something, but I didn't know if you heard me. So during Bourbon Month, I really like this one, um, the 2018-04, but I found more than any other bourbon, it did, needed more time to open up. You really, <clears throat> It really seemed extra spicy, more woody from the neck pour. Um, but then as he got past the shoulders, got more of classic bourbon notes as well as that sort of um, – and some nice cherry notes. Uh, but also that peanut butter character in the background started uh, coming out as well that I really liked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to regret even saying this out loud. But, Eric, I'm about an inch short of uh, what you are there. <laughs> and, uh, well, in San Diego, I discovered that um... – <laughs> So I'd say that, that our bottles are probably about similar. Mine's – I would say this is still like super spicy and, and very heavy on right. the oak. Um, but it became more well-rounded, everything more integrated yeah. as it got past the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And I like that sort of nuttiness in the background as well. Mm -hmm. I like that I can see the reflection of all of us talking in your uh, Booker's box there. Like I've never wanted something more <laughs> than to be reflected in Booker's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's funny. <laughs> nice. So Keith, what do you uh, what do you want to? Did you move on to a bourbon like a man? Yeah, I'm <laughs> I, I <started> like <laughs> a man. I, I don't have bookers. I wish I did, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my Elijah Craig barrel proof. Um, okay. Batch C918. That is a yeah. solid choice. <laughs> what is your guys' favorite? favorite out of all the batches? And do you guys think the older batches before they switched the bottle design? Do you guys think those were better? Or do you think it's all psychosomatic? For a it's bit? better. It's psychosomatic. <laughs> I, just, I had to say the opposite, right? Right, of course. I, actually, I, had to say the opposite. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, I think a blind flight would be in order for yeah. that. I do feel like they they were higher proof back in the pirate bottle. That's what I call the old bottles, because you look at the font, it just looks like a pirate. Really. The old bottles were so much better. I still love Elijah Greg, don't get me wrong, but I miss the old bottles. Mm. Yeah, for shelf... Um, Beauty, the old bottle's definitely sexier on the shelf. Then these are just too sleek. <laughs> so here's a, here's a question for you guys. I think this will actually be really useful for the, the viewers here. Let's say you go into the, the liquor store and you're interested in going and buying a bottle that you've never had before and that you know nothing about. What is it physically, like, do you look at the bottle? Is that the thing that attracts you to it? Is it the color? Is it something else? Like, what what a... I hope you guys know what I'm asking, but like, what is it that attracts you to a new bottle that you know nothing about? 
For me, it's the proof. ABV? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I want a high proof bourbon, and that's what I reach for. So if For a scotch, it, if it's like not colored, someone else talking, I'm sorry. I can't hear you. No, you're good, Keith. You're good. So ABV seems to be seems to be all around. So, so I, was right. at, I was at two different places Eight. today. And when I saw something I didn't know what the heck it was, I pull up my iPhone, I immediately look it up. Um, so there was there were some Japanese quote unquote whiskeys I was looking at, but when I looked into them online, it turns out they were actually importing Scotch whiskey, and you don't know what the heck they're importing, and blending it with some Japanese whiskey, which could be a drop. Um, so they had real fancy labels, pretty labels, beautiful bottles, but you don't know what the hell you're getting. So I, I yeah, I wasn't buying them. But they have pretty does, labels. Does anyone know practice. this stuff at all? Spirit Hound Distillers. Any? I don't know. Never heard of it. So real quick, uh, oh, question to the chat as well. Like, post post your answer in the chat if you guys have, have something in particular that you look for. Um, sorry, Scott. You know, that's funny because when um, I was just getting into bourbon, that's completely how I bought bottles. Like, back before I was a fan of higher proof bourbons, I was really just buying the bottle because of what it looked like. So that's why... Mm -hmm. Some of my first purchases were Jefferson's, just because I thought it was a cool bottle, um, things like that, and and uh, anything with reserve. Anything with reserve, because I started <laughs> theory that if it had reserve on the label, it tasted good because it checked out, <laughs> even down to weather special reserve. It was like this thing's eighteen dollars and it's still good. So, oh man, the days when that used to be eighteen dollars. Yeah, that that theory, uh, you know, was debunked. But um, I think nowadays. If I see a new bottle, what won't, what will make me not get it is if it's a bad font. If it's that, what's that awful font? The, the, the papyrus. Papyrus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. If you have a yoga studio, never use papyrus. Right. And even so, don't yeah. do it. <laughs> Just in general, no. Yeah, Courier new, papyrus, Times New Roman. Yeah. Really bad. Just don't do it. Like, bad as far as like their bottle design. Craft distillers out there, they're just like, Urgh. Dude, you got to step it up. While we're on the topic of topography, just to keep this as nerdy as humanly possible. Oh yeah. Um, so the other day, I was I was photoshopping a picture of one of my coworkers because it's a thing I do, and uh, I I decided to make him look gangster. So I, I actually Googled the term gangster typography, and I realized I've never looked for anything whiter in my life. <laughs> um, let me see here, uh, gangster. That was a good topography to use to extract. <laughs> what is going on, guys? Hey, Kurt. Oh, Chris is here. Hey, hey, there you are. I'm glad you made it. You have no you idea did. how fast I drove home to get into this. I needed some bookers so bad. So you were totally typing while you were driving, didn't you? No, no, I would never. I would never. never. Of course not. Why would you? Yeah. He wants to get in on that bookers. I, yeah, I really man. did. What, what are you drinking? I, I started a trend. Yeah. <laughs> Which one you got, Chris? So I went with the uh, 2019-01 just because, I don't know, I was so disappointed with it to begin with. So I let it open up a little more. We'll see if it's any better. I'm curious to know what you think. That's exactly what I'm drinking right now, too. Yeah. Yep. So, so just get, oh, good. I was just going to say, it, this Booker's Badge, it's, this is already better, I think, than it was, but it's so alcohol forward on the nose compared to other Booker's Badges, I think, hmm. previous releases. So usually when I get that, I add a couple drops of water and it helps, but mm -hmm. I mean, obviously trying it out for the first time or after a while. Yeah, I, when I did the review of this, I did add water to it and honestly, the alcohol did not go away. Hmm. For me, at least, I don't know. I think I'm hoping that at least when the bottle gets down a little further, like maybe halfway down or more, it's going to get better. But what do you think, Chad? You... One? What's that? What's the proof? What's the proof? Yeah, proof is uh, 125.9. Okay. okay, so Chad, are you getting the same same alcohol uh, nose on that? Yeah, it's it's pretty it's in like, your face. I think it's definitely more alcohol for than like um, the 2018-04. But I don't think the, the taste. Exactly, uh, you know, what's that? Yeah. What? <laughs> what you doing? Oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh, it's happening. It's oh, happening. my God. I'm now completely <laughs> naked. Oh. 
Let me, let me just bring that right to the forefront there. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> show up Russell. Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> well, right, everybody, yeah. just take your shirts off. Stop everybody on the stream, all of you. Stop your face Let's right just now. Go ahead, everybody. Take your shirts. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That. That's that. Nope. What's nope. what's that? What's that? What's that term? Jumping shark? Yeah, right. Yeah, Eric, put your shirt back on. I'll tell you right now, y'all are fucked up. Eric, That's what I'm going with. You guys are all fucked up. Eric, I am so proud of you right now. I'm in my case, I wish Eric had a drink part of the stream. That's yeah, right. In my case, it's, it's jumping the manatee. <laughs> <laughs> If this thing hasn't been if this thing hasn't been demonetized by now, it will be any second. So you've been working oh, out there. No. Oh. <laughs> you've been you've been working out. <laughs> Which way to the gym is it's, it's like it, no, it's like, <laughs> it's like what's it? What does everybody say? It's like, bro, do you even lift? Right. Yeah. <laughs> bro, do you even drink? Yeah. yeah. Um, so what does your shirt say, Chris? Kiss me, I'm Irish. What? Kiss me, I'm Irish or drunk or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Am I the only one that can't hear Chris from Bourbon saying? Damn it, Keith, you're you're. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is, is Damn it, Keith. I don't know. I, I've done. I haven't changed any settings since all the other live streams I've done. So I don't know what. I don't think. So, hashtag so. Damn it, Keith. Right. Damn it. <laughs> so on a scale of zero to ten, how awkward was it when I first logged in? And apparently, you probably said something to me, and I just stood there awkwardly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could we could tell you were having problems hearing us, but but when you just kept continuously interrupting Eric, it was it was getting good. <laughs> Eric was like he was he was doing some sort of French words and they were just like interject, interject, interject. Sorry, buddy. That's oh man. All right. So people are asking Chad and Chris to do a little head to head and uh see what see what they think about the 09 there. Oh, okay. Um <clears throat> I mean, I, I overall enjoy it. Um, it's not going to beat my favorites of past years, but you know, one of our one of our regulars in chat, Monica. What does she describe it as? Like, I mean, I can't recall off the top of my head. Something like drinking Clorox or something. I mean, she it was just that? it wasn't uh, bad exactly, but it was something like really like whoa, throwing down the gauntlet. Oh, uh, it's it's not. I don't feel that strong. No, it's 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 not like that at all. It's a normal bookers, just not on the um, upper end of a of a bookers. I hundred percent think that like this uh, twenty eighteen oh four is miles better. It is. Yeah, it is. But I'm and not, this has been open for a while. But I'm not not enjoying the nineteen. What what about you, Chris? It's so yeah, I mean, when I first opened this bottle, I thought it was like really far off of a Booker's profile even. Like I really did. I thought it was way, way alcohol forward on the nose. I mean, the palate was still better. I, the, the nose is really where it was just bad for me. But now it's getting better. I mean, it's, it's like you said, it's getting more of that Booker's nuttiness. And I mean, more, more like the, the, the rich brown sugars and caramels you'd expect in a Booker's, but it's just, it's still, like you said, it just doesn't live up to the other batches. I don't think. Chris, how far down is your bottle? How far, how far have you drank it down? About maybe a third ish. All right. So, so let, let I would just not even revisit it for two, three. Yeah. I mean, I would just let yeah. it sit for, you know, two, three, four, six months and just see what, see what it does. I you know, know, it may, it may need that no time. Stuff? Yeah. But how's that Booker's thirtieth? That's what I want to know. That's what I, I know. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. Peanut butter review. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna well, lie. It's very quiet over there. It's like a it's like a peanut butter cup. It's, it's like it's, it's, it's yes. so good. Peanut butter. Yes. I want to go <laughs> get ice cream and pour it over it and just eat it like it's <laughs> fucking. I remember dessert. thinking the exact same thing actually. I I ended up having that. I was out in San Diego and I was doing a, just an impromptu live stream and I, I only had a sample of it. I didn't have the bottle because I'm not a high roller apparently. Mm -hmm. um, but. <laughs> but I, uh, I remember flexing. thinking that peanut butter. He's flexing. He's yeah. flexing. He's dumb. He's dumb. He's dumb. <laughs> He's dumb. He's dumb. 
By the way, there are now uh, Legend of Zelda pants. You upgrade the Batman pants, and you just did it. I just did it. Yeah. I, knew, I knew I had it in my back pocket, and I could get it done. <laughs> Ramman asks if the Booker's Booker's thirtieth is worth the height. I think yeah, it yes. Is. So for so the for two hundred dollars MSRP, I would pay this all day long and, mm -hmm. and do a cartwheel after I did. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I hundred percent agree. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Yeah. Agree. Now, have have any of you tried the Booker's Rye? Because I, I know Chad, yeah, yeah. you guys had it with me that first time. I was just like blown away by that. Wow. Yeah. You don't speak of that because there's nothing else that delicious out there right now. <laughs> yeah. right? I, I I agree. I it agree. is like the land of magical Booker's. It was just so yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's two, oh. two Rye's ever. Next. What, what was the other two? Oh, what was the other one? Black Prince. Mm. That is tasty. Mm. That is. That would be my close second, I think, to the Booker's Rye. Yeah. Yeah. Which but, one I mean, I feel like that would be more expensive, like retail, if you could get either one retail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Booker's yeah. Rye was like 300 retail, and when Black it, Prince you, is like 500. Yeah. 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 Exactly. We actually had a chance. Hey, Jason just joined us. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, he's fine. Yeah. What yeah. is up, everybody? Oh, hey. What's up, Jason? Hey, What's up? Hey, What's up? <laughs> Like, I'm drumming. Drum there goes, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> hey, you can take your shirt off. We're good, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you have a very low bar to try to to be above. Here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but sad story. I had a chance to buy a bottle of Booker's Rye at like maybe ten percent above retail, mm. but at the time I hadn't had it yet. And I was like, oh, over $300. That's a lot for a, for a bottle of Booker's. Uh, I'm going to pass. And then later, I had it. And I was like, what did I do? Yeah. I was, I was, in, that, I was in that same exact camp. I even had a guy that was down in uh, in Illinois, like not a great part of Illinois. And and he even said, he's like, hey, I'll even, I'll even cut you a little bit of a deal. So I could have gotten it for like – now two fifty, and I was like, oh. ah, I, th I think the wife's gonna be extremely mad if I show up with a two hundred fifty dollar bottle. <laughs> well, it. Now, well, yeah, tell her. yeah, it's that simple. Yeah, yeah. never yeah. tell her well. you passed on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, dollars. yeah, yeah. So, needless to say, that's that's my biggest whiskey regret ever. It's so. hard today, though, to know like what to pass on and what to buy because there's so many it options in right? that like upper range and. I've had so many over $100 that have been disappointing. And then some things that are in that same range that I'm like, oh, I would totally pay this again. Thank yeah. God for whiskey. That's an expensive whiskey, role. Right? You know, that. thank God for whiskey reviewers. Like, we're just doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> hey, we, are. Hey. we are doing the Lord's work. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so what's everybody, uh, what did I miss? What's everybody sipping right now? Uh, we're on, uh, on here you must have some bookers, right, Jason? Uh, yeah, I have a lot hey, of William. I have a lot of freaking bookers. So most of us are drinking the 201804 right now or the 29901. I think it's about half and half. Well, right. Booker's 30th over here. Well, they don't nice. count. They're nah. purely human. Keep it so. classy. Keep it classy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have bookers, so I'm drinking um, a Jack Daniels Barrel Proof. Ooh. Oh. Proof, so I got the uh, 130.8 out. I was mm. actually very impressed with, with what Jack Daniels was ever able to pull off with their higher stuff. Like yep. the single barrel was actually really good. Yeah, yep. I enjoy this a lot. Yeah, I haven't done that one yet. I, single I think barrel probably... barrel proof. So just, just a. Uh, uh... And William's here. Yeah, hey, William. Hey, William. Hello, hello, everybody. Yeah. So you prefer William, right? Because I'm totally not going by William. No, William <laughs> or Will. Will, uh, see, Will is my least favorite version of my name. It's not nothing against you. I have a I had a boss at one point who called me Will, and I just didn't like him. So it's like <laughs> he personally ruined my own name. So. Well, what about Slick Willie? I will totally go. I will go for Slick Willie Willis. Uh, <laughs> what you talk? What you talk about, about Willis? Exactly. <laughs> Willis. <laughs> Willis. Willis. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm, gonna join you, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna join you guys with some uh, kitchen table here. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Didn't want to reach for that 01, huh, Jason? The which one? You didn't want to reach for that 2019 01, huh? That's all the way in the back. <laughs> 
Teresa's batches did not do it for me. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. what's uh, what's the hat, Jason? Oh, it's a Ohio State hat. I, I want to I want to um, make it clear that I am not affiliated nor am a fan of Ohio State. <laughs> I just I just happen to, I I just happen to live in Buckeye country and I get free things from uh, where I work. So <laughs> screw the Buckeyes. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah, Keith. Yeah, Keith. Yeah, you, you heard that coming from a bad. You coming from a badger? Screw them Buckeyes. <laughs> hey man, I'm sorry for all those butt kickings. When was the last time you guys beat us, anyways? <laughs> Don't you worry about it. I mean, I want yeah. a bottle bet uh, with them. Oh, let's talk basketball. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been a rough couple of years for basketball. I, I can't even talk uh, Bruins fucking last night. Oh, oh, man. Talk Did, about did anybody watch that shit. game? Like, come on. Yes. That, there is no way that that trip there at the end. Like, come on. Come on. Listen, listen. Don't don't cry me a river, Whiskey Dick. You got the Bruins, the Patriots, the Red Sox. <laughs> and we need to win everything. I don't want to hear yeah. it. I really don't want to yeah. hear it. <laughs> the, la- the last thing I'm going to feel sorry for is a New England uh, sports fan. Yeah, try, try, being a, try being a Mets fan all your life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or a Lions fan. If you're a Mets fan, that's your own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would agree. It's I should have been a Yankee fan. It would have been an easier life, but I chose yeah. the wrong path. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, Chris, well, well, Chris and those guys, they feel the same. It's like being a Lions and, and a Tigers fan. Yep. I mean, it, what's the difference, you know? <laughs> yeah, Lions. Some of my, the world, the world needs ditch diggers. Some right. of my earliest sports memories, when I was in first grade, the Bengals went to – so we're just outside of Cincinnati. The Bengals went to the Super Bowl and lost. And then in 1990 – the Reds won the World Series, and I was just like, "Oh, our teams just always win." Mm-hmm. And that was, and and that was the last time any of them. <laughs> yeah. Things have changed yeah. drastically since then. <laughs> in fact, well, this is the first year I'm considering switching from being a Bengals first fan to a Browns fan. I've always uh, been for the Browns, oh, but the, the Bengals, man, they're such a cruel mistress. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. They held on to yeah. Marvin Lewis for one too many years, and I love him. He's a great guy, but he had to go. Yeah. I feel, uh, I actually, feel, I feel the pain. I feel the pain for football. I'm a Dolphins fan, so I know everything about losing. So I actually wanted to ask, uh, I want to ask Chad and Sarah, what were your? Uh, did you guys try Teresa's batch yet? Where were your impressions? That is what we were just talking about right before you joined. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I think a lot of people were hating on it, and that, and, and I don't. Hate it? I don't know. I don't hate it. I just don't think it tastes like a burger. Right. I, yeah. <laughs> I think that's. The, I think that's the perfect. That's the perfect description. I don't hate it, but it just. Yeah. It just didn't taste like a quintessential Booker's to me at all. But we were saying earlier, like we have liked the later editions in the year, like the 03 or the 04s. Yeah. I think actually both 17 and 18 were the 04s that we liked the most. Yeah. So we're like, okay, so they missed the mark on the 01. The O2 is going to be better. More than likely, the O4 is going to be our favorite. If, like, we're not, you know. not going to quit buying Booker's because this one's kind of off the mark. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, it, and it's still, I still enjoy it. It's just like when you drive a Ferrari and then you have to go down to Ford Fiesta or, you know, whatever. Right. It's like, you know, yeah. I think it's to know what you could have and then have to be getting yeah. everything else. Yeah. I had I had a I had a taste of the new shiny barrel batch, which is the second one this year, and uh, definitely better than Teresa's batch. So I'm hoping it's going to continue along the pattern where, like you said, the the fourth one is just going to be the best, hopefully. So yeah, it's not right. Teresa though, whoever that is, because so I know, <laughs> I know. Sorry, <laughs> All right. All right. I, I, have a, I, I have a question for everybody. So this is directly from the chat because you know they matter. Um, <laughs> they do. They do. Um, so most of us do kind of a, a video at the end of the year where we talk about our favorite whiskey of the year. It's about halfway. You know, it's what June seventh, um, or yeah, it's ten forty six. So June seventh still. Anybody got any front runners at the moment? Wow. Four Gate Whiskey Company. What is it? Four Gate Whiskey Company. Do you have a bottle? I'm just curious to see what it looks like. I haven't heard of it. Uh, I've, it's downstairs. I'll, but, uh, I could, I have one here. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Jason's got yeah. one. That's a really good one. We yeah, here's the that's 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 the four gate. <laughs> oh, you know what? Yeah, um, you guys brought that up the last time we did one of these big big things. Yeah, it's yeah. A, uh, it's it's a it's an 11 year old rum that was finished in 
uh, sherry barrels, or also sherry casks that held rum for like eight months. Yeah. I don't know about anything that's blown our hair back so far. You know, we're also trying to keep track of like what's been divisive because you know last last year we did our bourbon night awards and we had all different types of categories. So you know, like, um, like you know, obviously this bottle's kind of been divisive. The the Legion was was divisive. divisive. We liked it. I feel like um, this small batch this guy, is a, I think it's a little yeah. Small batch, though. This isn't yeah. going to be best of, but the Four Roses small batch select, you know, 104 proof non chill filtered. Um, we enjoyed so this yeah you know, i nice. i i would agree i would agree with that chat and sarah that was yeah. that's probably the one bottle that i had that probably met up to my expectations of what it could be yeah and when i sipped it and when i drank it i and it's i i think it's it's a great it's a great bourbon price is right it's older stuff yeah. in there it's it's good stuff yeah, yeah. i completely agree with that so yeah. let, me, let me actually i'm going to alter my question for a minute just because i i do want to set I want to expand the parameters here. So I don't care if you say Glenn live at 12. It's more of a, like for your own channel, what have you reviewed so far in 2019 that you think would be your top whiskey? Ooh. So oh, okay. That, thus far, thus far, that's really standing out is Balcona's Texas single malt, the rum cast finish. Yes. And, and H H Hechiceros I had with Daniel Whittington, but I didn't review it. Don't have a bottle of it, but I like that one even more. But in terms of what I reviewed, I'm loving this one. I was a big fan of the Balcones French Oak. I thought that thing was delicious. Hell yeah. It's because Texas is awesome. Murka. 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 I don't know. The I guess I guess I guess one for me, and I think this is maybe I, I don't remember if this was the end of eighteen or beginning of nineteen, but when the when the barrel dovetail came out, it really surprised me. And I really, really dug that stuff. It's it's a really interesting whiskey, whatever you want to call it, you know, category, but it it's really good. I, I really enjoyed the dovetail. I have not heard a negative thing about dovetail yet. Yeah, it's so good. I, I tried it in a whiskey tasting, but I had had literally about 30 or more samples prior to it, so I, I have no clue what it tasted like. Um, if, it's, if it's a whiskey I reviewed, I think my favorite so far, besides the Four Roses Small Batch Select, would probably be the Mickers Barrel Strength Rye from this year that was released. Hmm. Oh, oh, you mean this, Jason? Oh my God! <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I was flexing this whole time. Ignore him. I I absolutely love that bottle. I oh, think yeah. I pour one. Bobby, you are flexing hard tonight. <laughs> Ignore him. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Bobby, Bobby, I got something for you, buddy. Hey, by the way, we know what this is going to be. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Look. Oh. 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 <laughs> you don't have the fucking box. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Bo Thank you, Bo Bobby. That's Bobby, what what proof is yours right there? This is uh one ten point six proof. Yeah, oh, mine, uh, mine's mine's mine's, mine's one fifteen, buddy. Thank <laughs> God. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I'm so glad you're straight. All right, Jason, put him in his place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the uh, that was the bottle that we you get to uh, fill on your own at the uh, the Mixers Distillery. Uh, That's really uh, cool. Yeah, Scott and I did that. When... You've never been to. You've never done that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mr. You, Kentucky. You get, to, you get to fill out your own label, and you get to put all the uh, the Fort Nelson decals on it, and you get to sign it, and it's a really cool experience. So it's yeah, it was, it was fun. Uh, what? Uh, Mictors. Sorry. Yeah, Mictors, Mictors. but they have three different tours. I was just curious. It's, We're going it's, to one. Uh, it's not. Right. It's, it's not a tour. Yeah, you, you just, you just, just basically go up to the counter and you say, I want to fill a bottle, and then they take you yeah. back. Okay. Oh, good to know. Yeah. We are literally yeah. going there tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a, one, it's a, 150. It's, it's, 100, 150. it's 150 bucks. You get the box, and you get to fill out your name, sign it, bottled on, barreled by, and they have two casks right now that came in at 115 proof, which is the highest Ooh. barrel proof rye that has come in so far yeah. that they bottled. I think that's a hundred percent worth it. Uh, hell, hell yeah, yeah. I'll show you. I'll show you, I'll show you the. I'll show you the details. It's really 
I didn't get to I didn't get to finish filling my bottle because I stuck my my head under the tap and they came <laughs> so, I don't, I don't, I don't know what a full, I don't know what a full bottle looks like. So Jason has it. Mine yeah. have, they mine's remember half empty. Man, where he's like Weasel Juice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the uh, here's the uh, here's the front label. You get to fill that out. Uh, mm. It comes in this nice box, and then uh, when you open the box here, um, if I could get the bottle out. Here you bottle, go. That box is gorgeous. So once yeah. you uh, here's the bottle and you get to sign, mm -hmm. put that label on, and then you get to put on the gold decals. They put the stamp on for you, That's fresh really cool. pork. Yeah, um, it's it's a and look how dark this stuff is. It's like coffee. Yeah, yeah, coffee. yeah. yeah. Mm, coffee. Does it have an age statement on it or no? Mm -hmm. uh, no, but the the Michter's barrel proof generally run, uh, I believe, six to eight years. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you guys should do it. Get get some uh, get some Chad and Sarah editions out there. Yeah, we will. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, they won't. Yeah, they won't let you put like uh, they won't let you put um uh, anything on the label besides your actual name. We asked if we could put like you know channel names, but they wouldn't let you do it. So yeah, you should sure. just yeah. legally change my name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, problem solved. Yeah, problem solved. Actually, yeah. the whiskey dick. <laughs> My parents were very cruel, but I've learned to embrace it. Yes. yes. Hello, 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 Mr. Dick. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> so, Chris, what are you drinking? I switched over to uh, Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Classic. Nice. Classic. Yep. Always, and always, is, um, always the winner. This is one of the uh, the GH batches, so this is the uh, the older juice in here. So, uh, real quick, anybody in the chat have a question for the the group here? I've I've gotten a couple of decent ones here. I, I mean, obviously, I just shot in a tirade for about fifteen minutes or so. Um, I'm drinking Amrut. Um, I was just looking. All right, guys, I, I got a, I've got a, I've got to run. So you guys all have a great weekend. Oh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, 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 thanks, guys. Bye. Take care. Yeah, good seeing everyone. Yeah. See ya. Bye. Later. So uh, we uh, actually we've we've got to bow out too because you know as we, we got to make it up to Louisville early tomorrow. We got to go to Mictors. That's the problem. We're also going to the uh, Bourbon Fair. Kentucky Bourbon Fair. Kentucky so. Bourbon Fair. We're doing that tomorrow night, so it's going to be a jam packed day for us. So nice. I'm also awesome, guys. Making a hat, Chad. That's a really good hat. That's good. No, <laughs> it's a great. I got <laughs> to you know that. I would guess. That's right. <laughs> I have a pride parade to go to tomorrow, so I can't stay up too late. <laughs> <laughs> what is it tomorrow? <laughs> so uh, we have a very important question from uh, Take care, guys. Good night. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for everybody. Yeah. You guys. Drink more bourbon. Uh -huh. <laughs> I see. Um, I'm not even going to read that, Eric. I was about to, but then I, the moment passed. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm drinking some Emirate uh, Fusion. It's actually. Oh, nice. Very very good. I have you guys have you guys tried Indian whiskey before? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Any any outliers or not outliers? Um, outstanding whiskeys for you guys. The the one that I've had that I thought was outstanding was the Amru Portanova. Portanova. Mm -hmm. Okay. Port Portanova. Oh yeah. Portanova. Okay. So and I, also, and I also had a Paul John that was very good, but I can't remember what bottle it was. Hey, hey Bill, I've got five bottles of the Amru single malt. Uh, oh, the intermediate sherry. Next time we meet up in San Diego, yeah. remind me to bring you one. I've got. Can you know what, actually, just since we're talking, the next time that you can get to San Diego, let me know because I can basically go anytime. Oh, uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Cool. Nice. Well, aren't you all hoity toity with everywhere you can travel? <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> well, I, I'm extremely important. Don't you you know? are. You're kind of a big deal. I'm hey, kind of a big deal. My, my I mean, library hey, yeah, if you ever want to many like leather like bound books. Daddy. It smells of rich mahogany. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might be on there on business in September, but. Okay. Actually, September that. sounds about right for me. Like, yeah. This week, I was supposed to be back in Texas on business, but it got canceled. So okay. if you have 10 mm. people all trying to meet for a meeting and then one person cancels, then everything gets thrown out. So I know you meant to see me. I know that you meant to say meeting, but did anybody else hear him say mating? <laughs> yeah, mating? I, I know he said mating. <laughs> How do you know he meant to say meeting? <laughs> here. Yes. So Matt, I see you pulled, pulled something out. What do you got? Yeah. Okay. So this is the Paul John peated, cask and it is 55.5 percent okay and it is fantastic mm. indians make really good their their highest oh, end right. stuff is great 
I so haven't had a bad one. Except for yeah. the cheap stuff. The I remember Amber, learning, learning all about... Oh, sorry, go ahead. The Amroot Cask Strength and the Amroot uh, Madeira, Madeira Cask. Mm -hmm. uh, all their special editions are really, really good. We've yeah. got some Amroot Amroot uh, reviews coming up here in the next couple of weeks too. So nice. Yeah, actually, I'm excited to watch those because I've only reviewed a couple of Indian whiskeys. But one thing I thought was really cool about um, Indian whiskeys it's very similar to Texas, where just the heat is so high. They like, don't need a long time, right? Like they don't have to eat. Like I think the 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 fusion was only like four years or something like that, and it tastes like yeah. three times as much. The regular is two years of the Amaru. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So maybe yeah, it's been a while. That, that fusion okay. might be four, but the regular one's just two. Yeah, I was on that. Idea. Idea. Yeah. So could be totally wrong. Oh, well, but what's interesting? I'm not. I don't remember if it's Paul John or if it's Amroot. One of those actually, uh, they age underground. They bury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. yeah. So, like actually, a lot of the Indian whiskeys do underground, um, mm -hmm. because it's the only way to control the temperature at all. Otherwise, they're they're losing way too much to the angel share. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought I thought that was very cool actually, and it's just. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> Sam, Sam's making a, a, a the devil's dick. Sam face. <laughs> she does not like the Michter's rye. That Michter's rye really? is bullshit. What? <laughs> I, uh, that, tastes, that tastes like candy. No. Uh, so no. I, yeah, I it's like, it was like, awesome. It tastes like peppermint cock. It <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. No. You know, a lot, a lot of women would prefer that to the actual taste. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, gonna say, I was gonna say it tastes like sweet tarts. Nope. I don't know if mine tastes like a sweet tart. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I, I would. I would all elves. All elves beware of Sam at Christmas time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to slob on my knob creek. It's like leprechaun dick. Yeah, that's leprechaun. Dick. <laughs> I'm not doing that. So. Mm. Slob mm. on my knob dick. <laughs> so, <laughs> I am um, a little surprised I haven't I haven't plowed through this emirate because it's it's really really good. I have um, a couple people who work for me who are Indian. They they tend to take a year uh, a trip probably like every other year over to India. I think I'm gonna have a have to have them bring me something back this time. There are um, Indian people working in the tech industry. I'm I know, sure. right? Isn't it crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were all doctors. Ninety percent of my. 90% of my neighbors are in uh, East Indian. So, all right. So here's another question from the, the chat, or at least I'm going to modify it into a question. I think a lot of us at least are close or have tried Texas whiskeys. Is there any outstanding ones that we think people should try? Other Like Balcones, obviously, but if you want to point out one in particular, but go for it. Well, the really good, the really, oh, oh, there you go. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I mean, I was going to say this is what I pulled out to sip on tonight. We actually have a uh, couple years back, uh, Herman Marshall released a barrel proof uh, version to total wine. This is 121.2. Uh, but if you go to his distillery, uh, much like y'all were talking about with um, who was it, Michter's earlier, you can bottle at barrel strength with him. Uh, and I want to say his prices are like 75 uh, for a barrel at barrel proof. I think you have to get a couple of other people to go in on that with you, but they do a lot of fun and fun things over there. Uh, this is one of my favorites. They did a beer run with the, uh, divine single malt, um, St. Arnold's divine reserve. Mm. And it, it tastes pretty close to the classic Lottie for me. And really? so wow. yeah. Oh yeah. That's surprising. Huh? <laughs> that is surprising. Yeah. Um, they're, they're a really good uh, distillery to look out for. They're doing some good things over there. What, what is it called? HM? What? Herman, Herman Marshall. Marshall. Herman Marshall. Their, their labeling is kind of reminiscent of the new Knob Creek labeling. That's exactly well, what I would do. In the same bottle shape. So that, that definitely, but like just even the, the, the two big letters. So right. I, I think I've mentioned this before on a live stream. Like, so obviously I'm in the tech industry and like, I, I'm a software guy, but I, um, I've taken a particular interest in user experience, like they call it UX design. So that includes everything from colors to topography to des general design. And so like that stuff always sticks out to me. And it, it's interesting the, to just see them. They're clearly going after Knob Creek, like, or not after, but like mimicking them, you know, but it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious if that's having an effect on people buying them, just following what a bigger company has done. Um, 
Anyway, mm-hmm. has anybody else have a Texas? I know Eric, you you kind of really did so, a Texas so thing. Matt Matt gave me some samples of Andalusia, so three of them, mm-hmm. and we reviewed them together during the live stream together. Really, really impressed. Um, I interacted a little bit with the master distiller Ty. Um, so my next trip back to Texas, plan on meeting up. Um, the two that really stood out was the Striker, uh, mm-hmm. which yeah. is smoked was actually, and they're all fifty percent ABV. Was actually stellar. And the Revenant Oak, I also really, really, really liked. Um, so I'm really, really, really looking forward to getting back down there. Nice. Revenant Oak. I'll have to look that yeah, up. It's peated, that that one. It's really tasty. These, they, they, I, these don't make it out of Texas that I know of. Okay. Well, I'm, yeah, Texas think, is doing a lot of good things. These yeah. days. Uh, Iron, obviously, is amazing. So, so Jason, <laughs> how about you? Um... I, I recently did a video. I did a whole Balcones uh, blind tasting that Josh Galladay sent me from Cast Strength, and there mm. were some stellar, stellar, stellar Balcones offerings in there. My favorite. Um, you mentioned the Hechicheros, uh, Eric, which was phenomenal. But the French Oak, I think, was my favorite. But mm-hmm. if, if you're, if I'm, if I'm going to recommend a um, one that's easier to kind of find, because some of those special releases are really only Texas, or they they really don't get distributed that that well. The Iron Root Harbinger that I uh, that I reviewed, I thought was one of the best rounded Texas whiskeys I've had uh, out of all the ones that I that I've tasted. It just has, it, it's not too far into that Texas funk area, mm-hmm. but it offers enough sweetness, some roundness, some um, really deep, rich sweet oak flavors, like rich vanillas. It's I, I just think it's a it's a delicious, delicious uh, bourbon. I think about three days after you posted your review, I posted mine of the Harbinger, but mine was the a different uh, mash bill. It was the BBC, uh, which had a, and it was a little higher ABV, the one that I brought back from the distillery. But yeah, absolutely phenomenal stuff. Really, 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 really like them. Yeah, I totally. Uh, I know we had a different mash bill, but I know I watched yours. Some of the same notes we kind of picked up there, um, and. Actually, uh, I, I have another uh, a sample here, uh, Eric. I have some more Andalusia Striker for a rum cask finish. I'm going to pour a little of that right now. Nice. I actually, uh, Iron Root is, it's one of those whiskeys that, like, I bring it up so much, and I know, I know um, his name is escaping me. Robert. Robert, thank you. Robert joins the chat a lot. Like, Iron Root is really, really good. Like, I, I hope that they go at least nationwide, if not more so. I, I feel like they're, they're definitely an up-and-comer. Um, if anybody ever sees anything from Iron Root, it's worth. What was that? Matt, somebody needs to check on Matt. Matt okay. Okay. Man down. Man down. I was yeah, grabbing it. Yeah, I can go. Brand, I could go grab my iron. Oh, you have the Icarus. Never mind. I can't compete with that. Sam, no, you can't. Can I just you grabbed out a uh, Balconis. Uh, so Bobby got a Balconis, Bobby. and yeah, you got the Brimstone. Yeah. Yes. It tastes like bleached asshole. No, I'm not doing that again. Glorious. Awful. I don't know. You guys are are lying to yourselves because it's horrible. I mean, at least you know it's insane. How many assholes have you tasted? Well, not many, or maybe any. But I'm telling you, if I were to taste a bleached asshole, I've never bleached mine. I know. Maybe a hairy asshole. I don't know. You never. You never. Everybody knows. Yeah, everybody knows you're not supposed to taste one after, right after you bleach. Exactly. I mean, really. But whatever, whatever it's in that bottle. I'm sorry, y'all, Texas people. I love you. You're adorable. I want to be your best friends. Well, this so bottle was, is stupid. So I, I was um, had in my mind when I uh, first poured it last night, um, Pete, because that's the only smoke no. that I know of, and it is so far off no, of that. It no, is, it's bleached ass. Like you stick your head into the fire pit and just inhale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the best flavor in the world, man. Right. Most of the anything after that, you won't taste it. No. And I, I, have, I, have to say, I, actually, I actually think the Texas accent is sexier than the Scottish accent. Just you saying. do? Yeah, damn straight. Eric, wait, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I like to say Bobby's wrong. Yeah. Bobby, you're wrong. I, I got to say, I got to think for Russian because it, it says I'm going to hurt you, but you're going to like it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Like 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 dominatrix. Oh, like, yeah, man. A <laughs> little, little BDSM. Yeah. 
You you want you want me to whiskey your dick? <laughs> I absolutely do. <laughs> Back in my dating days, I totally went on too well. Yeah. I totally went on a date with a girl that I didn't even find attractive just because she was she had the Russian accent. <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> <laughs> so you want to go out to dinner? I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> okay, I literally said in a live that I would have a devil's three way with Ralphie and based solely on their accents so we all pick our and choose our thing I, I feel like i feel like ralphie would have to balance a glenn karen on your back so. i know <laughs> any, <laughs> any, 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 any wood there's an image for you thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> what is, what is happening that. ralphie is balancing glenn karen's on the back of, uh, of sam this is yep. what is yep. happening right now and all while he's doing his uh his review i yep. just don't i just don't like it <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you molten, magical, melted. I can't, I can't see the color. I can't see the color. Sam's back's in the way. It's better than Horst, who's like. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, don't, I don't know. I, I like the Texas accent. I, I'd have a three way with uh, Matthew McConaughey and Ross Perot. You know? <laughs> Wait, hold on a sec. Hold on. Did you say Ross Perot? <laughs> That's some seriously yeah, old man balls. Yeah. There's no argument behind that. <laughs> like, he is rich. I mean, yeah, I mean, exactly. Rich and, and old. Rich and old. That's the way I like him. Rich and old. Join the chat. In the chat. Who would you have a story? Matt, I'm actually curious. Uh, Matt, what is uh, what's your favorite Texas whiskey, Matt? Um, that's a long, long list. I like Balcones a lot. I like Iron Root a lot. Tawan Caro, Banner, Andalusia, Treaty Oak, Ben Milam. Um, pretty much all Texas. See, that that's actually made here. I like. I like Garrison Brothers. Their uh, their Balharama. That's the brand new one that's came out. What about Withers? You have to pick one, one, Matt. You have to pick one. I can't pick one. I love them all. What I, 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 I love one. all whiskey. What is it? What is that? This is Tawan Caro. This is like 25 minutes from my house. This stuff is awesome. I've Look never at that seen table. That. Jeez. That bottle. It's a great bottle. Yeah, it's a cool it's bottle because it looks like yeah. a, you have one too. <laughs> it's hard. Hard. It, lo it looks like it's a label for like 95 year olds. <laughs> right? <laughs> ah, well, that, that's the point. They want you to see it on the back of a bar. You can't not see yeah. this gigantic letter yeah. in like, you know, 200 font. Yeah, can I make a request of you for a sec? How much how much is that bottle? 50 bucks. Can you if you remember when we come out there in October, could you get me one of those bottles? Absolutely. I have an I have an aunt who is Aunt Tari, but we all call her Ta, and I would just actually like to give that to her. Just okay. for that reason alone. Hey, whatever. Just point that I, I I will never remember this afterwards, but if you remember, please pick me up a bottle. I'll remember, no problem. It's hat spelled backwards. Got you. Ah, Eric, you are very insightful. <laughs> yeah, but it uh, it means it's Tawan Caro. It was spelled out, and it's an Indian name for the area around here. It means bend in the river. But that's just why they put it in a in a canteen shape, which is the only canteen shape bottle on the market. So it's just a really cool. You can't miss the letters, like you said, and you can't right. miss the shape of the bottle. It's, it's good yeah. marketing. That's that's that a, actually very cool. It's, it's a very brilliant bottle design and label. I like that a lot. Yeah. They're talking about and then for out. Christmas, they're gonna put like uh wraps around it. You can put straps on it and carry it in little canteen cups and stuff. It's really cool. So what are the what are the stats on that bottle? It's a bourbon, it's a, it's a how old grain. It's a four grain bourbon. Mm hmm Wow. Four grain, ninety-six proof. Ninety-six, okay. Yeah, it's uh, ninety-six with the standard, but they're uh they're from the straight from the cask. Holy crap, is that stuff awesome? Two, uh, two years, three years old? What is it? 14. This one's 14 months, but the stuff we've tried is on 18 months from the cask. Yeah. It's much better. Yeah, but look at the color on that for 14 months. Wow. That's just ridiculous how dark that is. So they just leave that thing out in the sun or what? <laughs> they leave it in this little, this, leave it in a warehouse that, like, you just drive to the distillery. The first time I went there, I just completely missed it. I'm like, where the hell is the distillery? 
It's yeah. inside of a warehouse that you never even know is there. Right. But yeah, once you go inside, they're great people. That's so gonna I'm going to completely 100% derail us here for a sec. So some, somebody in the chat mentioned uh, Jameson Black Barrel. It has, I would imagine most of you guys have had the Barrel Select. Have, it, have any of you actually had the Black Barrel Select? Yes, yeah. we reviewed it. We reviewed it, yeah, just a little bit ago. Opinions? Okay. I like the original Select better. It's more fruity. But the bourbon, the uh, the new one is more for bourbon drinkers, I think, and it's mm -hmm. it's more of, I think aimed towards them. Yeah. The only I think, reason I even uh, go ahead. Sorry, William. I was gonna say I thought the barrel select actually had like more of a shininess to it though. Um, more grain alcohol, it felt. Do you guys generally like grain alcohol? No. Me. <laughs> yeah. No, because it's so. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I said no because it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fair, fair opinion. Um, I, I, I don't like the coffee still. I, I don't like the the fact that it just strips so much of the flavor out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's really my problem. It's not necessarily the grain itself because corn can be fun and, and good, but just the coffee still just strips so much yeah. away from what can be there. Yeah, exactly. I'm with you. It, it I had my second video ever was on the uh, I did the Jameson. Um, I think it, it, I think it was only the Black Barrel Select, and uh, I thought it was actually very, very good. But also, it was only my second video, so I had no real gauge. Um, yep. But it, it was before, like almost immediately, they switched over to that other Barrel Select version, which is like a different labeling, different different juice. Um, and I can't find the Black Barrel Select anymore. No, it got discontinued. Discontinued. Yeah, like it, it was actually. I, I thought it was very, very good back in the day. I don't know what I would think of it now, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think we're missing anything, not having it there. It's, it was, it, we did like an actual comparison uh, video too. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it was a little. I do. All right. So we, we got another question from the. Because you want everything. True. Sorry. Um, two, two things. Number one, uh, I, I want to get to the other question in a sec, but. Um, so 69 Camaro SS407, which, okay. Um, <laughs> do you have any insight on Eagle Rare becoming a no age statement or dropping the 10 year label? Buddy who manages Total Wine told me to buy it up no age ship, uh, statement shipping now. I would guess that they're probably running out of stock, but does anybody have any, any more insight into that? No. no. From what I understand, ba basically that's just a rumor. They have no intention of dropping it currently. Mm hmm Plus, I gotta imagine there's tons of tons of stock out there. Yeah. Right. They yeah. have twenty yeah. freaking warehouses, right? Thousands and thousands and thousands of barrels. They'll be fine. Yeah. It was a big. It was a, it was a big deal when they dropped. The, it was a big deal when they dropped a single barrel moniker. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 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 So for anybody in the chat who doesn't, or in the who's watching this like three hours later, um, in the live stream, a normal barrel can get over three hundred bottles. And if you have thousands of uh, barrels, obviously do the math, right? So you're not going to run out. Don't worry about the no age statement. It probably is not a not not something to be concerned about. If anything else, just going to be a new expression that you should try. But you'll mm -hmm. probably be able to get the normal stuff. All right, so Buffalo Trace has so many barrels. Like it's, I think Buffalo Trace alone has more barrels than people in Kentucky. They're they're built they're building warehouses like like, like weekly. Yeah, like they. <laughs> Have, have you guys, have you guys, here's a quick question. Have you guys run into anybody that has um, decided to ban Buffalo Trace from, from buying any, buying anything else from Buffalo Trace? I've run into literally two people that said they won't buy anything Buffalo Trace because they feel like they mess with the market too much and they trickle out, uh, they, they trickle out their, their stocks and they have more than they let people have and it's all marketing and it's a scam. Mm -hmm. And so they've literally, ban buying any bottles which i thought was kind oh. of an interesting concept i don't feel like i know anybody personally but i feel like i've read that on like facebook in like facebook group. <laughs> I, I just go with I, I get what i can get at retail and yeah and I, but we're I'm just not, not gonna buy anything secondary right. if we can't get it don't even talk to me about your stock bobby you can get it retail i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear it Hey, I'm sending you that Will It For Your Rye here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we <laughs> bought it for you. We got you the Will It For Your Rye. <laughs> so right. the bar around the corner from my work um, threatened to not 
do it. Uh, and they stopped carrying a lot of different Buffalo Trace items uh, this last oh. year because they didn't get their allocation of Pappy uh, like they should have. So uh, because those were so scarce in the area, uh, they decided that they were going to carry less and less Buffalo Trace products because of it. Mm. That could be fun. I, I could see that. Buff the tough thing about Buffalo Trace, it's unlike Apple, right? So like Apple has a bit of a stranglehold on the market because so many people have Apple products. The products are fine, but with with Buffalo Trace, like their products are fantastic. And and when you if you try to boycott them, you're just gonna be missing out. Like no, it's not gonna have an effect on anything. They're yeah, that's a terrible analogy. Sorry, throw that away. But Buffalo Trace <laughs> is fantastic, right? <laughs> Blame the whiskey. Um, Buffalo Trace is fantastic. So even if you try to boycott it, like it's not going to have an effect. So I don't, know. I don't really know what they're trying to accomplish. If, if, if you think they're that they're buy it, if you, think, if you think they have a lot of bourbon, there are literally 500 miles of caves in Champagne full of bottles. 500 miles. Wow. And they, they they bottle by bottle they release it. There's no shortage of it, and no everybody's buying it, and nothing's going to change. There's Can no, you elaborate on that? I've never, I've never heard that. Yeah, there's 500 freaking miles of it. <laughs> that's, that's between here and San Diego, one long freaking tunnel. Right. Same thing in the diamond industry. Everybody's paying thousands of dollars yeah. on diamonds. Uh, you know, there, there's there's no shortage whatsoever of diamonds. They're they're not a rare gem. But they've got a stranglehold on the market. Beer, sons of bitches. Yes, yeah, so it's a yeah. beer. Damn diamonds. Yeah, yeah. I would, listen. Uh, if if Buffalo Trace can do that, just to keep keep going after that demand, which is what they they've driven up a frenzy for people yep. to to acquire their bottles, and and that's you know you can't. It sucks sometimes, absolutely, because the uh, the distribution for some of their bottles are so sporadic. Uh, but at the same time, you know, they they've kind of driven the market to, you know, for people to just want and want and want those bottles. So, I mean, does it suck? Yeah, but it's kind of brilliant for them because they have this moniker. I mean, you even go to I was just in Kentucky. Buffalo Trace was by far the most probably the most like hipster, crazy one that you could visit with all the groups and everyone kind of going there. There were like 800 bachelor parties because that's the way it was the day before. Day. Yeah, exactly. Let's go to Bachelor Trace. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> At, yeah, the bros. Yeah, yeah, all the, all the bro, yeah, all the bros go there and they're like, oh, I just like Buffalo Trace, 90 proof. It's, oh, it's the best thing I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> To, to be it's fair, that Weller is freaking fantastic. Though. Weller like, is fantastic, yeah, really. Yeah, good. it's really good. You know, yeah, yeah. Please name all the bad Buffalo Trace products. There right, are well, yeah, there aren't any. <laughs> really. what, I mean, that was the half-ass attempt at the the uh, Apple comparison I was making. Like Apple mm -hmm. products are great, and so are Buffalo Trace, but like they're both overpriced. You know, six so years long ago for trying to get at. Not really. I mean, Buffalo Trace retail is not, is a joke compared to most whiskeys. Well, so all right, fair point. The the Buffalo Trace, like the twenty five dollar bottle, yes, that is still affordable. But almost every other one of their expressions, other than maybe Eagle Rare, is yeah. overpriced. Well, um, the B tax aren't there a hundred bucks? Which well, one? yeah, come on, man. Right, you know, Buffalo Trace is a hundred dollar where you are. No, the any B tax products. Oh, oh, I don't oh, think I there's any it. overpriced. Like Eagle Rare is thirty bucks. Wellers, you know, twenty bucks. Well, that's the thing. You're talking. Uh, 12, we, you're talking. You're talking retail, which most people can't yep. get stuff for. So yep. that's what that's what makes it tough. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's a personal problem. Literally right. every almost every Buffalo Trace product above the thirty dollars range is on allocation now. Honestly, true. honestly, yeah. I mean, even Eagle Rare is on allocation now. So it's just true. ridiculous. It, oh, it's, I hear a lot of people having trouble finding Eagle Rare. It's at the like I. Do you guys have BJ's near you? No. Yes, no. I do. We don't have right. BJ's. So BJ's is like a wholesale. It's like um, what's the like other one? You're from Massachusetts, right? What? You're from Massachusetts? Yes. Where? Uh, I'm I'm living in Northborough right now. Okay, I was born in Springfield. Sorry. Springfield. Okay. Yeah, I know what BJ's is. We just don't have any. Okay. Yeah, I grew up in Rainham. Um, but whatever. Okay. So um, anyway, so like like a uh, wholesale club. It doesn't matter. Whatever wholesale is near you. Um, Eagle Rare is like prevalent at my local BJ's. I could buy 20 bottles like without even blinking an eye if I wanted to. 
Um, mm-hmm. but, it, but it, it yeah. other people tell me that they can't even find it. And like I'm out in Massachusetts, I'm nowhere near Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just be lucky you can find it at you know any place that's not a liquor store. So right. yeah. you're lucky. And and I know it's we're in Kentucky, but like our, our grocery store has like 50 bottles at any of, of Buffalo Trace at any given time. Right. Like I've never seen it not there or with multiple bottles. Right. And full disclaimer, if anybody wants to come hang out with us, you are always more than welcome to come down. <laughs> well, to that point, I actually just saw you guys commenting. In the, are you guys going to the, the thing in Austin? In we Austin? are. Oh, are I'm going to be there. At the in the in October. I can't wait to meet you guys in person. Yeah, awesome. It will be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We, we booked our room at the La Quinta. We will be there. Yeah. Awesome. The only thing we have not done yet is done flights, but we're kind we're of waiting like until it gets waiting, a little closer like, and yeah, hope it gets I haven't done flights yet. Either. Yeah, actually. Yeah. But so babysitting is set. Books, are, uh, rooms are booked. We are, we're in. Nice. So I will tell you, there is a music festival going on that weekend. So flights aren't going to get cheaper, I wouldn't think, just based on the fact that, you know, people are still going to want those right. seats. Because of the yeah, music, we're, we're we probably gonna we're book. gonna probably book it pretty soon. Yeah. I, I, think. I just want to throw it out there. You know, you do you. I'm just yeah. No, thank you, William. That actually, because I I had been putting off booking the flight, figuring that didn't really matter. But I'll I'll just but yeah. We'll we'll probably just go ahead and do it because we I, have uh, our babysitting set. We have our hotel room booked. Like the only thing we're waiting on is the flight. Yeah. So so I um Friday to Sunday. For what, for what it's worth, like I mentioned earlier, the travel for work kind of thing. So I get a whole bunch of free points for JetBlue. So I was I was really hoping to kind of like keep traveling to San Diego, keep building up those points and just travel out to Austin for free. That's why I hadn't booked it yet, but I'll just book it at this point. Uh, yeah, just book yeah. it. Be safe so we don't travel at all for our works. Like we don't get, <laughs> no. like we don't get that. So <laughs> neither one, we're very much Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, so I, I have this thing. It's called the the Tua glass. I, I did a review on it a little while ago, and mm-hmm. I've never done this. <laughs> did you all see that? I hope you all saw that. Um, <laughs> so apparently this glass is able to tilt on its side and act almost as a decanter. And I figured I would do this for the first time on stream just in case it goes horribly wrong uh, and it spills everywhere. But <laughs> so you're supposed to be able to tilt it like this. Oh, it's gonna totally gonna spill. Fascinating. Nope. False marking. Right. I think. It, well, it, I think you're probably not supposed to pour the quite that. Much. It looks like a condom. Yeah, I think Karen does that. You know what I'm talking People about? People have heavy pours. You, you gotta expect that. Mm. Right. They, well. Yeah. All right. So hold on. Here. Here we go. Karen does that. I'm hold on. Saying. Actually, well, I can't reach my. Uh, I can't reach my camera. But okay. So it's on its side. There you go. That's stupid, though. Like, who cares? Yeah. Right. What does that What does that accomplish? Like, if you get drunk and you tip over your glass, it doesn't spill. Like, depends on how much you have in there. I mean, that's a reality in this stream, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. I I do like I do like this thing. It's got this little like. Hold on. So you see how it's triangle at the bottom? Oh, you nice. Hold that with your with your thumb. And you can hold it like this, and that's actually kind of cool. I think I think you're if you're gonna hold it like that, you have to have your pinky out though, yeah. otherwise it's incorrect. Yeah. Fair For enough. Sure. Yeah. Oh my God, it makes me mm, yes, um, indubitably. <laughs> <laughs> get I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna put I'm Eric, I'm gonna put your coin on top because it there just barely fits. So <laughs> I so, gotta, I gotta, I gotta plug my coins are uh, coming out in a week or so. So I'm nice. gonna, the match and drum coins are gonna hit the market. Awesome. Yeah. I will, be, I will be among the first to, uh, to, to, get one for sure. Yep. Here, here. Yep. Um, I actually have batch two num- uh, number two. I started doing the design of the of the back of it. I have literally the best idea in the world. Like. <laughs> I, I, I truly believe I can back that up. When you guys see the the second batch of my coins come out, you will be like, you know what? That's the best idea in the world. You, <laughs> Bill, I I you already it. have the best idea in the world that your fucking channel name is Whiskey Dick. <laughs> right. There's nothing better than that. You, <laughs> you compete with no one. <laughs> <laughs> you could just film like 
dog turds and people will <laughs> because it's whiskey dick and it's funny. There, there is nothing that makes me happier than wearing this out in public and knowing that I'm validated. You're it. You're it. Like, like, people can look at this and they can think whatever they want. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it should be encyclopedia. I don't care. It's dictionary. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. When I, I'll go on record. I told him to name it Whiskey Pussy, but he didn't. <laughs> it just doesn't have the same ring. Yeah. Well, I figured I could I could really uh, go after the nose on the <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I the nose. I'm like, yeah. I mean, okay, so if pussy is can be like a little like derogatory, so like whiskey like beef curtains like that doesn't work either like, <laughs> you have to like, that's not really, like sorry guys yeah but he could put in like little kittens and cats and yeah, stuff like, yeah. like, oh my god like, it just all i know is, is the next time i see when i'm bill when i when we meet up in uh in texas i'm gonna yeah. talk, i'm gonna talk russian to you the whole time <laughs> oh man, dude, you better be careful. I hope our rooms aren't close to each other. <laughs> Maybe we'll have those adjacent rooms, like the, the door. You'll just hear me knocking all night long. I've been so, like, don't, uh, don't open the door for the dick. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there's a, our new swim trunks that hide. Both, and I, I, I don't know how they work. That's just a, a, something I've Are seen. Are you going to buy so swim it, trunks no, for no bonus? No, but Bill might need them, though, Bill if Jason's going to talk like that the yeah. whole time. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that, can't, that cannot be comfortable. <laughs> oh, I can't imagine. Oh, that, com that comes. To yeah. Oh my god! It comes with a warning. It could raise your voice three octaves. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Texas in October is gonna be pretty fucked up. Like, it's gonna be. Awesome. It's it's gonna gonna be, be awesome. I'm like psyched that someone. So, Jason, you're coming out too. Hell yeah, man! Is anybody else on the on the stream coming out? Oh yeah, Eric, is, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Eric, are you coming out? Oh yeah, and really? Matt. It's, it's all of it. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I can't get the time off, but I'm still trying to change things around to at least get that weekend off. Dude, I am yeah. so excited to meet you all. You guys, have, we're gonna have to just freaking rock it on on stream too. I'm. Uh, yeah. It's gonna be amazing. I, 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 you know, we'll talk over email, but like we are gonna have to do something awesome. Yes. Oh, it'll be Love awesome. It. Yeah, anybody <laughs> in the stream in the chat, like. You if you were here last year, the Quinta will be awesome. Yes. It's going to be fucking awesome. It, like, last year we didn't stream because it was just kind of unorganized and the, the um, internet connection was kind of crappy, but I'm just going to deal with it. I'm going to set up a camera. Yeah. I've got, like, this nine-foot tall, um, what do you call it, like, camera stand and uh, tripod, and I'm just going to set it up. We're going to do some awesome stuff. We'll stream the whole thing. Why not? Right? It'll be well, a shit show, and I'm okay with it. Yeah, you guys have been hearing about the La Quinta thing for a year. You're going to experience it this time. It's gonna, it's gonna yeah, it, you can't it's wait. We're epic. excited. Now, now, the thing is, the only thing, I have one request, that uh, that even though we're not going to be sitting at tables, Eric still not wear pants. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course. well I, I got a number for a good local bail bondsman, so I'm good. It's fine. <laughs> Eric, do you have Eric, a I know a uh, law enforcement officer, so. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Eric, are you sipping on the Star Wars Nova? Is that what I'm seeing? So I have it out here. Uh, oh, yes. Jason mentioned this on his channel the other day in the news section. So I'm just sitting there. As, I, I had suggested to Bill that we all open something unopened yet. So oh, I'm yeah. just sitting there. Oh, yeah, we were I, I, I wanted to, I, that sounded really interesting, Eric. Can I can I trade a sample of that? Yeah. I'm going to go find something unopened. I'll be right back. Yep. And, uh, open. What the hell do I have unopened? Oh, shit. So Bobby's was supposed to be the bookers, but he already opened it. Does that count? I don't. I don't think we have anything unopened. But we have some. <laughs> <laughs> My whiskey is to drink. But I think they're good for about forty bucks locally. Just oh, you're old fits. We're gonna do an old fits that we just bought for a shit ton of money a couple weeks ago. Is that the, is that the thirteen year? Yeah, whatever. Whatever they just came out like at Derby. Son of a bitch! I want that bottle. Yeah. <laughs> you can have some. What well, can you can you get more? Can you ask your your buddy at the bar what's his name again? Larry. Larry. Yeah, Larry, yeah. Larry. Yeah. Larry. Larry. You want your own bottle, Jason? I'm on it just for you. Thank you. You should tell Larry he can be the provider of YouTube channels. Uh, I know. Yeah, that's good idea. and we'll all promote the hell out of his bar. That's a good idea. Right, Larry gets like, the YouTube bar. Unfortunately, everybody we promote to is not in Northern Kentucky, so he doesn't get like maybe the overflow that he should. 
but he's such a good dude. He's so good. Like if you're ever in Northern Kentucky, go to Larry. Maybe we'll go like door to door near Larry's neighborhood and just go. You need to go to this bar. It's really important. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. We we should. I'm sorry. It's the four. It's the 14 year, not the 13 year. It is the yeah the 14. Yeah. Oh, you got the yeah, no. I wasn't able to get down to get the 13. Yeah, I want I want the 13. But yeah, oh, yeah. Sam. Yeah, uh, I'm working my connections to try to get a 13. Because you have people, Jason. I got people in New York that help me out. You know what I'm saying? Frank <laughs> <laughs> Campbell said having a whiskey dick is not a good thing. No, you don't need a whiskey dick. Depends on how it goes. I mean. <laughs> no, I, got, I don't know what the hell. It, it can go either yeah, way. It can go either way. Yeah, we have a mirage in Colleyville. That's that's the connection to the entire whiskey world. Yeah. And it's a mirage to everyone else. It's it's beautiful. Yeah. So I realize it's been a little while since I've changed. Shirts. <laughs> while. This one doesn't fit me quite well. <laughs> we got the ribbon. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh. And, uh, I, can your, I, can more, your, I can see your whiskey nipples. Whiskey. That's <laughs> <laughs> pasties. You know, maybe we should get nipple tassels there, Bill. It'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole other channel. So, I have no idea where my whiskey dick shirt went, but I am shirtless. So. so, this is from Melbourne, Australia. It's a single malt. Uh, spent time in red wine barrels. I said elementally matured for, I think it says two years, 41% ABV. Mm. Yeah, that from when I read it on the news section that I did, Eric, it sounded really interesting. How I, I'm curious to get your thoughts on it. It's a really good pork whiskey. We did a review on it. It's one of our first reviews, actually. I enjoyed it a lot. Hmm. Yeah. It's more, it has a lot more intense flavor for forty one percent, just mm-hmm. from the intensity of it. I would say forty six plus. It, but it doesn't have like the burn as forty six. But it's very intensely flavored. I'm surprised at such young age. It doesn't have any of the any new age, uh, you know, young whiskey characteristics characteristics to it. Um, it doesn't have the peat of uh, the Ardbeg um, gro- grooves. But it has similar, otherwise, other than the peat, not having the peat, that's similar to so that red chocolate cherry, red cherry and chocolate characteristics to it. It's, got, it's nice. Of course, it's just a neck pour. So, so Matt, I, I feel like I need to remove your uh, your your admin privileges here. I, yeah. The damn thing was going by, <laughs> and I pushed the wrong button. Matt, like, <laughs> you and son of a bitch. Matt, right? No, it started going so fast, and the person thing was trying to put show, and then the damn thing was like crap. <laughs> That's all right. Fix guy. I don't know yeah. how. I'm I'm trying to figure out. There, there was somebody who a long time ago who sent me both the the Highland Park 15 and the old Ezra 7. Uh, I feel like it was guy the the guy that you basically just like said fuck you to. Um, it's okay. Yeah, I, I know him. He'll he'll be guy right. Davis. I I think it was him. If Oh, you know what? No, it wasn't him. It was uh, it was somebody from the military. No, it, it, take it back. Never mind. Um, that's what the military. It's fuck you, sir. Yeah, I know. You can yeah, <laughs> you you can uh, block guy guy all you want. It doesn't. He didn't send me in bottles. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So I ended up getting the barrel bourbon. I actually have nothing that's unopened. I almost picked something up on the way home today, but I um. I don't. I don't know. I, I like. I have so many unopened bottles that I haven't reviewed yet. I just couldn't really justify it. But the barrel bourbon I haven't reviewed yet. I figured I would go into that. So nice. Yeah. How's the old fit? I haven't opened it yet. Oh, we're about to open an old fits that we got. Old uh, fits fourteen. Old fits fourteen. Ooh, nice. Day before Derby. It was hella expensive. Totally but worth it. Though. Nice pop. That was hey, a good one. Yeah, that was a good pop. Hey, Bobby, can you put the can you put the top up to the camera of that? Yep. Here you go. I'll yeah, talk so you can. It sparkles yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I was gonna say. I would just for seeing that when you said it, it, it was expensive. I said just from the top, it looks expensive. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a kick-ass decanter when it's empty. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So let me interject for just a second. Stellar, thank you very much. That was Damn. awesome. Damn. Oh, oh wow. yay. 
So just so you guys know, you're not seeing a dime of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he said chair. <laughs> you know what though? When when we're all out in uh, when we're all out in Austin, uh, first round's on me. We'll, we'll uh, go out. We'll what? have fun. I think when we're all in Aston, uh, in Aston, we're going we're in Aston. Sam's we're going drunk. to La um, All the drinks are free. Quinta. Uh, we are going to play credit card roulette at the bar. Oh, oh, I like that. That would actually be pretty fun. Be card card and whoever pulls it out, that's who's buying that round. I, like that. Game. I think that Matt should put in like three times. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. You have, I, I'll bring like a K free trunk load of whiskey. That's good enough. I know. <laughs> can, can I ask you, and you don't have to say, because I totally get if it's supposed to be a uh, secret. Are you going to have anything like that 45 that you had last time? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right. I'll accept maybe. Good answer. Yep. So, uh, Bourbon Buddies, this is barrel number. Well, you said barrel. It's batch 18, bottle number 4894. It's 11 years. I love that. I had that batch, uh, Bill. I love that batch. Really? Batch 18. You guys are. Batch 18 is a stellar batch, man. It's really good. Jason, turn your hat around. I can't take you seriously with it front. <laughs> I know, right? Like, I'm glad you said that. Because I, I felt like as a guy, I couldn't like say it. that, but I'm happy you said that. Fix it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Carry on. Nothing to see here. Is this because you can't see my beautiful face? Is yes. That it makes a big difference. Right? You need an adorable face. Like, Jason, you're such a handsome man. You I need know. to. <laughs> I mean, so, you're, Chris... not, you're not aqua vitae hot, but. What if I talk? What if I talk Russian the whole time? Uh, his, his, well, his accent is nice. very, very nice. But Actually, he, Sam, Sam, I could talk to you in Italian. How would that do? <gasps> Don't <laughs> do it. Don't do it. Um, um, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Sam, Sam, I can one up that. I can talk <laughs> fucking Boston, right? Like. <laughs> Like, uh, let's fucking pack it on the yard, uh, fucking kid. You oh, yeah. Let's hear that. Let's hear that, Bill. I got to go to the doctor to fix my nipples. <laughs> <laughs> pack it on the yard. Come on. Go to the habit yard with my car. I'm going to go car. watch the fucking, the fucking Bruins play the, <laughs> the habit, habit yard. In there. You got to <laughs> Y'all are making me sweat. <laughs> I grew up like 30 minutes south of Boston, and I've got none of it. I, I, it's it, like I've 30 minutes shouldn't matter, right? I've been in Texas for 25 years now, and it only comes back when I spend some time on the phone with family. Right? Like you, you've got almost none of it, too. I mean, the fact yeah. that you know Springfield, like, did you live in Springfield? For a very short time, but I grew up mostly in Connecticut. So, I mean, the fact that you're not pulling a razor out of your mouth and threatening my life, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Texas changed me a little bit, unfortunately. All right, I'm cracking open. Uh, I recently acquired a, another bottle of the uh, Stag Junior Batch Nine. I haven't opened it yet, so one of the, oh. one, of the one of the probably the best batch of Stag I've had. So good. Are you gonna are you gonna op- uncork that here? I'm uncorking it right now. All right, we will all be silent for the. Uh, Gotta hear the pop. Hush. Hold on, uh, mi dispiace, chill. Oh, uh, 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 here, here comes the pop. Here we go. Stag Junior Batch 9. Ooh. Nice. Pretty good. Pretty good. Nice. My bourbon boner is through the roof. Raging. <laughs> I don't even know what that would be. Like, <laughs> don't worry about it. It's I don't fine. I don't want to know what no. that would be. <laughs> Well, maybe you do. I don't. I mean, I, isn't it better to say bourbon better than like my bourbon beef curtains? Like that's yeah. kind of scary, right? <laughs> Let's think of it in that perspective, right? Like I'm just going not, with. I mean, you could probably just probably go with like bul- bourbon bulge, and that would probably be like kind of. It would right. work both ways. Even kill. yeah. Bourbon <laughs> bulge, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like that no. movie, not a t- another teen movie. It's like that. Yes. <laughs> oh, I like live Eric that. was talking you earlier, know, like raising the table, you know. We, there's something we forgot to do. What's what? that? At the beginning, we should put out a warning that says, uh, this is only for people who are uh, of legal drinking age in the country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do occasionally worry. Do, do you guys – actually, that's, that's a good question. Do I put that in the description of every video. Do we what? worry? No, we don't. We no, worry. because – 
My daughter's friends find our channel and they end up watching it and it's hilarious. Right? <laughs> they're like, I mean, we don't put anything bad on there. I mean, they're like, well, my dad really likes whiskey. So I showed it to my dad and we watched it. We found it interesting. I'm like, okay, well, it's interesting. I'm glad that 11 year old girls think it's interesting. Good for them. That's hilarious. All right. So we, we got a question from the, the chat here um, oh Cork or Twist Top? Oh, Cork. I get this question all the time at work. Twist top as it never goes bad. Thank God the Japanese get this shit. With or without lubricant? <laughs> <laughs> that way it comes off easier. Hey, Matt, drink that shit and you don't have to worry about it. Hey, I don't. <laughs> it's 21-year Nika. It works just fine in the screw top. <laughs> See, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you guys. I like the sound of a cork, but I, I just as a, you know, engineer, scientist guy, like I get that a twist top makes more sense. I say who gives a I say who gives a shit as long as the juice on the inside's good. There you go. Well, there's that, but but you gotta like unless you're gonna drink the whole thing in like a couple of sittings. Yes, that's what yes, that's what you do. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jason. You're far more of a man than I am. <laughs> no, <laughs> Look at all those bottles I, behind you that have just a little bit drank from it, as you say, they're gonna be drunk immediately. <laughs> well, you need synthetic corks for sure. So, William, actually, so you're a uh, you're you're an actual like wine sommelier, right? Uh, I just got off work, yes, sir. All right, so I've been to a couple of vineyards, and they they've both actually the the two that I went to, they both talked about screw tops being kind of the where things are going, right? Because <laughs> corks can be faulty, blah 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 blah. Seven like, percent. What? Seven percent of corks can go go bad. Can, can you elaborate, like, what what is your opinion on this whole th topic, for wine specifically? It's a choice. It's a choice being made. Uh, and, and you just have to look at it as it's a choice. Either it was a choice because you want to preserve quality, or it was a choice because you want to save a little bit of money, um, or it was a, cho it was a choice mm -hmm. to put a screw cap on there. Um, there are entire regions that went to screw caps. Uh, New Zealand, for instance, you, you will very, very rarely find a wine from New Zealand that doesn't have a screw cap on it. Um, like Matt was saying, Japanese whiskey it is going to be a screw cap bottle. It's just it's just the I way it is. So here, here's a question, I actually. I, 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 love love I, love, I love you, Wayne. Please weigh in. However, so, <laughs> the main issue, so the main issue with the quirks is something called trichlorinanosol. Uh -huh. um, oh shit! It's going okay. down. So, <laughs> so, oh, that's, that's what I was gonna. Name, that's what I was gonna name my kid. So no, not try, not try cleaning your asshole. Try cleaning. <laughs> <animal. laughs> I can see where you could get that confused with bleach. With bleach. So, okay, so anywhere between. Well, it's funny because bleach is part of the problem. It has to do with cleaning corks. So anywhere it's also the part of the problem of Texas whiskey. So. Yes, so anywhere between four and seven percent. William is correct. Uh, of there are failures. However, when you say New Zealand, New Z the number one wine from New Zealand is William Castle. No, William. Well, I, don't Momo. I don't know what comes out. Sauvignon Zealand. Blanc. New Zealand is known for Sauvignon Blanc. You don't yeah. eat Sauvignon Blanc. So, so having a cork on a Sauvignon Blanc would be meaningless because you right. don't age, you don't age them. So, of course, New Zealand doesn't have any problem with having corks and they can use screw tap. And now we're losing our complete audience because now we're getting into a wine argument. However, <laughs> the, the second number one grape, of course, is Pinot Noir. I love right. such a Otago of myself, which again, doesn't need a ton of aging. So again, you can go with screw caps. So Bordeaux, Napa cabs, you're still going to see uh, corks regardless of the four to 7%. Uh, or, or synthetic. Pardon? Or synthetic cork. Or, no, synthetic corks really blow. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they're really, really bad. They have problems with leakage. They have problems allowing too much air in. Um, yeah, yeah they, they, the, the, nah, those are really bad. You Composite corks, maybe. But anyway, yeah. so for wines that people are going to want to age, that an image and, and, and tr the tradition, you know, when you open a bottle of champagne, everybody wants a pop. Every mm -hmm. it's, some, it's part of the experience with with wines like Bordeaux, high end Napa cabs. You're always going to want that. If you oh, got a screw, if you got a screw cap from a cheap Australian Shiraz, who gives a rat's ass? It's it's just always, but again, yeah, it's a choice. Uh, but so but screw caps aren't free without errors. They can have some. Uh, they can have reduction errors. 
You can have those kind of problems, although the percentages are less than what you'd have with a cork. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, that's pretty much what I was thinking. Yeah, that was really exactly to a T what I was thinking too. So I worked at a winery that used screw caps, and they were fine. You have to have different kind of equipment than you do for you for put, adding on corks. Uh, it's the, the the cost is a little bit different, and you had to take those in consideration. But I, I don't have a problem. But. Screw caps cost you know incredibly like almost nothing. Um, there are some wineries that spend up to a dollar per cork. So right. it's it's really just kind of a choice. It, it it is absolutely a choice that they're making. Do is this age worthy? Like you were saying, is this something that needs to sit in the bottle or, or could sit in the bottle for ten plus years? Right. If so, yeah, I'm going to spend some money on the cork. I want to make sure that that's going to be a, a nice, wonderful seal for that person. So well, let me say, as as more of a lay person here, it, I mean, not really, but still, like I'm not a wine guy, even though I've I've drank plenty of wine, like. A screw top versus a cork when i have a bottle of whiskey i i notice you know like a cork is better from an experience point of view but i also understand that a a twist top makes more sense if you're shipping it overseas or if you're shipping it at all really um well spirits don't age in the bottle why do you need a cork well there's that but like the satisfaction of the pop like like seal, yeah. right you know like a cork cork could could let some air in to some degree, a small amount right. over time, whatever. But like a screw cork is a screw top is totally not going to. So in my mind, that makes way more sense. But I like that pop, and you don't get that from a screw top. But you also get that fun, like you know. Right. So I don't know. Fun, I agree. But for safety, let's. I've had too many old scotches where the cork just sheared off of my hand. Because it's been that it's been in there so long, so it's been sitting on the shelf at a liquor store for five, ten years, or whatever, and it just shears off. Yeah. Mm. So Matt, I know, I know you're you're in my Discord there, which by the way, link in the comments. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> so we we've seen two of them this week where people have sheared corks off. Yeah, and theirs were really bad. Some of the ones that sheared off on there, right? Like like that that shouldn't happen. You know, no, it do, it does like like the last. Three or four uh, independent bottlings of really high end scotches I've gotten had just sheared off in the first, had to take a damn corkscrew and get it out. And thankfully, no cork fell in. My brother got a 20 year Akintoshin. We had to pour all of it out multiple times to a sifter to get the damn cork out of it. That was a lot of fun. Let me how tell you. How much oxidation happened because of that? And how much oxidation happened because you were pouring it back and forth and back and forth, right? It doesn't matter. Still tastes good. Not very long ago, we picked up an E.H. Taylor and the cork, you know, luckily it still has a seal on it, but like that's the, that's the cork that's left. Wow. Yeah. I mean, have, have any of us here on the stream not had a cork shear off? Because it, it seems pretty common when you open a lot of bottles. Yeah. I've yeah. I mean, I've definitely had one. I've had it with wines, not whiskeys. And usually they're old wines, particularly ports. Hmm. So yeah, I've had it. This this kind of kills me because I'm I'm totally not a Disney guy, but apparently for whatever reason, the only bottle um, cork thing that we have, like the synthetic cork thing that we have, is it has like Mickey Mouse head on it. And <laughs> it's got nothing to do with that with my whiskey, you know. It, it's I actually ended up finishing a different bottle of whiskey that had a cork and then stuffing the cork into it, and it thankfully fit. we have a stack of corks out there that we just keep. From previous bottles before they yeah, go out. It's a good idea, you know? Yeah. You just never know. I have a mosquito flying all around me and it's driving me freaking nuts. So there's been some experiments with cork. So um, Plump Jack up in the Napa Valley mm -hmm. uh, has experimented on very, very, very high end wines and they've had favorable results with screw caps. So. But I don't think, uh, you know, Chateau Mouton Rothschild or Lafitte or, no. you know, or Petrus or Angelus are going to be putting anytime we put any screw caps on their wines. It ain't happening. No, I agree with you completely, Eric. That's just not going to be an option ever. No. Okay. Well, Chris, what do you, what are you on corking right now? I just I just popped my Michter's ten year. Hell yeah, twenty nineteen. We're we're gonna give you the respect that you deserve. A little quiet. Go for it. It was terrible. I already opened it. <laughs> it was really nothing. That was better, actually. That was a repop, though. 
Dust pop. So I, I make my own sound effects. Ooh. <laughs> I, I imagine they sound like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 there you go. Oh, baby. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you popped a little early there, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and my neighbors, my neighbors always go, "Is he opening a bottle of wine or whiskey?" <laughs> when you put it back in, does she moan that loud too? <laughs> oh. oh yeah. <laughs> so it's it's eleven fifty one. It's nearing uh, twelve o'clock. I certainly don't want to end anything here, but I do want to just we can keep going. I, uh, I just want to keep uh, put that out there. But in the event that anybody has happened to watch for what we started at nine, almost three hours, is there anything you guys want to plug? If you're ever in the northern Kentucky area, head to Union 42 Bourbon and Brew Bar and tell Larry that Bobby and Sam sent you. <laughs> okay. So I'm currently doing a series on the history of Scotch whiskey. Which is the best thing ever, by the way. Thank you. Seriously, such great content, Eric. Thank Seriously. you. I appreciate it. I so I actually was expecting everything to just take it to plummet, but I've been trying to be artful and a little bit of humor. And keep it short, you know, 10 to 15 minutes at max, uh, you know, and semi do a whiskey while I'm doing it. So it's not mm -hmm. just straight. So I've been trying to strike a balance there. And the funny thing, even though I'm not imitating, I was somewhat inspired by the humorous, more humorous attempt that it would say Scott and Bart do or Daniel and Rex. I mean, it's nothing like anything they do, but it is inspired by, hey, because if I had them, I would be, it would be a lot more dry and just a fax, ma'am. Yeah. So I've actually been inspired by them to be a little more humorous. Well, it's been really, really fantastic content. I've enjoyed the heck out of it. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's awesome. Thank you. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll jump in. I'll plug my, my latest video I just did with um, uh, Caleb Kilburn, who's the master distiller at uh, Peerless Distilling Company. Um, I just spoke to that interview today and he was absolutely the, I mean, we couldn't get him to stop talking. He was amazing. Um, it's a, that video, that interview is a whiskey geek stream. He goes through everything from non-chill filtration to, uh, mashing, using a sweet mash. Uh, I mean, everything that they pour into that product in Peerless, I mean, knock them or not. I know, I know a lot of people knock them for the price of that bottle. Uh, but if you see what they're doing and, Every single process that those guys use that goes into that whiskey is a more expensive process to get the flavor that they that they get out of it. Um, you could put that three year uh, rye whiskey against some six year, seven year ryes that I've had. It's that flavorful. So um, mm -hmm. definitely check out that interview. It's about an hour long. It's really, really. It's a. It was such a fun interview. I did it in tandem with uh, Scott on my bourbon journey. Uh, coming up next week, I'm doing a live interview with. Uh, the uh, the brothers from uh, Bell Mead or Greenbrier Distilling, as they're known. Uh, so that's going to be an amazing interview. Can't wait to talk to them and see what they have coming up uh, for my next episode of Off the Still. Uh, then I just have some more uh, some more reviews coming up, and of course uh, some more double base episodes that a lot of people like. I always like behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, sure. you get a great appreciation of the producer, the product, and everything like that. I, the more of the behind the scenes stuff I can see, is the better. I really like that. You know, to, to that point, Eric, if I can interject for a sec. So, like, we all, everybody, sorry, too much whiskey. But, like, <laughs> my life. Like, one thing I've noticed. You're not going to start crying, are you? A <laughs> little, little bit, a little, little clear. So, one, one thing I've noticed is that the only thing that matters in almost any channel is honesty. And when, when you think about it that way, like, if you, Fuck, I forgot where I got. Never mind, somebody else can. I'll take this moment to go ahead and I blame break. the bookers. It's fucking it, bookers. It was about to get real. It's it's been a long time since since I've been able to say fucking bookers, but fucking bookers. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. For the, Crusaders channel, for the Whiskey Crusaders channels, we'd like to plug bacon. Bacon. Oh. <laughs> they have like legit bacon. 
I know, <laughs> right? You always have bacon. Bacon and whiskey. Last time I was on a live stream with you guys had bacon too. What is this? All right. I always yeah. have bacon. Yes. They make it, and it's their job from now on. Fantastic. No, actually, in uh, two weeks, we're actually going to have a stream with the dummies with the brand ambassador for uh, Aberfeldy, Altmore, and Kregelke will be here, and then we'll be doing a private uh, club tasting after that as well. I legit have no idea what you just said, but it was fantastic. <laughs> Gaelic shit, you know. Yeah. Oh, and I gotta, I gotta, I forgot to mention, uh, Matt, you and I are going to be doing a live stream June twelfth. Yes, um, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Yep. Uh, on uh, on Matt's channel, we're going to be uh, doing some um, a blind tasting of many delicious stuff. Uh, Jason, let's talk about how in like a couple of weeks we're coming to see you. Right. Oh, hell we're yeah! Spending the night at your house. In <laughs> I'm two so weeks. jealous. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm gonna have uh, Bobby and Sam, uh, you know, chasing me around the house with a whiskey bottle. It's gonna be yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dan and Sean. Yeah, and, and Dan and, and Dan and Sean from uh, Bourbon Junkies will be here too. We're gonna do a. Uh, we're gonna set oh. up some kind of a blind bottle challenge and kind of film it all and post it for for everybody. It'll be a shit show. Man, I, I think I need to like just fly out to the middle of the country somewhere and just meet up with you guys. <laughs> Let us know. Let us know. Yeah, you get right. to the Midwest, we'll meet you. Yeah. CVG is real close. CVG. <laughs> Bacon right. is my favorite vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you're my favorite vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's when you know the Booker's really kicked in. Oh yeah! Oh man! Oh yeah! He's your favorite shirt vegetable. <laughs> I, I have the benefit of when I when I do my own streams, I usually cut it off at about an hour. <laughs> I, I had nine drinks in an hour and without any ill effects whatsoever because it just hasn't caught up yet. <laughs> but, so you've been on the air for three hours though. It, it, you can't like you can't right. I'm seeing triple. I think you need to drink more. Clearly, I keep getting nudged. Well, I find so. I find I finally um, broke out my scotch. I, I, I know, yeah, we missed. We missed, I, I, I said I wasn't going to do my scotch like early on, and now I'm finishing with it because yeah. So Octomore nine point three. Uh, oh yeah, that's the one. Uh, that's the one referred to Sam as the devil's dick. Yes. The devil's dick on, on Viagra. On Viagra. You have to be correct. It politically correct. It is the devil's dick on Viagra. The devil's oh, dick. Man. Yeah. <laughs> the the eight point three in there, Bobby, destroys that one. I can't yeah, wait. It's in your box. I can't. So wait. is that like the devil's dick on Viagra and Cialis? Yes. <laughs> That's bad like for the after heart. the four oh, hours, man, my, my, on another round. That is the my, uh, not wish more. My Octomore's upstairs. Damn it! I, I like that Matt <laughs> just out of nowhere produces an Octomore. This right? is the eight point four Virgin Oak. Eight. Well, how did that fucking happen? That's magic. <laughs> Right? Oh, okay. It is it is a magical place of whiskey libraries here. <laughs> Everybody's getting out their fucking devil's dick. Like they right? got something to show. All I gotta say is I gotta pee really bad. <laughs> Eric, go potty. That's what right? I tell my six-year-old when he starts holding himself. Go potty. It's okay. Right? We'll wait for you. <laughs> go pee pee. Is he gonna start holding himself. Are you and holding yourself? Right? Don't hold yourself and dance. Just go pee pee. <laughs> it's fine. And just make sure you flush the potty and shut the lid and wash your hands. Oh my god! Yeah. You know what? Hold that. Like my house. <laughs> All right. So William has something good. We're totally not getting into that, Sam, because I I've learned from experience that they don't like when we talk about kids. No, so. not kids. They're stupid. Yeah, <laughs> they can't drink yet, so they're stupid. They can't drink yet. Yep. I found I found some devil's dick that I have. Oh, oh get your devil's dick out! I'm so jealous of you all. I have no oh. Octomore in the house. Oh well, we'll bring you some in October. You can have the rest of our devil's dick. <laughs> I uh, have. You know, I don't know about all that. I mean, I don't know about have... the rest of it. We can share. It's, can it's anywhere it. between 175 and 200 dollars a bottle. Yep. Yeah. Uh, in Kentucky, yeah. it's 230. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, so I, so that's the downside is that I get um, pretty much my pick of bourbon, but um, I get hosed on scotch prices. Yeah, I get decent prices on scotch. So like like um, what do you call it? Like eight point eight three is probably like one seventy up near me. Mm. How close? I'd, uh, I'd rather have a Boonahaven twelve for like fifty bucks. 
Oh, yeah. You know what? I, I was I thought I was done drinking. I should probably be, but I'm gonna go grab some Brooklotti because yeah, why not? I got a guy in Baltimore, but it's the it's still Brooklotti, so we'll yeah. take it. Yeah, I, I got a I got a guy in my AA meeting. He gets it for me wholesale, so I get some. <laughs> okay. You always need a guy from your AA meeting to get you wholesale. <laughs> yeah, I swear, Eric, that guy from your AA meeting is as good as Larry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs an AA meeting guy or Larry. Everybody needs an AA meeting guy or Larry. Yeah. Okay. It's the same guy. I'll drink that with you. Classic Lottie's so good. It's so good. Uh, Bro Brooke Lottie and Bunahaven are my favorite. Probably Scotch distilleries right now. Do we have Brooke Lottie is the shit? Like, yeah, what color even is Austin Morris Brooke Lottie? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. I'll wait for you to finish pouring. Yeah, so actually, Brook Lottie, uh, their brand reps are really good friends of ours. Oh yeah, yeah. we'll they have are. them yeah, on again. Actually, to do a Brook Lottie tasting. We'll Matt, have them over. Can, can you make them my friends too? <laughs> yeah, I can. If you if you want to do something with them, I can totally make that happen for you if you want. Yeah, I would. I would. I would actually love to. I'm obsessed with uh, with their the different barley's they that they harvest and everything. So. Absolutely, if you could. Okay, I'll, I'll talk to Erica, and I will get her in contact with you so you guys can do stuff with her. She's amazing. She's yeah. one of their brand ambassadors. Appreciate don't it. Believe, don't believe him, Jason. He thought that he was going to set me up with Sagamore. And, hey, uh, hey, that's not Tim's fault. That's the asshole in Boston who should be called out right now to send you his freaking <laughs> shit. I'm going to talk to Tim again I, tomorrow and tell I, that asshole. Still, still, still haven't heard from him. It's the one person who's not done their damn job that I've ever talked to. <laughs> oh my God, I, I, I'm going to find out his name and going to call him and say, what is wrong? I even with met him in person. And I, I was like, like hey, that's you know that? He showed me the text in front of my face where it said, like, hey, you know Bill? Yeah, whiskey, whatever. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I still haven't gotten it. I'm going to talk to Tim again tomorrow. I'll tell him to tell the asshole in Boston to take care of it. You should. The, the bleach that I hole. Hope I hope 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 Scott, Scott and Bart got their Sagamores, and Chad and Sarah got their Sagamores. You know what I want to do? I don't know do? what the guy in Boston's problem is. The guy in Texas takes care of his shit. Like, not even joking with you, I want to go review Sagamore whiskey on the Sagamore Bridge. Oh, that'd be oh, awesome. That's, oh, that'd, that'd be, be fucking cool. awesome, right? That'd be yeah. awesome. Sagamore Bridge is one of the bridges. There's two bridges that bring you onto Cape Cod. There's okay. the Bourne Bridge and the Sagamore Bridge. Right. And I, yeah. I will do the review from the Sagamore Bridge because why the fuck not, right? Yeah, set, up, set, up a little, set up a little dick table with your little dick chair and a dick lap. <laughs> say <laughs> little dick one more time, Jason. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you do little dick ice cubes too. <laughs> so, Matt, Matt, go, go grab... Go grab some classic Brigalotti because I know right. you're talking. Sarah, hold hold tight. Uh, uh, actually, uh, Bill, what's your favorite uh, Brigalotti expression? I'm just curious. Is it is it the Brigalotti? Yeah. Probably, I haven't tried a lot, but I mean the Port Charlotte is one of them. Oh but hell yeah, yeah. I genuinely I haven't tried enough to make a good judgment. The uh the the Port Charlotte um the ten or just the regular offering? Couldn't tell you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I we so funny funny story and I apologize for the amount of like, can you guys see this amount of whiskey I've drank? Yep. It's a lot. It's yeah. not very much. This is what happens when you host a whiskey stream. People <laughs> jump in, but you're drinking the whole time. So, <laughs> when, uh, there's there's a liquor store near me called julio's liquors they host all these whiskey events and brooklotti did an event near me and while we were doing the event the power went out and it, it was actually kind of good because the guy who was hosting the event kept going and he was like you know what the fact that you can't see the whiskey is actually going to be a plus tonight so i want you to to reach the second glass that you have it's going to be filled and try that and he kind of went through the notes and whatever and it it was kind of nice because you couldn't see anything about the color you couldn't really do anything other than smell it and taste it and over time like you, you went through all five of them before it sorry before the end of the entire thing we we tasted five different things it was almost what's the word it was it, it was like prophetic I Right, so like the, in the first dram, the lights went out. On the fifth dram, the lights turned back on. <laughs> we got to do a blind tasting, 
the entire time. Literally. And uh, Port Charlotte, for me personally, was one of the, the standouts, although Dark Arts was up there. Um, so anyway, that, that was kind of where I stood. Boy, I have I, not been this drunk on a live stream for a long time. I got to <laughs> say, Bill, I love you anyway, but Wasted Bill is so much better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, Absolutely. I've only been this wasted on a stream like twice, and I've had the option to turn it off no. most of the time. <laughs> and how, how many years have you been doing this? I, almost five. So uh, so that's a, that's we're getting up there. Hey, Bill, yeah. you do you. You're living your best life. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> we're best friends. We're Matt? Best friends. Oh, God. Matt, Matt, Matt fell again. Matt, are you okay? Yes, a bottle. <laughs> Just a, a lift came off. So, oh, Bobby, okay. I uh, I don't want you to, to, to have any opinion whatsoever, but when I first see Sam, I'm going to pick her up, and I'm going to I'm gonna pick her up. So, and I don't want you to feel any animosity. <laughs> no, he won't. None whatsoever. He won't. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna give her a hug, and I'm going to pick her up, because I'm, I'm like... <laughs> Three and I can probably lift her up. Really, that's, really. that's what I plan on doing when I see Eric. I hope. So. <laughs> uh, all I gotta say is, Bill, I love you, man, and you're not as thick as I drunk you am. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed my time spending with you, Eric. All, all I know is that when I see Eric Wade, I'm gonna give him the lift, er, uh, Patrick Swayze style, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I also am going to lift Eric Wade. Yeah, right, right above my head. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna play. We're gonna play some music, and we're gonna, he's gonna write over. <laughs> I'm gonna need to make a thumbnail of that right now. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, we've we've had the time of our lives. That's what. We're <laughs> that's often from October. That's the time of your lives. It's coming. Right? So, oh. so before before we drink this. <laughs> Bourbon buddies, I got to say, like, if you only now think that the shit is starting to get wild, then you've missed a lot of the stream. Yeah. <laughs> Eric Waite had no shirt on. At some point. No clothes <laughs> on. He was like, <laughs> Eric Waite was well, okay. Well, yeah. I do have to thing. I was wearing like, this shirt. I appreciate it. All Can right. So Keith away, by the way. Where did what? Keith go? Keith left a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Keith, Keith was having issues with his audio. He, he, he left came here half the chat, and he was like, "Fuck this, I'm out." Okay, I was just wondering. <laughs> like, I think I, we scared him away. By the way, Sam, I totally that. caught that where you were totally just feeling yourself up. <laughs> I still have. I'm good. I have whiskey. All right, so for, the, for those of you drinking the classic latte. <laughs> let's, let's just fucking finish this off with a cheer. Can I say as I just fucking on? ripped a nail um just throw away the cap of this stupid thing like don't keep the cap of the, well, of the oh, we can go for a while we're fine yeah i mean <laughs> i'm good i don't care i gotta bring my kids to gymnastics in the morning and i can be really hung over for sounds that. like a personal problem <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right cheers Cheers. Oh, we're not, we're we're not done. Whatever the hell has happened to We're just drinking. Who's not done? Okay. more. Yes. Oh. We've just, just been sitting on this classic Laddie for a while. Because so. mm -hmm. I bought a bottle of Octomore 8.1 for Keith. Uh, I don't know if he's finished, if he still has any left or not. All right. I had so, him on my channel for, um, for Isla Month, and we, we reviewed this together. So interesting question, though. When you guys first tried the original Brook Lottie Classic, did you think it was peated the first time you tried it? I didn't, and you know how I feel. And, and it's it's not, but it's funny. The first time I tried it and had a lot of, hadn't had a lot of peated whiskey, it tastes peated. It's it's really uh, Matt, Matt, Matt. I could not agree more. That happened to me because I was kind of starting early in my peated uh, Scotch journey, and when I first had it, I totally thought it was peated. Recently, so I got a question. I got. Did it seem peated or does it seem briny? Peated. Peated. <laughs> Yeah, the first time I swear I tried it at a liquor store at a at a tasting. I'm like, oh, it tastes like it's peated. I'm like, but it says unpeated on the bottle. I'm like, that's so weird. I've heard that so so many people will say it's peated, but it's not. But now after having Octomore and Port Charlotte, like, okay, clearly it's not. Yeah, peated. clearly it's not peated when you have that. It just it's just a different uh, the the barley they use, whatever whatever they do to it, it just has like this this really unique bite to it that makes it feel like it's peated, but it's not. It's it's one, of the most, it's one of the most brilliant things that Brooklady does is why I love them. Well, there's certain things that we 
they aren't necessarily related, but they're often related. Because they're often related, we equate them with each other. Okay. So oceanic influence, we tend to associate with peat. So if you have oceanic influence and yet there's no peat, your brain sort of fills in a little bit of peat, even if it's not there. The similar thing happens with, with Chardonnays. You tend to associate malolactic fermentation and oak. And is William still in the house? So he knows what yeah. I'm talking about. So yeah. you, if, you have, if you have a wine that has malolactic fermentation, but it doesn't have the heavy oak, your brain tends to, because those tend to go together, your brain tends to automatically fill in the gap and you think it's heavily oaked or new oaked, even if it's not there. So the same thing sort of happens with, if you get briny notes, the oceanic influence, your brain tends to equate that with often with peat or peated whiskeys. And so your brain fills it in there. Anyway, that's the psychology of it. Wow. I, uh, I never knew uh, Malika fuckstick uh, fermentation. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you say that, Eric, because I, I feel like, the exact <laughs> like when I expect Pete in something and I don't get it, I actually think less of the whiskey. Like, for example, when I first tried this, I actually thought that it was not very good because I was expecting it to be Pete. <laughs> okay. I can't. I can't do this. So technically, technically, just to let you know. It's not actually a malolactic fermentation. It's a conversion. You're converting malic acid like you have in green apples over an acid that you have in milk. Mm. So, I'm the amount of mascara that's going down my eyes right now because that's really the problem. So it's actually more of a conversion. Anyway, it, 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 things are often equated with each other. Your brain will fill it in there even if it's not actually there. I also find that the things that you had before often very much influence. Uh, the first time I had Bunahaven, I uh, I put it in a tasting thinking, well, they're all going to be peated. Uh, so I thought the Bunahaven was peated. And then the second time I went back to it, I had it on its own and realized that it was unpeated. You took it about the 12? Yeah, the Bunahaven 12. So the 12 actually, it has like around 3 ppm. So it's barely there. Fair enough. And he said PP. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all thrilled now, people. Oh, my God. So it, it's right. there, but the sherry might be in the basket. Uh, yeah, Bunahaven 12 is the is the uh, <laughs> Bunahaven 12 is the scotch that made me fall in love with scotch, along with along with Ardbeg 10. Yeah, yeah. I'm exactly with you. I'm exactly with you, Jason. Those are the exact two scotches that did the same thing for me. So, what are you yeah. drinking, Chris? I'm drinking uh, Ardbeg Drum right now. Oh, nice. Actually. Yeah, uh, the uh, committee release. Right. Not the party. Oh, good for you. Yeah. That's a yeah. pulling out the freaking big guns. I know I have yeah. a, I have a, I have a Ardbeg Dark Cove a committee release that's been staring at me for like two months. I haven't opened it. Oh, open it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do I don't do know it. if I want to. Nineteen ninety. Blood body. Black art. Twenty three year. Ooh. Oh, oh hell yeah. yeah. So damn good. Terrible. I have a, I have a bottle of that, but it's like down to its last final little pour. Finished it. Oh. I was just saying, I'm glad Williams here. I usually feel very lonely as the oddball, only wine geek in the house. I'm glad there's someone else in here. Hey, Eric, well, I enjoy your wine stuff because I think it's really cool how it relates to whiskey. So I find it very interesting when you talk about wine. First. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, so William, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, of the sherries, is there one that you prefer that tends to have an influence on whiskey? So... For whiskeys, I prefer uh, Pedro Jimenez because okay. uh, most of the time those have the biggest influence as far as a sweetness goes onto the whiskey. Um, and I'm a big fan of a really deep, dark, heavy peat with a really sweet added uh, uh, Ardbeganoa kind of comes to mind really quickly uh, mm -hmm. where, you know, you have that that peatiness, that brininess, but also that, that beautiful... Uh, uh, berry sweetness to go along with it. I like the cut of your jib. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've been taking shirts all, all day. For the 70th anniversary of D-Day yesterday, my mom went to France and picked these up 
in Normandy. Shut your face. Your fucking mom went to France yesterday to pick up a t shirt. Yeah, she yeah, she picked well, she had to go there for dinner. She just happened to be there. Could so you stop here. being like the best of us all? For Matt, the, that doesn't for happen minute. to normal people. Yeah. Well, well, she went there for five days. She went to all the all five beaches. My mom Where went to see yeah. Rocket Man last night. That was the highlight of her week. I think I think my Pretty mom sure just like sat at home drinking martinis last night. My mom was in bed by nine. What are you talking about? <laughs> So if you want to, if you want to try to Pedro Jimenez, this is a no. Um, Venom Optimum Rare Signatum. This is a thirty-year-old Pedro Jimenez. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to, know, if you, you should, you should at least. I would like to do a a sherry tasting for whiskey people. Yes. Just so they can be introduced uh, to it, so they would recognize it. Oh, yeah. They don't use Fino, but I would pour it anyway. And you're yeah. probably not going to see a Pelo Cantado. Probably going to see Oloroso or Monteado or, or Pedro Jimenez, perhaps even a, a Sherry. In fact, there's a, in fact, there's another there's another Sherry. You know, I'm going to go off on the anyway. Um, there's another possible <laughs> Sherry you'd also see made with Pedro Jimenez. But anyway, it, you at least let you go. Oh, now I see the correlation. It's funny you say that. Actually, when we all did prom school with the vault, Daniel did a. Sherry tasting with us in his office with all the okay. different types of sherry, so we could get the influence on on with. Okay. That's, very, a, that's a great idea. I would I would actually. So as somebody who is very has very very limited um, uh, scope Palette. as far as uh, sherry <laughs> whiskeys, I would love to to try the sherries, Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso on their own, so I can see pick out those notes right. specifically. Like, yeah, we're actually going to do a video. Tomatin put out a yeah. series of four different sherry cast finishes, and we're going to do a review of all four sherries themselves and then all four of the Tomatins, and that's okay. going to be a long review we'll do for those, which will be very interesting to do. Yeah. I, just a recommendation, I would break that down into 10-minute segments rather than a real long video. Okay, that's probably actually a good idea. And I would do each segment with a different sherry. That that would be my recommendation. It's just hard to get people to watch an hour long thing on on you sherry. Have a very valid point. Yeah. <laughs> it's a live chat, and it's three hours. Uh, I want to <laughs> I want to uh, call out this bourbon uh, real quick for Elvis Presley in the chat. He was asking about the W B Saffle from the Whiskey Barons collection from uh, Wild Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, it it is very good. It is good. If you're a whiskey, or if I'm sorry, if you're a a Wild Turkey geek. Mm -hmm. And you really need to try a different type of blend from them. Um, Fifty bucks for a you know a three seven five is um, it's kind of steep, but it's a blend of six eight ten and twelve year uh, Whopper whiskey. And I could tell you that it is sixty percent of it. I think is ten, and then the rest is kind of fills it all in. So uh, it's it's really good. I love it, but I really feel like if you're you really have to be a turkey and do is to spend the money on a 375 so but you are right jason that does is completely the wild turkey profile on that saffle that's by far the best of the three baron series well that you know and you know why because uh after the first two series after the first two bottlings that came out uh kind of tanked uh eddie russell put his thumbprint on the wb saffle and that's why it's way or way better than the other two releases so eddie russell, eddie russell put his uh thumbprint on the WB Saffoli helped pick out the barrels for Campari because they weren't selling. Uh, and now this one is selling. Yeah, that thing's actually getting really hard to find. I think I got the last one on the shelf when I got mine. Most of them are – most places look at you like, yeah, it's gone. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough to get now. But, um, yeah, the, the blending that they did was really good. Like I said, it's mostly 10-year. Uh, but Eddie Russell's starting to, uh, I guess, you know, kind of put his put his thumbprint on the, uh, the Whiskey Barons collection. Uh, Pringles can. Give it some. Oh, hey, Santa Cruz just came in with a uh, with a thing. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Santa. Santa. I, so, Stellar Matrix had a question that that I'm gonna fail to even read here at this point. <laughs> Should somebody else read it for you? I mean, I, I'm making no excuses at the point. At this point, it's I've drank way too much. But Bill, you look like you're moving in slow motion now. <laughs> so for a girl whiskey noob, what's right. the next so, step needed? After I'm going to do my best here. So question for the group. For a girl whiskey noob, what's a next step peated? Ask your after Johnny Walker Black and Oban. 
Hmm. Dr. Moore. No, no. <laughs> Uh, I would say I would, give, I, I would go Ardbeg ten. No, no, Alistair ten because there's almost no peat there. Oh, okay. Okay. If you're going to go an Ardbeg, go the No. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with that. Oh, I'm, 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 that, that is exactly what I meant to say. Yep, the No. Yep. What about what about mm -hmm. Talisker? No Talisker. Yeah, Talisker is what is it, after what she's drank so far. Talos will be your next logical choice, or Highland Park. Those are two. Yeah. Oh yeah, Highland Park's a good call. Good call out, definitely. But if you, but if you want to go Isla, I agree with Bill. The Noa with that, it has that uh, PX. It's a little sweeter, not quite as peaty. Mm -hmm. But I would say the Octomore. Bobby's not completely off the wall with uh, the Octomore. It doesn't have the heavily peaty, earthy, medicinal notes. It just it depends on the point what you have. Pardon. It depends on the point what you have. The point. Oh yeah, this is eight point one. Yeah, this is eight point one. It has dense. This is eight point one in, intense smoke and peat and chocolate, but it doesn't have the medicinal notes. But yeah, the eight the eight point one is like 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 candied barbecue almost. It's yeah, like, versus yeah. the eight point three is a completely different beast altogether. The eight point three has just so much just peat. It's three hundred nine ppm. It is trying to kill you, and it tastes amazing. Yeah. Okay, I've I not had it, so I, I'll take your word on it. I'll bring you some in Austin. How about that? There you go. Yeah, you'll have some in the here. If the you can rate. remember, if you can remember anything tomorrow morning. Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize that I changed my shirt. Oh, I there you go. I, I like it. Thanks. That shirt is freaking awesome. Thank you very much. What's your in? Boston? He said it's awesome, Here's, which is cool. <laughs> he did say it's awesome. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> I, I found I found a designer who is. <laughs> oh my god! I give up. I'm done. I'm done. I found a designer. This is my favorite live stream that I've been, that's been a part of or not. This is my Wait, favorite live stream. I, I've ever. got something here. I've okay, got Chris. For everyone who's hung out with us, all sixty people who are still here, I'm going to screen share this real quick. You, you can... <laughs> yes. Put that up again, please. Yes. Oh my god! Oh, actually, actually. Like Chris is one of my favorite people. Oh. <laughs> you had to be done. Had to be done. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Hey, that's the location lobby. Fantastic. I'm never gonna watch Dirty Dancing the same way no. ever again. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Nobody puts Eric in the corner. <laughs> no I good. just, I just peed my 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 underwear. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. Your pants? Oh, jeez, oh, so good. I, I just want to know where are my hands exactly? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about where your hands are. <laughs> Chris, I'm really worried where my yeah. hands are, uh, br uh, Chris. Put, oh, Chris, oh, Chris you gotta send me a copy of that. I gotta, I, I, I want a copy of that. You got it, buddy. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Russell, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was gonna say, Bill, the, the font on your shirt reminds me of the font on Cheers. That's, That's what, what it's supposed to be. That's what it's for. Okay. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be. Oh, there you go. I'm so happy to hear you say that. I, I hired a guy. He he does a lot of video game T-shirts, but um, it, we we have kind of a, a the cross T-shirts. Like my two passions are whiskey and video games, and okay. he's a guy that does whiskey uh, uh, T-shirts for a video game podcast. I podcast that I follow, and then I hired him to do my T-shirts, and he was like, "Hey, Cheers is a thing, and here's whiskey." So. Yeah, I I came up with the concept for the um, the peated whiskey T-shirt that you guys can find pretty easily down in the thing. Um, <laughs> whatever, jeez, <laughs> whatever. We're Figure it out yourselves, motherfucker. You know, here's the problem. I feel like as whiskey tubers, we have a unique problem, and I think this is the example of it. <laughs> you know. I, I, I thought that Bobby was gonna have the 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 highlight of the night with his changing of the shirt with Sam. Yeah. And... <laughs> no, 
No, nope. it's Bill. It's, it's drunk Bill. <laughs> Heavily peated. That's what it was. Heavily peated Bill. <laughs> Heavily peated Bill. I should go grab some Ardbeg. I think I have some left. I can go get it right now. I decided that I'm sleeping on the couch because I don't want to wake my wife up with the snoring that is inevitable. <laughs> Bill, you live your best life. You sleep wherever you need to. I'm sleeping right there. Beyond the kitchen, I'll be. I'll consider that a plus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard to you know, I gotta work tomorrow. Better? Yeah, he has not, not only was my dad, but also my grandfather was in the chat earlier today. Oh <laughs> wow! So all of us are will named William. We all have the same name. Um, all right, last name. So I would have been the fourth. I have a different middle name. My dad is William blank blank the third. Um, I would have been the fourth, but I have a different middle name. Um, but two of those people were in the chat earlier today. I, I kind of hope that they don't think like, oh, I wonder what happened after I logged off. <laughs> <laughs> so I have an off of the wall question for the other whiskey tubers. I'm not included. You can be included. You're included. Okay. So my best friend, who is also my boss, thinks that my whiskey tube channel with my husband is fucking stupid. So every time we talk about it, she's literally like rolling her eyes like I'm a jackass. How do your personal friends feel about you having a let, YouTube channel? Let me let me give a fuck how they feel. Right, well, so let me jump. I agree. In, let me jump in on that real quick. So I, I work. They're um, no longer your friends, then. Right. <laughs> I, so it, the, I, I work in a in a, a group of very um, close niche. Well, but very judgmental, yeah. manly, like, and 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 basically, when as soon as I started the channel, like text message groups started going out, just trashing me, making fun of me, and then when I started getting like samples and bottles sent. And all of a sudden, now and we like, got a Patreon. Money and 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 now guys are like, oh, hey, so what do you think of this bottle? And and like all of a sudden, it's not so, uh, it's, it's <laughs> not, not I, I, they don't give me shit anymore. So I just, I'm curious how other people's so, like, personal <laughs> friends have taken them join having YouTube channel. So I, I haven't done, most of my friends are Somali age, work in the wine industry. I haven't done anything in wine in five months. I've become a Philistine. I'm now mm. unclean. I'm now on the outside. You're I've on the out. Gone somewhere else. So we'll take you, I guess. Anyway, but in August, I'm 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 actually talking to another sommelier over in Europe, planning to do a re, a re relaunch of my wine thing in August. But we'll see how it goes. No, most of our fr my friends are whiskey nerds to begin with, so they think this is just awesome. They just it's just glorified this collection even more and it made it this it even worse. Most of them go, Matt, you don't drink as much as you used to. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, right? I drink I don't I'm enjoying them as often and drinking ridiculous amounts of whiskey. So it's probably a good thing in reality. It's better for my liver, I'll tell you that. Oh, my liver's fucked. Oh man, right? <laughs> <laughs> so right. So Chris, how, how's it going with you and what your what your wife think? Did you say me? I'm sorry. Yes, yeah. Chris. Uh, she's in bed sleeping, thank God. <laughs> All right, thank God. But so I, I love Rachel. Rachel. She's one of my favorite people on the planet. I yeah. wish we could do this with you every week. What my mom think? Well, I told her. I told her when I went to work. I was like, "Honey, I'm gonna get right on the stream when I get home. So you know, be aware. Full disclosure." And then, and then I get home, and she's like, "You didn't even come upstairs and say you're home. I thought you were dead." But, <laughs> but how it is. Rachel's awesome. So. so can I can I put in my two cents or is it yes? Correct? Can you speak? Yeah. All right. So can you speak? Can, can I speak on my own stream? Yeah. Um. So so I am a director. So I have I'm a manager of managers of software engineers. So when I hear about anybody below me having any sort of passion for anything, honestly, it's a plus. So, Sam, to your point of when if you were to tell me that you were like super into and that you had a live stream that you were like working towards and actually developing a side job, I guess you'd call it. Right, toward, right, right. I'd be like so excited for you. But so, what if you said things like devil's dick? Would you be as excited? Right? So, 
And and so her <laughs> her friend slash boss who judges us is also the first one to say, "Hey, can you bring over like a really cool bourbon when yeah. we play cards?" Right. Like like so I I host a Christmas a Christmas party here every year from for all of the people who report to me, yes. and I have them all over here. And I, I have this bar back here. It's that one right there that I have open. Um, Beautiful. It's a really, you know what? I'm going to show you guys. We'll check it out. Yes. Yes. Let's see the yes. Let's yes. show us. Yes. Right. Is he wearing oh, Batman gosh. boxers? He switched back to the Batman pants. Hey. <laughs> he was no, in Zelda. Better than Batman. Better than Batman. He had Zelda pants on. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> over. Oh, the best video game ever made. Yeah, totally. Wait, Nathan, did your barrel say something? Yeah, it was earlier. Wild turkey okay, earlier. it did say wild turkey. I'm not fucking the fucking bar. So, Psychotic. The, this is the coolest bar ever, right? So, <laughs> it's on wheels. He's in the middle of the air. Bill has just gone off the wheels. I love He's it. Cracking the holy shit out of out of his hardwood floors, and his wife's gonna murder him tomorrow. Holy shit. What, is what is he doing? No. Hey guys, no. What did you guys do Friday? Oh, oh, hang out with my friend. I don't think I'm close to the Bill. Bill, Bill, just move the camera. Close move the camera, Bill. Bill, <laughs> your wife's gonna murder you. Don't do it. No, I. I move the camera oh, closer. Here we, here we okay. Right, hold on. Hey, oh, yeah, move don't, the camera. Uh, all right, watch this. All right, so don't, don't talk for a sec. Just oh god, so yeah, I can maintain really the talking. camera thing. Don't don't make a sound. All right, so <laughs> the, the, the bar is back there. I watch what it does. It's so cool. So check this out. It, it lifts up like this, and then it makes a freaking bar. Do you see that? <laughs> you, you guys see that? Oh my god! <laughs> so I can Damn. Girl, turn on the light. Gonna I'm kick your ass. ass. Right? I'm gonna kick your that's ass. That's awesome, Bill. That is awesome, Bill. Bill that's that great. Is but your wife is going to beat the shit out of you. No, she's fine. She's fine. <laughs> she's sleeping. Bill, turn on the light back there. Can you turn on the light? Oh, um. <laughs> hold on. Oh Did my bring god. The camera closer to the bar. I want to see what's in it. Encourage him. Let me bring this light back here. Oh, guys, god. watch me. Guys, watch me lift this piece of wood. <laughs> there you go. Right. You see that? No. 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 Loud noises, blah 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 blah. That's a nice actually. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You, you can totally see it. There it is. Bill, what nice work, buddy. That's <laughs> uh, like I feel like you guys are patronizing me, but like, look at that shit. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, really oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Sam, you gotta take a deep breath. Breathe, Sam. Breathe, Sam. Oh. Deep breath in, Bill. Sam is losing it. No, that was a very nice collection. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Yes. It's a nice bar. <laughs> Oh, All my right. oh, my God. God. His face hurt. My face hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had more people in the chat from that shit. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I didn't do anything wrong, but I feel like you people did. are telling well, me I you lived your best life. You the Bill. Keep up the good work. Yep. Yep. Nailed All it. I just like to read the light. The, the light really helped. Yeah, you know, I brought back. I got the Zelda pants on. They're, they're, I don't know if these are the Batman pants really helped a lot, too. Yeah. 
when he plugged when he plugged the light and then he couldn't walk under the cord. I fucking lost it. Say that again, Jason. What did I do? I couldn't what? You couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't walk under the cord. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need to go back and rewatch this because I apparently did something yep. really embarrassing yep. and I have no idea. No, um, no, no, you Come didn't follow. You got a super chat. It was great. Bill, you got Bill. a super chat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, to repair your floors. Five dollars <laughs> to repair your floors. <laughs> What did I do? Sure. I, I, just, I dragged the thing. It's fine. It's yeah, it's like, know. It's like a fake fine. wood floor. It's fine. Like, do you guys see? Like, I'm fucking it didn't, feeler. It didn't sound fine, Bill. It's it, it sounded very bad and very loud. <laughs> oh, did, okay. That that helps. It's um, it's just Bill. Bill we'll just Bill. We're just worried about the floor, and then your wife waking up and seeing the floor. Okay. <laughs> so to to be fair. It's got pads on it. I helped lift the thing, and we put pads on it. It it can drag across the floor. There's no issue whatsoever. Oh, thank oh, God! All right, oh, all right. All right. We, we feel better now. Right. We feel, yeah, we feel better now. I was totally confused because I'm like, I don't think I did anything stupid, but we did. We did pads. We did we we pad. pad. now. And it's got pads out. on it. It's totally fine. <clears throat> right. Okay, I feel better now. I I, I didn't <laughs> think I did anything stupid. Eric, say something funny. <laughs> he has no pants I, on. I, 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 I can't hardly see. Everything's all blurry. I've been laughing so freaking hard. <laughs> right? Bill, I want to add to your Bill story. Uh, we actually have four Williams in the family as well. Sarah's Ooh. wife, uh, his, Sarah's, Sarah, sorry, Sarah's father's name is William. Uh, my grandfather's William. I was named for my uncle William, who passed away before I came along. Uh, and my son, uh, is actually William Jr. So See, I was really hoping to have a son. I have two daughters. So uh, so my my dad is William Henry Eburn the third. The third. Yeah. And then his dad is William Henry Eburn the junior and then senior. Are you the fourth? And of him no. is just yeah, William Henry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. So it's just Henry Eburn. And then above him is William Henry Eburn, whatever. Like there was a, a skip there. Like I could have been the sixth, but somehow it didn't work out. My dad apparently in school was like mocked or whatever, like made fun of for being the third. So he didn't give me the fourth. I could have been William Henry Eburn the fourth, but. And, and at the end of the day, the fourth is actually pretty cool. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, like it would have been, but instead I'm, I'm William Frank Eburn and yeah. the nothing. And I so have two daughters. So I don't have a son. I've talked to my wife about it. Like, genuinely, I don't really want to have another kid. But it's like in the back of your mind. Eh, hey, look, I got, I got three level. boys. You can have two of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, a little bit yes, a little bit no. Like, I, I could have a William if I had another kid. You know, the chances of it being a boy, you fifty fifty, whatever. Let, let's just say it's a boy. It no, would you've be, had two girls already. The chance is not 50-50. Hey, I'm going to have a third girl. And right. then, You're going to have a third girl. Yeah, at least a third. What I wanted, but then all of a sudden, now I need to buy like a St. Bernard just to like offset the man. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So my so my yeah. mom wanted to name me Jedediah and call oh. me Jed. So yeah. my dad was like, how about we just make him Junior? And and thank God my dad won that. So, <laughs> so so my so that's why I still go by Bobby and I'm not Bob because my dad's Bob. Bob and that's yeah, right, weird. Right. So Bobby, were your parents Amish? No, 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 <laughs> no. And that's why it was like that's I don't so know weird. where my mom came up with Jedediah. That sounds like an so, Amish name. It's so, not. I know, and and they are like like suburban normal. You know, not not that Amish isn't normal, but you know what I mean, like. No, I don't know where the hell it's not. Let's be fair. So, and then here's another. Here's another fun fact. Bobby and I have our son, our oldest, our oldest son together. Because Bobby not a girl earlier. Um, that's not mine. Our six year old, he is Joseph Bernard Zeller. My dad was Bernard Joseph Zeller, but I didn't want not Zeller, not Zeller, but Joseph Bernard Joseph. 
heavy. I didn't want him to be blowjob his whole life because he was going to be. <laughs> yeah, that's so tough. We flipped it, and he he goes by JB. Yeah. And that's so I so my friend calls him Job Joblo. So he's Joblo. Okay. So so here's here's a question from the chat. People want us because we're still going. They want us to go to the next dram, whatever it happens to be. Okay. Um, uh, I'm gonna go grab some art bag because I always feel it's necessary to start uh, to end the night on an Isla. Um, yeah, me too. I already grabbed one. All right. Yeah. So I'm gonna go grab one. Everybody, go grab your last dram of the night. Let's okay. let's make it official. We'll call it a last dram. We'll aim to at 12:41. Let's aim to stop at about one o'clock, um, if not earlier. Good plan. <laughs> we'll go, uh, I'm not drinking that. I'm drinking Isaac Bowman. Suck right, it. No, back. he said you have to finish on a. No, on suck it. I'm doing Isaac Bowman. Uh, I'm you not finishing on that one. You got to do it. That's the rule. It's yeah. a yeah. Rule. House, rule. house rules. It's yeah. Yeah. Real quick it. I like drinking the law. You so. don't make me drink Isla. This is How my favorite last Isla. Isla. It's not Isla. This is uh, Orkney. <laughs> Is a 21 year Highland Park that's a 1986 distillation from Scott Selection Cash Drain. And it is 54.1%. It is delicious. I want I, some of that next time I come over. I've already got You've done had it before. You've been drunk and don't remember. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> you go for the I, love, I love that you have the barrel of bourbon right next to your mouth, just like. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, that's how you drink that shit. Right? This point in the night, that's how Good. it goes. Terrible Bobby. name, though, right? Bobby, did you get the uh, 10 year cast strength of Roy? I did. Uh, four of them. my sample. You're going to try it for the first time. Oh, so, so my. Fucking four of them, Chris. So, my local, oh, my uh, my local grocery mm -hmm. store, and this was uh, so uh, Jack and Paul Blades, who's still in the chat, pointed this out to me. Um, our local grocery store had. the difference. They had Lafroy 10 cast strength. Um, price at l regular Lafroy 10 price, one dollars. So, so I bought. They had four left, and I bought them all. That's ridiculous. Good decision. Yeah. Yes, right. That's a hell of a deal. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I call that dumbasses at Kroger. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag dumbass. That's their dumb problem, not because if I would have said something to the clerk, it wouldn't have changed anything. No, no. So the best deal ever. So we were at, we were at Carswell Air Force Base. And they had crowd on sale for the one seven fives for thirty three dollars. So, but if you bought a case, the case ran at the same price at thirty three dollars for six bottles of one seven fives a crown. Ring up by the case. Yeah. Oh my Jesus. god! Then you buy it all. Thirty three bucks right. for six bottles of crown. So wow. he, yeah, here, here's here's the question for everybody in the chat. So <laughs> we are all on. Let's 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 just agree this is our last dram of the night. Okay. Why is everybody drinking? I got you. Might not be. Hold on. All right. Let, let, let's do this properly. Chris, what are you drinking? Lafroy 10 cast strength. First time trying Lafroy. <laughs> Art bag and Lagavula. Now moving on to the. Uh, oh, wow. All right. Another let one. Us, let Chris, us know before sorry. you take the first sip because I'm going to like I'm going to put you on spotlight. Mm -hmm. Eric, right. what are you drinking? So, <clears throat> and this is a distillery you should visit, Bill. Uh, it's in a business park. And you're like, what the hell? But you go inside, you're like, wow, this place is really cool. This is San Diego Distillery, uh, but they import peated barley from Scotland. They don't specify Isla, but I'll put my money on it. It's from Isla. Um, anyway, San Diego Distillery, a peated whiskey, 57% alcohol by Viam or 114 proof. Uh, I really, really like this. Um Mm, this kind of seems like a cheat, you know, it's San Diego, but it tastes like an Isla. But uh, if if you're ever in town, Bill, and get some time, highly recommend. <laughs> yeah. Hello. I'm going out there in early uh, July. I'm actually okay. going to reach out to each one of those. There's two distilleries in San Diego, San Diego that I know about. San Diego. Although, <laughs> shut up, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could judge you, dude. Judge you. <laughs> All right. So I, I, anyway, I'm going to reach out to each one of those. I'm going to go do a tour, whatever. All right. I'm going to shut up. But All right. The uh, Jason, the place is really cool. Check it out. All right. Jason is not present. So Sam and Bobby, what are you drinking for your last drink of the night? 
But He's on I'm, I'm, I'm with Chris, Laphroaig 10 cast strength. I am on my damnedest to clean off this Isaac Bowman port barrel strength bullshit. Bobby, is that batch 10? What's that? Is that batch 10? It is. Oh, that's killer. Yes. Yeah, I love that This one. was the one I got four bottles of. So yeah. Laphroaig yeah. 10, Laphroaig 10 was like, oh. like, like my discovery of the peated scotch. And so, yeah, so getting four bottles of the cast strength was uh, all the, at, at 50 bucks a bottle. I, yeah, I, but I, I think I paid 60. That's absolutely, fun. it's a phenomenal whiskey. Yes, yes, it is. And uh, Bobby, the one I have is batch seven. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Jason, what are you up to tonight? What's your last dram of the night? Uh, I have a cool sample here of uh, the Brook Lottie Octomore 7.2, which comes in at a 208 uh, ppm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Finished in uh, French Syrah uh, wine barrels. So nice. It's got a little bit of a black pepper. It's really, really yummy. All right, William and Sarah, you guys are up next. What are you drinking? Last so, last term of the night. So inspired by uh, one of the others, uh, I'm gonna pour myself uh, a sample I stole, or, or well, not yeah, okay, stole uh, <laughs> while we were down in Austin. Um, <laughs> Murray, this is the Lafroig 10. I'm sorry, Lafroig 12 cast strength. The Alexander nice. Murray release. So, since y'all were drinking the 10, I'll try this one. Excellent. And I'm drinking that barrel bourbon. Well, not bourbon. The the barrel uh, barrel bourbon dovetail. cast strength. Dovetail. Not dovetail. Okay. Yeah, you are right. right. There's there's some serious black pepper in this tram. Wow. Matt, what are you up to? All right. Cole Ela 18 year cast strength unpeated. Oh, oh. so this is one of the best Ilas there is on the market. All right, so I have a question for all of you because I've always called it Kalila. Is it something different? Kalila, it is Kalila. All right, Kalila. Yes. Kalila. all right, so cast strength, not, not, not Kalila. Kalila. <laughs> Kalila. No, don't, don't judge these. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is this the Boston accent we were hearing about? Yeah, do it again. Yeah, it's back drunk. in uh, Kalila. You got the fucking <laughs> Kalila. You got the in your fucking glass. You. <laughs> I drank. I drank the Kalila. The Kalila. I got to go to the doctor. You <laughs> fucking. You, you watch your your bar. I don't even, I bar, can't even do it. I'm so. The bar. So, so, so for those Vito, Vito, you, Vito on cash drink was saying, Killerman. And I kept I kept typing there. Kill Holman. Kill yeah. Holman. Really? Oh. He was calling. He was calling. Kill him. See, see Matt. Yeah. Oh, Matt. Matt. We can't see you at all behind all the bottles. Holy crap! Okay. <laughs> Move some of that shit. Oh my God, Matt. <laughs> Clean your Matt, head off. Matt looks like Matt looks like Whiskey Godzilla in the city of bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great idea for a movie. Yeah. Look, look at this shit. I mean, there's fucking bottles everywhere. Look at this. It's fucking ridiculous. I know, right? Oh, that's um, nothing. I've seen it guys, worse. You, you, you actually. Oh, that's the, yeah. yeah. You wait till uh, two weeks from that's, now. That's probably the ambassadors here. That, that's probably a quarter of what you have. Right. Yeah. No. no, no. Not even the tenth. Uh, that's like one percent. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. One percent. So my my last dream of the night is the Arbeg Ugadel, which I'm impressed I was even able to say. But <laughs> for for those of you that are judging me, so Ugadel Booker's. Amber barrel uh, bourbon, Texas uh, bourbon uh, balcones, Kilbegan Irish whiskey small batch rye, um, whatever the fuck from New New York, uh, New Hampshire, uh, Mika barrel, Glendalo, Highland Park fifteen, and Brook Lottie. Like you drink that much and then fucking do a, a live stream, right? So, <laughs> I did. Right. Right. And if <laughs> and if you're Italian, it's Balcones. Bal yeah, that's what I, I when I was when I started uh, tasting the uh, Texas whiskeys. Uh, I, everybody in my chat would get on me for calling it Balcones, but I'm like, hey, it's Balcones, I, yeah, Balcones. I'm sorry, you got a fucking Balcones. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's we're Texans, and that's how we fucking say. Yeah, go on it. Yeah, All right, let's do the uh, last cheers of the night. So everybody, um, cheers. You can't talk. Thanks for cheers. hanging out for the remainder of the night, I guess, cheers. or the, the whole totality of the night. Cheers. 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 cheers.
Mahayim. And let me just point out, Bill is finishing with a 54.2% alcohol. Let's keep going. Slanty. How's the after party? Yeah. For for those of you not in the chat, we will totally be talking after the chat. We went on for an hour last time. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I almost no. hope didn't an hour dream, but but there's stuff that we talk about that you guys can't know about because you guys aren't, you know. Because they don't they don't need to know. It's you don't need to know. It's super right. secretive. Super secretive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um you know what? Done? Let's let's do things properly. Does anybody have anything they'd like to plug? I'm gonna go down the line. Chris, are we still on the? Are we still in the chat? Yes, yes. yes. We're, we're still in the chat. Still yeah, we're still, we're still online. Chris, we're live. What are you plugging? All right. So um, coming up soon, I'm gonna be doing a Texas live stream. I'm gonna be having Matt from Whiskey Crusaders. Actually, the whole Whiskey Crusaders. I'm planning to have as as well as um, Cast Strength. So I think that'll be a really good episode. And I have planned a Cask Strength Rye Flight which I've really been looking forward to. I got one more bottle I want to get, which is that Will It Four Year. And once I have that, I'm going to be doing uh, doing that. So I can't wait to get that one. Nice. We'll ship right. it to you this week. Eric, you're up. What are you so doing? I'm continuing my series on uh, the history of Scotch whiskey. Uh, that should finish the day I'm on a plane on my way to Scotland. Uh, immediately, well, that will be followed by the business of Scotch whiskey, which is more of a Big picture look at uh, how, how the Scotch whiskey in industry works. Uh, when I get back, uh, I'm thinking about doing a thing on de uh, deductive tasting, and then I'm going to probably take a month off in August just to recoup, do some studying, reading, and so forth. And then I'll be back in September to continue on with whatever I'm going to do next. Sounds good. All right, Jason. Uh, if you guys haven't yet checked out, uh, check out my video that I posted today, the um, the interview with uh, Caleb Kilburn, Master Distiller over at Peerless. Uh, coming up, I also have an interview coming up with um, another Off the Still episode with um, uh, the brothers over at Greenbrier Distilling, uh, also better known as the, the two brothers that distill Belmede. Um, also, uh, uh, what else is coming up? Uh, I... Me when I was down in Kentucky with uh, Scott from my bourbon journey, uh, and also Dan Trout, we were able to uh, record a podcast on a new podcast called The Bourbon Road. Mm. So you guys haven't checked that out? Go check them out. Doing a great job with those uh, podcasts. Uh, we should be the next episode uh, up and coming. Um, also on top of that, check it, uh, check out me and Matt on the uh, live stream next week on Wednesday, uh, doing a blind sample taste test, uh, and also. The usual, uh, my next review will probably be the new Wilderness Trail uh, rye, uh, rye Batch Bourbon. So be on the lookout for that. Mm. All right. Bobby and Sam? So um, you guys are a lot fancier than we are. Yeah, when we're it, like when, when, it, when it comes to videos. We just uh, – we're like, hey, let's review this bottle and then kind of fly by the seat of our pants. Don't um, but that, so, be, that being said, that, uh, we have I a couple right of – now we have a couple of videos oh, coming up it. that are um, actually planned and scripted, which is very different from, yeah. from we us. We have a funny video, a very funny um, impersonation video that's coming up. That's all. So, yeah. and we also have, and this weekend we will have a <coughs> model coming and up of. Uh, so we just hit a thousand subscribers. We did. Uh, we did it. Yay. Yay. Thank you, everybody. We did it in under four it's months, you motherfucker, which is <laughs> stupid. That's incredible. I don't know it, why it, I feel like you already hit 500. Someone who will say dick on camera and you get <laughs> it's out there. There's not a lot to it. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a lot of uh, emphasis on boobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a Patreon page, and if you give a thousand dollars, you will go towards my tit job that's coming. Right, and then you will get a picture of the finished product. Yes. So <laughs> I'm just throwing out there. Hilarious. But if you pay a dollar, you will get funny videos of me drunk four years ago and Bobby without a beard. So Sam, yeah. Sam yes, yeah. Sam, Sam and I have made a point of in our on our Patreon of um, making fun of each other of posting embarrassing stuff of each other and we and will continue to do that let's just say, I, let's just say i've held back a lot so far <laughs> <laughs> let's just say we're kind of a fucked up couple and we have a lot of shit against each other and it's all filmed so all, all, all there yeah 
yeah that's it so thank you to so, everybody yeah. so, I, will, I will mention that i'm a, i'm a patron of almost everybody on this uh, actually everybody on this ch uh chat who has a <clears throat> patreon and with um i whiskey she wines is the best one <laughs> <laughs> That last, that. that last video that you guys no, put out is freaking hilarious. I, I think Bobby and Sam need to go to my AA meetings. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, uh, so William, Sarah, and Matt, I'm going to let you guys all go at the same time. Come on, Matt. All right, I'll do it. All right. All right. So hope uh, we are told our Sagamore bottling <clears throat> of our uh, barrel pick should be bottled in July. So hopefully those will be coming up. In, I guess, about three weeks, we'll be doing our barbecue and whiskey injected meat episode, Ooh. which will be amazing. Oh, baby. So that should be a fun time. Um, we're going to be coming up, I guess, on Monday, like I said, with Perry from uh, This Is My Bourbon Shop, and then on Wednesday with Jason on his channel. So we got a lot of really cool things coming down the pipe. Um, <laughs> hopefully, we'll be up in Michigan uh, at Traverse City Distillery here in a couple of weeks doing some filming up there. So it should be some cool stuff up there. So yeah, we got a lot of cool shit coming down the pipe. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. And, and uh, may I just say that this Andrew Murray Lafroy 12 year is freaking amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like Agreed. wow. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, Nathan Yui. All right. right? <laughs> So As I'm, I'm going to attempt my best to do my little sign off here, but I think we all understand that I have drank way too much tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did? Bill, I didn't know. I didn't right. know. So no. I'm going to compose myself. Here we go. So if you want to hear more insanity, join the Discord. And <laughs> I <laughs> I posted the link several times. Good try. Um, Good if you try. click on there, I will join there in about 10 minutes or so after I break oh, down yeah. all my gear. Um, other than that, I appreciate everybody who join, who has joined. Really? Jesus Christ. Jesus. <laughs> you need Jesus. I'm no, not even religious. All right. So I have <laughs> new Glenn Karen glasses, which I will promote pretty soon. But if you're in the Patreon, you will get early access, I guess you want to call it. I, I did a small batch the first time, like a small order. If you're in there, you get first dibs. Um, other than that, I appreciate everybody here who has joined in. Um, All right, thanks, Bill. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you. Well, really appreciate it. I'm going I'm to take this little hint here and say that I'm way too drunk. So... Thank you guys very much for joining the uh, Whiskey Dictionary and all of the rest of the channels who have joined me here tonight. There were like 12 different channels here tonight. That's insane. This was the shit. So thank you very much for joining, and I look forward to you joining the next episode of the Whiskey, Di Whiskey Dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bill. He's so good. Thank you for joining. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.